the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Wednesday, March 10th, 2000, and 21 years after zero. Rather large show coming for you right now. Shout out to Twine for that beat drop. We got great guests today. Buddha Baker will be joining us. Kyle Brandt will be joining us. Yeah. He's the host of the 10 Questions podcast brought to you by Spotify, I think. I was on it today. We spent an hour and 25, hour 30 minutes going back through my life. I enjoyed the hell out of it. He'll be joining us in the second hour. Also host of Good Morning Football. And in the third hour, we have Charles Davis, friend of the show. Yeah. Hey. Um, there's a lot of things to talk about. There's college basketball games happening all damn day. We've been gambling since this morning. I mean, it is a great time to be a sports fan. With that being said, Masker Week does continue. Jen! Now that the official salary cap has been put into place at $182.5 million, down roughly $15.75 million from what last year's salary cap was. It is expected now that the teams know the number they have to get to. More players will be cut this week than anybody could expect. Diana Rossini said that last week, said it was going to be a massacre. Jay Glazer said that this morning. Mm-hmm. Now, what happened last Last night, after hours, Malcolm Butler was officially released from the Tennessee Titans in Massacre Week. Everybody's going to be trying to get below the salary cap. They're going to have to make big moves. There's going to be big names that are getting cut from teams that we could have never expected because money is the root of all decisions being made. Malcolm Butler gone. Quan Alexander traded from the San Francisco 49ers who play in Santa Clara and Phoenix, Arizona. Traded Quan Alexander, middle linebacker, to the New Orleans Saints. He got hurt a little bit, but he played well for them. $13 million against the salary cap is gone. No dead money. He is cut. Uh, the New Orleans Saints are making as many moves as they possibly can. Last week, they cut Thomas Morstead, their all-pro, pro bowl punter. They renegotiated their kicker's contract, who is one of the best kickers to ever kick in the NFL. And after the Quan Alexander release comes, Emmanuel Sanders has been released from the New Orleans Saints. That is the moves that have been made thus far last night into today. We assume there will be more this afternoon as the salary cap is now put into place and solidified. Franchise tag day has passed. Now it's time to figure out teams. COVID Cowboy at Tone Diggs is here, although you're gambling on a lot of college basketball games. we got to keep our eye on the wire today. There's Anybody can get it on this particular day, Diggs. Listen, while this is March Madness, there's still only one true. True King. And the NFL news outweighs the March Madness always and forever, especially this year when these really, really good players are going to be on the market, just changing the landscape of the NFL. Yeah, there's going to be a seismic shift. Uh, The Arizona Cardinals owner said immediately getting off his own plane that he flew J.J. Watt to the team to sign for $32 million. He said there's going to be a seismic shift with the names that are going to be open. Now, there's a lot of cap space remaining for a lot of teams. A lot of teams are in a great spot right now, especially with rollover cap space from last year and the ability to save money maybe and not blow it anywhere. But there's a lot of teams that are in trouble. A lot of teams in trouble right now. At Ty Schmidt, Green Bay Packers are not necessarily in the most comfortable position. They're going to have to make some moves. Not necessarily going to be buyers in this whole thing, but NFC Championship team, Green Bay Packers, back-to-back years, might look a little different next year. Yeah, they are cash-strapped for sure. So, you know, I mean, I can do the whole song and dance about these guys who I think I, I, it would be awesome if, you know, the Packers would end up signing them. They're not going to be able to do that with anybody, and chances are they're probably going to have to get rid of one or two guys who maybe a lot of people didn't expect them to to get rid of. So we'll One see. of the Smiths, I believe, yeah. uh, defensive end or linebacker Smith, is, is one of them. Uh, yeah, he- Zadarius Smith, who the the one who's been to you know two straight pro-, pro Bowls, he said he wants to restructure, wants to be a Packer for life. So they might do something there. And then Preston Smith on the other guys, 
Uh, he's who they're talking about, either trading or cutting. Uh, shout out to Zadarius doing that, renegotiating, restructuring. But let's not be so sure that Gunta Kuntz is going to do the right thing with the money you're giving back. Ooh, so wow. think about that whenever you're yeah, renegotiating your deals. Different thing. Yeah, exactly. yeah. You, you have to think about that when you're like, okay, listen, I'll give you guys some money back. All right, cool. And then you go and just shit it out. It's like, all right, so we both got fucked here. Mm -hmm. You're wasting money. I lost money. How are you doing that? But I like the fact that he wants to stick around. I assume there's going to be some contract announcement with Aaron, too. That seems to be what everybody's right. saying. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm intrigued to watch how that team turns out. A team that is sitting with a lot of money. Cleveland Browns mm. got a bunch of money. The Indianapolis Colts have a bunch of money. I believe the Cardinals still somehow have moved a lot of J.J.'s money into future years. He's only making like $4.9 or $5 million. They have a lot of money. The New England Patriots yeah. have a lot of money. Hey. The team that disappeared that we all thought were potentially dead, they have a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And, Connor, you have been talking a lot of shit about players that are potentially going back to New England. Yep. Do you feel as if the Patriots are going to come back? Or do you think these teams that maybe, if you listen to the seismic shift report from the Arizona Cardinals owner, do you think there's a chance for teams to come out of nowhere, in particular a team that everybody has ruled dead, the New England Patriots? <laughs> and more so, Pat, absolutely. They do have a chance <laughs> to come out of nowhere. But even if uh, – wouldn't it just make sense that the guy who never – pays anybody bill belichick flips the script this year and starts paying people well, well, because well. no one else can we went all in the last five years that's, what we did. <laughs> that's true we sold yeah. out we did what we could went to five or five and afc championships three super bowls yada 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 four super bowls one three of them there it is sorry sometimes <laughs> i forget there's so many uh, but a hunter henry Manuel sanders is going to be able to get him on the cheap maybe i mean there's so many options out there now with and, the defense coming back that all held out yeah, or bring, opted out bring in high tower and there's still time to move some guys around to get even more cap so i mean things are looking up for new england you get bud debris up there in new england oh, oh man if we do that <laughs> see you in the bowl boys kenny galladay <laughs> oh bring in kenny why not really good quarterback mm -hmm. yeah jimmy g potentially with cam <laughs> newton going out to san fran maybe Ooh. i mean I, jimmy's been paid there, there's so much that could potentially happen and i do know that you know whenever we played in the fiesta bowl Mm. When we played in the Fiesta Bowl, Bill Stewart, rest in peace, legend, was our interim head coach because Rich Rod had just accepted a job uh, at Michigan or whatever. So that means you can't coach in a game that you worked all year for because you accepted a job somewhere else. That's just kind of how the business goes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Didn't make sense to me then, really. Still doesn't at this point. I guess it would help recruiting, but everybody knows you're gone, so it doesn't really matter. It wasn't Rich's decision. This is like what coaches do or whatever. Uh, but Bill Stewart gave us uh, this one speech. It was I think we were practicing at a junior college outside of Phoenix a little bit, and then we moved in later in the week to kind of do our stuff in uh, the mountains out there. You know, he looks, he goes, "You see those mountains?" And we all look, and obviously we fucking see them. In the desert. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's real flat. He goes, "Those are superstitious mountains." Men used to go into those mountains thinking they were going to get gold, and they died in those mountains. They were told a false story. They were told a false narrative. They thought they were going to get broken off whenever they go into those mountains. What happened? They died. Let me tell you another thing about a little false narrative. Oklahoma told us that we ain't never going to be able to whatever that whole thing. Mm -hmm. I feel like all these conversations we have are potential false narratives. Uh, maybe. You know, because Masker Week up until maybe, what, today? has been a bit of a dud. It has mm. been. But now that Jay Glazer's like, it's going to go down. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe it will go down. But could you imagine if Bud Dupree goes and signs with New England? Emmanuel Sanders maybe goes back to Pittsburgh where he got this whole thing started. Kenny, Dolly, or Kenny Galladay goes to the Colts. There's going to be a lot of that potentially. This is what everybody's saying. Everybody's saying like, hey, look for one-year rentals are potentially going to happen. Look for a lot of teams coming together, kind of super team like – that has never happened in the NFL, really, aside from, I guess, Tampa now and Kansas City. There's always been ring chasing. But the at the magnitude that everybody's talking about, including us, because we are just reading reports we're observing and reporting, it would be insane if some of these teams got one-year cheap deals out of players just to come try to get a ring and then go somewhere else. And if New England is one of those teams, it would be absolutely wild for everybody free agent markets wild but even i mean watson wilson Derek carr there might be other quarterbacks yeah, but moving they, too by the way it feels like that's another superstition mountain where we're going in yeah. there thinking they're gonna they're not gonna get moved mm -hmm. in russell wilson mountain. russell wilson yes, exactly yes. a superstition quarterback mountain yeah. <laughs> here's the mount rushmore all right right up there but russell wilson going back into seattle is gonna be uncomfortable yeah Okay, with his teammates. Mm -hmm. Deshaun Watson having to go back into Houston Texan, it's not uncomfortable with his teammates mm -hmm. or his coaches, but it's very uncomfortable in the entire building. I would almost say at this point, 
it's more uncomfortable early. Not that Russell Wilson couldn't get past it and his teammates wouldn't get past it because we're professionals and we've had a lot of success, blah, blah, blah. We got to do what we got to do if you're them. But I feel like Russell Wilson going back in that locker room is more, much more uncomfortable than Deshaun Watson. Russell Wilson allegedly and Pete Carroll don't get along now. He's buried his teammate. Well, he hasn't. His team has buried yeah. his teammates, mm-hmm, yeah. basically. He said four teams he'd rather play for. Okay, so that's, that's a little bit tougher on conversation walking in the locker room, I think, than Deshaun Watson, who's like, I hate this fucking guy. Yeah, Everybody's yeah. like, yeah, yeah, we we kind of do too. <laughs> We're with you. You know what I mean? So the linemen under the bus too. I it, mean exactly that's what I'm saying. So will any will any of these moves happen that we think are gonna happen? I'm thinking maybe not. All right. I'm thinking maybe not. I, I'm I'm hopeful. I'm I'm wishful. Yeah. Please. You know, for our show, for the sake <laughs> yeah. of our show, not for the teams like hey Seattle Seahawks fans. I, I get a lot of tweets from Seattle Seahawks fans saying that, you know, um we're mean to the Seahawks or whatever. And listen, I don't think we are at all. I, I think we're pretty fair on this entire thing. And we apologize for this. But if Russell Wilson was to move in the next couple of weeks oh. and that thing was deferred past June so that the that would be huge. Yeah. The cuts that we might have today over the next three hours might be huge. I mean, there might be some really big things. Or we might just sit here and twiddle our fucking thumbs for the next oh. week. That's what it feels now, like. Now that the cap's set, NASCAR week yeah. starts. Teams are about to chop some people you know, off the block. The interesting thing about the cap being set and um you know sometimes behind the ears it hurts the, the glasses. Uh, you, know, sure. the, yeah. you got the double with the wire break. But you still want to have the blue ray protection. Yes, of right. course. Looking Smart. at screens still. All day, every day. Yeah. Smart. Man, that definitely distracted me there, but I'll put him back. <laughs> Half raise, even. No, so the the salary cap going down or whatever, and then everybody's saying it's going to be big, and Jay Glazer reporting it's going to be big. Now we got people reporting what the salary caps are for each team, and we got conflicting reports from people. I don't think anybody knows exactly how many dollars and cents everybody has, but it's been pretty apparent who's fucked and who's not, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. And, and <laughs> So, like, the Saints are a massive part of Massacre Week because they got to get under quickly. Other teams that are over the cap via Duvy Kleiman at NFL underscore Duvy. The Rams are $29 million over. Eagles are $25 million over. Allegedly now, we don't know whose numbers Duvy's coming from because Andrew Brandt and Spotrack, the company, they disagreed on one particular team's number. So if they disagreed on one, do they disagree on more? And how many different fucking numbers do we got? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure, but Rams, $29 million. Eagles 25, Bears 20, Chiefs 18, Falcons 11, Packers are $5 million over, Manageable. Giants are $5 million over, Vikings $1 million, and the Bucks are 400000 over, but they're already in conversations with Tom Brady, they said, to restructure a contract, which I assume they will do and defer to later years in this entire thing, because they did take away the differential in payment from one year to the next in the contract. It used to be a rule where you couldn't, change a certain amount, a percentage of the contract. I think 25% or something like that. Now they said, hey, you can go ahead and change because of the world that we're in if you can make it all work down the line. Look for a lot of restructuring, smaller numbers, cutting and all that shit, but here we are just waiting on Saints are down to 30, so they're now below or in a better situation than the Rams and Eagles. So 30 over? 30 over, yes. Yeah, see, that's still... I mean, that is so that is much. so much money. Last year at 198, this year 182 and a half. Everybody shapes their contracts as if it's going up because, by the way, it is going up in every other asset except for the ticketing and concessions and everything like that. So all these contracts by these GMs and these salary cap managers that teams have and lead counsel negotiations, <laughs> it's all being set with the predictor model that's basically saying this shit's going up and up and up. So all the players hate back-end deals because you want to get your money up front you don't want to get paid later because you don't know what's going to happen later and everything like that normally the back end deals can have a little bit more of a jump because they're predicting that the salary cap is going to go up they're going to have more room to dance with and when that salary cap doesn't do that you got a lot of people who are their plan ahead people they're like whoa 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 whoa, whoa. we could not have and it's like hey force majeure bro <laughs> <laughs> uncle COVID came through and you are donezo with everything you got going on arizona cardinals can you put that list back up of the overall Cap from Spotrack. Uh, Buda Baker will be joining us. And uh, oh, here we go. The so, rollover? Yeah, yeah. This is total cap with rollover. Cleveland Browns, $212 million. Dallas Cowboys, $210 million still. What? 
Is this pre? No, because they haven't done the deal yet. So this is on franchise tag, which they, they have more money than probably. Because franchise tag was $37 million. He's only like 31 or something next year against the Caps or saving like $6 million. What's up, Diggs? So while Dallas Cowboys do have $210 million for their cap, they have already spent $208 million of it. So they only have $2 million left. Okay. So, oh. Okay. So these aren't updated numbers. No, they are. That's like what that's what their their cap number is. That's not how much cap space they have. Left. Oh, okay. Okay. This is how much money they can spend Correct. next year mm. with the rollover from previous Correct. years not spending the cap money. Yeah. So if you save money from last year, for instance, Cleveland Browns, uh, you do some quick math. They saved like thirty million from last year, so they were able to roll it into this year to two hundred and twelve million altogether. Yes. And the Browns have $25 million left in cap space. Jeez, there's some teams that can get real good real quick. Yeah, yeah and the Patriots have 55, I believe, left, but they're only listed at 205 on that list. So you're spending, so 205 is your cap. You have 55 still left. So although you get to play with an extra, what, 23 million or something yeah. like that, you have your 2 million under the cap at the current moment. Yeah, like the Patriots right now have only spent 135 million. They have 70 million left in cap space. Woo. To get to that 200, including the Trent Brown, yes. You're just do you know anything about your fucking team? Well, it said 66 <laughs> yesterday. Then we did Trent Brown, so that you minus 11 from that 66. So I assumed it was 55. Yeah, that's good math, by the way. Thank yeah. you. I thought so too. By the way, welcome home, Trent Brown. Huh? Welcome, yeah. welcome home. It's good to have him back, man. That tattoo he has. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, the best. He's meant to be up there. I mean. Come on. Yeah, I guess. All right. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll answer some phones. one 888 mad Dog <laughs> Gumpy's answering the lines. Uh, normally, Mitt and Gumpy, they answer the phones before the show starts. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's the same group of people calling at the same time. And I appreciate those people trying to get in there. So, But I get a lot of tweets from people telling me that they call in for hours on time and they can't get in. So we tried to, I tried today to adjust the time of Gumpy answering the phones. Maybe it's a different batch of people. No offense to the people that call in on a regular basis. We appreciate you. Mm -hmm. I am just tired of getting the tweets from people that are like, hey, I can never get through. Just trying to be fair and balanced. I just want to yep. be, hey, I just want to be a community. That's right. Mm -hmm. fair I just and balanced, want to be baby. a community around here. Now, mm -hmm. we did learn yesterday that the phones stink. Yes, they that's did. right. Well, but then we had that one caller that said it was perfect. That was a delightful experience. I and think, then Mitt so. said he was going to speak honestly. Yeah. yeah. He had no, I had no idea nobody knew about the phone. He's having a vacation right now. <sighs> oh, I mean, yeah. he is. Did anybody enjoy their week off or will enjoy their week off more than what Mitt is doing right now? Not no a way. chance. No He's way. In central time, right? Yeah, 11, so 19. it's 11-19. He's probably already had eight IPAs on the yeah. slopes. I mean. <laughs> probably on his second if gallon he, of mimosas. Yeah, if he's still know. standing up, I'd be <laughs> shocked. I would, I'd be very surprised. <laughs> yeah. I'd be very surprised mm -hmm. with that as well. So yesterday, Dak Prescott got paid. Mm -hmm. Today, some players are getting cut. Mm -hmm. There's college basketball all day. Um, when's the draft? 55 50 days. days. 50, 50 days. 50 days until the NFL draft. I got a chance to, you know, reminisce about the 2019 Nashville draft mm -hmm. with uh, Kyle Brandt on this 10 questions thing. I did not. Now, this 10 questions show, I should have listened to more episodes. I listened to the clips. I didn't listen to full episodes. Mm -hmm. So the clips don't tell you the questions that are being asked mm -hmm. to get to those clips. And I think I had a pretty poor show. <laughs> They are trivia questions. They're tough questions, yeah. Trivia questions I got asked. Okay, who is the president? Ty, I told you the mm -hmm. answer. I think I told everybody the answer. I don't know. I can't remember. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I told mm -hmm. everybody. All right, I'll ask Diggs. I'll make you feel CT. Good. Diggs, who is the president after Tricky Dick Nixon got caught up in Watergate? Who is the president that became president whenever he got stepped down or whatever? Eisenhower. Great guess. Bingo. Eisenhower. It's fucking <laughs> Gerald <laughs> Ford, dude. Oh. I said Warren G. Harding. That's a great Good answer. guess. That's a great I would have said Lyndon B. You, Johnson. The fact that you knew that was a president, I mean, just pulling that out, that's, that's a good answer. Man, there was a couple questions. There, a lot of, like, pop culture questions in there. You know what I mean? Like, bro, I have. Well, I have no idea. So the, the, the way we got to it, and, and this is not too much of a spoiler, I would appreciate it if you wanted to download this podcast, though. Mm -hmm. People at Spotify have no idea we exist. This is a Spotify exclusive. Mm. I think it was a good show, Kyle Brand. I'm a big fan of Kyle Brand. I think we had yeah. a good one. It'd be nice if they saw that thing potentially yodel a little bit because it is a good show. Oh, yeah. But uh, he, he asked me to finish a lyric 
and it was, I'm Mr. Brightside. And then it stopped. And he went on this whole thing about how that was the killer's big breakout song. Mm -hmm. Like the killers had been around, it had kind of been a thing. And then Mr. Brightside kind of took him over the moon. Then he talked about how the draft he thought was that for me. And I was like, oh, it's really cool. And got a chance to talk about that story. They need to continue to do the draft in entertaining fashion. Yeah. They need to continue to. I'm not just saying because I had a blast up there. Reggie talking shit. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, the David Akers moment where yeah. he's talking. Like, they have to continue to do that. I understand there are draft people that love the draft. Diggs is a guy that loves the draft. He will sit there and watch the draft day mm -hmm. three, day f whatever, however yep. many days it is, he'll do it. I like that they're trying to make that thing as entertaining as possible. But if I'm a player, there's no chance in hell I'm going to that draft. Well, and they set it up perfectly for years where it's like Tennessee, you know, Colts are a rival. If they're doing it in Cleveland this year, like, why not wheel like Joey Porter out there and have Cleveland him talk shit to Brett the Brett Kiesel. Yes, yeah. exactly. Get his ass out of the log cabin in yeah. the woods. Get the bus down here. Yeah. Jerome Start Bet Heinz Ward. Oh, 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 perfect. Oh. Cleveland yeah. will throw stuff, though. Like, Easy. Nashville Nashville's but, like a feel-good party thing, you know what I mean? If they start getting like real heat up there and people start throwing stuff, <laughs> oh, even yeah. better. Now we're talking. Yeah. Listen, you throw stuff at Peasy, you you dig your own grave, okay, my friend. Well, yeah, well, I'm just saying. I, I think that's what he'll be attempting to try to do there. <laughs> I, I think that's what he would be trying to do. The thought of the thought of that draft having 250,000 people. Do you remember that was the number they were saying? Oh, yeah. They were saying there was 250,000 <laughs> people. And me, me and Fox were looking around like, how the fuck do you count that? You know, like, how, <laughs> how did they? And they said, well, they, and some, like, mathematist came in my Twitter mentions and was like, well, they take the space, and then they have a max capacity for if a human was in every single spot, and then they graphed it out for the amount of graphs and everything like that. I'm like, okay, did your math say 250,000? Because I feel like while I was speaking in front of those people, it wasn't night one, so I was not there night one or whatever. I mean, probably should have been, but I was, mm -hmm. you know, that's Roger Goodell's time. Mm -hmm. I was the, night two, I think. Was that night two or night three? So I like think a, it was two. Night two. Night, night two. two. Night. So I was round. night two. It was definitely a large crowd. It was huge. But at 250,000 people would be... <laughs> did I perform a bigger audience than fucking DMX on that one video? <laughs> That's oh, what I was Where say. he comes out and it's like... Bang, da -da 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 and it seems like an entire country is out there. It's bigger that, than Bono, dude. It is bigger than Bono. Way bigger yeah. than Bono. It was, I, by the way, we got some stats on who has the uh, the largest. largest live performance. Mm -hmm. You know, McCartney's up there like 175,000 or something like 275. that. 275. No, 275? Uh, it could be 175. That's all. <laughs> live aid? I mean, I feel like it was 175. <laughs> I, I'm, you might have been right. I'm not no, no, you're right, you're right. But then Bono was at like four there, five, mm -hmm. uh, at like 100 and some thousand. And I'm thinking to myself, like, Roger Goodell did a 250,000-person set for yeah. four, four or five hours. hours. Yeah. <laughs> that thing, this guy deserves a little bit more respect. Now, I will say, it did not feel like it was 250,000 people. Mm -hmm. Maybe 100,000, which is still a fucking enormous amount of people. Nice. That is such a better way to do the draft mm -hmm. than what they used to do. Oh, my God. In New York every year. No offense to New Yorkers. Love New Yorkers, obviously. Yeah. Big part of our country. But it got a little old whenever, okay, this Giants fan's gonna do this. Yeah. This Jets fan's gonna oh. do this. Ah, <laughs> sleeping in the theater. Yeah. You, you still get I mean? that stuff at the other places, which so it's fine. It was a good idea though. I wonder what took so long. Why didn't they start touring that thing before, I wonder? You know? I assume once they did that Nashville one, they're like, eh, well, we gotta do this every yeah. single year. Keep it, going. Did they do it before there? Philadelphia, right? They moved it to Philly. There was a yeah. Dallas one, there Dallas, was a Philly Chicago, one. Chicago, right, was one of them. I think it's cause like before the draft was just like for dudes who like love the draft like me, but the the draft has grown now to like a spectacle. It's like part of the season. Yeah, but you have to grow to a spectacle, right? Yeah. Like it, it's like one of those. I wonder when the NFL was like, oh, we can make money off of this. Too. Oh, we can make this. Well, especially oh, we can have a two hundred fifty thousand person live crowd. <laughs> Let's just go. Announcing college kids, especially on day two and three, where like they're the analysts, like they still talk, but like the picks are going in much quicker. Like you need to have something that is electrifying, bro reminiscent about that night with Roger. Me and I didn't know Roger was there. Roger's there all the nights, by the way. He's in a little side. Uh, there's like a little side gimmick there. Where you mm -hmm. Some m and mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, they, that's where they give you the card, right? And they tell you who was drafted. Now, what I forgot to talk about on that 10 questions thing, and it literally just came back to me, Chris Ballard texted me 
10 minutes before their pick, and yeah. he's like, we're trading the pick. Yeah. Oh. Like, you motherfucker. We were so defeated. Oh, you motherfucker. You know? And then, uh, then like, a minute before, he was like, we got a good one. Don't worry about it or something. I'm like, okay, so I'm back in the game. All right, so I was just sitting back here for five hours. Yeah. Did not know if they were going to trade the pick or not, okay? So then I, I go out there, and it's, like, showtime or whatever. I'm like, all right, this is going to be a blast. And the first person you see when you get in this little side gimmick is Roger Goodell. He's just, mm-hmm. like, sitting there. And I'm like... Raj, what's up, dude? <laughs> dap up, full dap up, wow. full embrace as if it's a thing. He mocks what I'm wearing, you know, which is becoming a staple of my life here at this point. Mm-hmm. I had jeans on that were cuffed up. I had a cowboy button down that we bought day of yep. in Broadway because I had a T-shirt I was going to wear originally. And then I, I kind of got the feel of the room that I probably shouldn't have done that. Be as is. Yeah, be as if. Yeah. Be yeah. as if. Yeah, be as if. Be yeah. as if, your own quote. You fucked that thing up. <laughs> so, so when I go in there, he daps me up. He like kind of does this thing. He's like, have fun out there. I'm like, you got it. Walking out there after I get the card, by the way, Okariki. Oh, yeah. Mm. Oh. I was, you know, the lady that was working back there, I think she's one of the head of like NFL content or whatever. She's the one that gives me the card. And on the top of it, it has it like, you the know, phonetic sound. it out. Okariki. I'm like, Okariki? They're like, yeah. I'm like, Okariki. Oh, my fucking god biggest day of this kid's life because i remember back to my draft day mel kuyper just shit on me on television while i got drafted you know what i mean he's like oh this guy's gonna be washing vinatieri's shoes for two- <laughs> he's gonna be carrying Jeez. bags i'm like oh, I'm, I'm, this is my dream come true like i thought i was going back to school here pal all right so like we have a moment so last thing i want to do is fuck this guy's name so i literally as i'm standing there it's like a minute two minutes i'm like oh ka reeky Oh my God, fuck it. I, oh, Kariki, don't do it. And then I get on a stage in the picture of my face, because, you know, 250,000 people, it's deep. It, it's literally like a 20 yard by 30 yard picture of my face up there. And I look at it, I'm just like, oh my fuck, I should not be that large. Like, my face should never be that big. And then Shefty on the other side, Shefty like looks through, <laughs> he like looks through the ESPN set and does like a full one of these. I'm like, thank you. And the only reason he was able to do that because ESPN went to break, by the way. Oh. The story that doesn't get talked about is ESPN actually went to break for my pick. I'm on during their commercial. NFL Network was the only people that ran me, right? Rich Eisen, Charles Davis, who's going to be on mm-hmm. here. They put me over. They're laughing for the whole thing. ESPN decided not. To, they're like, we're going mm-hmm. to a break here for this one. It's like, you sons of bitches. But the NFL Network got us, obviously. And that's all she wrote. But that's why everybody wonders why it went, oh, Kariki, it is because that was the... That was the phonetic spell. That, yeah, was yeah. The, <laughs> that was the end of the thing, you know, the end of the entire little moment there. And I was so pumped. And I was like, now let's just get the motherfucker's name right. Okay, <laughs> let's just do it. And then as soon as I hit it, I'm like, let's bring it back one more time. A little victory lap here. And let's get out. I had an absolute blast. I hope. Now, I know there's been people that have made it into something every time they've done it. But if you get a chance to do that, like, man, you should at least have a good time. I was so lucky. They asked. By the way, people thought, Kyle Brandt said, the Colts asked you to do it. Nope, the NFL did. The Colts actually had Joe Wright's. Robert Mathis and an orangutan. Oh, that's right. And then the NFL asked me to do it, and I was so thankful for that thing. It was really cool talking with Kyle Brandt, though. Ten questions. We went through it all. I mean, it was awesome. I remember being in the green room for that, and the green room was dead. That's where all the players are and stuff, because it's a long day. Just drinking beers back here. (laughs) Exactly. And then once you went up there, everyone lost it. That place got so loud. A little energy back there. It It was was so Mm -hmm. funny. Shane Leckler, uh, he was supposed to be there to do that. I think the Texans did trade his. They did, yeah. They traded his pick. So he, he was just fucking hanging out he's like oh well, bro, just wasting a fucking day <laughs> he's awesome do you remember that bus ride over though i oh. remember that was all those legends on there i think to was on there dante hall might have been on there yeah that mm-hmm. one was awesome Damn. Yeah, it was everybody that made the made an announcement right. that night was basically on the bus yeah and we're just sitting in there and it's just like why am i on this bus <laughs> why ride? am i on there well that was <laughs> i had that question immediately following why i was on there. <laughs> why am i on this foxy's on this bus what's that all about? that was it's awesome like, and those player things are awesome and i'm glad they're coming back but what I will miss is Raj in his 1987 basement eating m and Yeah, I'll tell you what. That maybe stole the show. Mm-hmm. It's where I watch NFL football. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't even say the sport of football. No, no. NFL football right here on this chair. Okay, we're moving it for the cameras and everything. It'll be over here. And these are my peanut M&Ms that I eat every single Sunday, Monday, Thursday, and Saturdays if it calls for it during a worldwide pandemic. They are delicious. <laughs> and next time, by the way, he had the forethought, we need to eliminate some M&Ms. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> we need to eliminate some M&Ms. Alpha. He went through three of those fucking bins last year. Yeah. Alpha change. He was unbelievable. He got more comfy as the night went on. That's my, hey, 
That's my commission. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. You think Roger ever sees clips from this show? Oh, yeah. Sure. Like, after I did that draft announcement, I did not hear from Roger Goodell, by the way. At least maybe like a, hey, pretty good out there. Hey, man. That Appreciate it. But also he didn't send like a, hey, no. don't ever fucking say mm-hmm. the NFL's name again. Yeah. Like, which could have happened there. True. I wonder if he ever gets like a clip from our show that shows up on his you know, because he's the boss at NFL Network. Mm-hmm. He runs NFL Network. He is the boss at NFL Network. I believe he's a part of all the media conversations. And then there's this show that happens, and then that thing. I wonder how Roger Goodell feels about us. I love you. Yeah. I mean, with the Mowing exception the game. of Why a couple not? of things you may have said about Al River, on which you have retracted since. Yes. I have retracted. Mm-hmm. Those need to be redacted from the minutes, please. Exactly. Outside of that, I mean, yeah, you're a pretty good spokesman for the league. I think so. I think so. Is it possible Raj texted Ballard like, hey, I just saw what your guy was wearing. You guys better trade that pick in the next, you know, 10 minutes or else <laughs> we're not walking out. him out there. <laughs> he didn't see it. He, th- this thing was huge. Huge. It was like it was like two piers big. Jeez. Yeah. Your people are just sitting in these tents. You had to walk a quarter mile <laughs> to get there to get to the stage. Wasn't yeah. it Drew Locke with like 30 of his boys there? I, mean, I think he was supposed to go in the first round. Uh-huh. Yeah. He ends up going the next night. All his boys, they were at the hotel we were at yeah. afterwards. They were having a good time. Great time. Yeah. yeah. Great time. I don't know if Drew Locke was with him. I don't think he was probably doing stuff, if I had to guess. Yeah. Oh. We got to get to a break. Reading the playbook. Oh, wow. Buda Baker uh, was potentially, allegedly supposed to be on seven and a half minutes ago. Oh, man. Okay. Was it a Zoom call? No. FaceTime, FaceTime no answer. Mama, where I say I got to go. There are plays out by the road. Oh, you know, boys, with this voice that I currently have, there's some pitches I can get to and I can't get to. Mm-hmm. They're different than my real life pitches. When I'm young and something good, away Uh, we gotta get to a break. Let's see you on the other side. About four minutes. Take some of your phone calls. One eight 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 Mad Dog Six. <laughs> Wanted to go acapella there for the boys. Mm. You know what I mean? I feel like we did it justice. I think so too. Absolutely. No, no leave me lonely. Woo! You hear that? That's something I can get to that I can't normally do. Carl's back. Perfect for the air guitar. One eight 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 Mad Dog Six. <laughs> phone calls on the other side. This is Wednesday, March tenth. Roger Goodell gave me a big hug beforehand, too. That's good, too, sir. Thank you so much. Shane, you drinking? Yeah. Cheers to you, man. That was a good one. That was good. That was good. That was so good. Oh, that was I feel like it was pretty good. Oh, look at the phones. <laughs> We have to make a deal with the devil. Yeah, no big deal. Classic trial by combat situation. We got our champion, Dylan Bostic. All he's got to do, win the match, one, two, three, and we're home safe. The only man that would take the job to protect us from the devil himself, Dylan Bostic. Like you mentioned, Pat, there's probably about five or six other guys we'd rather have in this position, but we'll take Bostic, I guess. Not only are all of our souls on the line, the Office Championship Wrestling Championship, presented by Natural Light, is also on the line. No, Jesus, the devil's no, trying to put God to go right to hell. hell! I do not want to Good go God, to hell! No. Don't do Good it. God, no! Come on, Bostic, man! Oh, no. Oh, my. I'll see you in hell, Pat. The goddamn Easter Bunny's out here! What the hell's he doing here? The Easter Bunny is obviously here to help Dylan Bostic. Wait a minute. No! 
Oh, oh no! The Easter Bunny's been on the devil's side this whole time! Jesus Christ! Jesus Christ! Jesus what the hell's Christ. Jesus Christ doing here? The power of Christ is compelling Dylan Bostic! Look at this, Pat! Jesus Christ is bringing Bostic back to life! Jesus is going insane! And now Bostic's kicking wholesale ass in the ring! Jesus Christ has come to help Dylan Bostic defeat the devil and defeat the Easter Bunny! What's gonna happen here? Good God Almighty, it looks like he's going up in the scissor lift! Jesus is lifting the scissor lift! Jesus is now telling Bostic to come down from Don't do the it, heaven. Bostic! Don't no. do it! Oh, oh my, my God! God. Oh. Bostic's dead! He's dead! You can't tell from home, but that scissor lift is about eight stories up, Pat! Eighty feet in the air! Oh, wait! He's tuning up the band! The devil! Super Jesus. kick! Oh, into the casket! The, the devil cross. goes down! Jesus. The devil goes down! He shuts the casket! Straight back to hell! The devil goes straight back to hell where he belongs! With the assist from Jesus Christ of Nazareth! Dylan Bostic saves the PMI office's souls and wins the OCW Championship right here on our first OCW Straight to Hell! Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Jesus. Buddha Baker will not be appearing on today's show. Oh, no. Buddha. We've gotten word from his reps that he must have got lost with time. He was looking forward to the show. Mm -hmm. And for those that are wondering, the last time Buda Baker was on this show, he crushed. Yeah. yeah. Excellent. He absolutely crushed. Mm -hmm. Is this the J.J. Watt was a fan of this. This is probably J.J.'s fault. Hey. Whoa. Hey, I'm a fan of J.J., but I've seen him on goddamn Jimmy Fallon, but I haven't seen him on that screen right there. Yeah, yeah. To you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Man. Okay. That is All interesting. Right? That is interesting, isn't it? Yeah, very. But I do believe, you know, with J.J., there was a thought uh, from him strategic-wise, like, I can't go on there. Like with Jimmy, here's the here's the question, here's the answer. Right. Here's the question, here's the answer. <laughs> He's gonna laugh at everything okay. you say. By yeah. the way, I will too. I'm yeah, yeah. I'm a laugher. Okay, <laughs> I, I will never judge Jimmy for that. But it does seem like they are bang, 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 here you go. Mm -hmm. Which you have to be in the the formula that those shows are. Block, commercial, right. gimmick, game, YouTube video, boom, yeah. interview, slide, see ya, promote. Yeah, it's a it's a scientific equation. I think there is a chance that JJ did legitimately feel as if he would get on here and things would start to potentially fly that would cause a little bit of grief for him in his life. Yeah, not say something he shouldn't say, but just say something that's going to get picked up everywhere and yeah. maybe get him in a little hot water. Yeah, and not mm -hmm. hot water, just uncomfortable. Like, Having to answer questions that about stuff he didn't necessarily say. When your or, mentions get to a point where you just have to explain what you said because people are taking what you said and kind of, mick, you know, like kind mm -hmm. of taking it wherever they want to, which happens on the internet a lot. That is not a fun day on if you're a person that is on Twitter, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, I try to be a people wonder why we try to be as positive as possible on here. It's because I would like my life to be positive. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? I, I feel like that is those people. And this is why, yet again, Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless is to wake up, be entrenched in war with people that hate him and then sleep very soundly. And everybody's like, well, he's sleeping on a thing of money. It's like, I, I completely understand he is getting paid for that. But his life, we have to think about Unless he just hangs around a couple people that are just like exactly like him, he has to just be taking it. I don't have that ability. Like, I, I don't want to just, I, I'm just like, all right, I'm tired of it. Like, listen, man, I don't like you either. Like, can you just go talk to somebody else? <laughs> it's not what I want to do. Like, there's people though that live off of it and thrive off of it. That's not what I do. I would assume JJ is potentially similar. Mm -hmm. And if he was to come on here and say any, because we'd have to ask about the oh, revolution yeah. that happened yeah. on, on the football field. 
with Billy O'Brien. Yeah, right you just smacked him in the mouth, yeah. right? You just gave him a quick smack across the All face? Right, we won't talk about it, right, because the story hasn't come out. But was there any physical alter? Like, did you punch him? Yeah, you, spit in, you spit on him? Was or? it a verbal jest? Yeah. Like, I would have to ask that. He would have to answer. That mm-hmm. would immediately get taken into however they wanted mm-hmm. to. So I think that's why. Buddha's not that way, though, by the way. I, no? We no. were told Buddha was excited to come on. Mm-hmm. Great just lost, he's probably working out. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Can't be the highest paid safety in the NFL. No. Without working out all the time. Bingo. That's right. Get some phone calls in place of Buda Baker. Let's go to Colin in Wisconsin. What's going on, Colin? Okay. A lot of pressure. Hey, how's it going, Pat? Hey, not too shabby. Colin, what do you want to talk about? A uh, couple moves on the Packers. Uh, you know, Gouda Coons, he's not going to make any moves in uh, the free agency. So you think they should re-sign Aaron Jones or just roll with A.J. Dillon? Or possibly take a risk and go in the draft and get like a wide receiver? Okay, great question, Colin. Aaron Jones will officially be a free agent. He's not coming back to the Packers. If he was going to come back to the Packers, unless they told him to go tell us what the market's saying and then come back, which if you're an agent, you definitely come back and lie if you, you know, you, oh, you, that seems million. to happen all the time with the media being involved in everything. They did not franchise tag him. They did not extend him. They drafted A.J. Dillon high last year. Aaron Jones had his best season. He is going to be expensive. I'd assume the Packers are not re-signing him, which is, I, as a recent Green Bay Packer follower, that is – upsetting because he became dynamic this past season. I, don't, I assume he had been in the past, but this past season, watch every game. He's a dynamic runner. Now they got to find out if the sauce has the ability to do the same in A.J. Dillon, and AJ, Aaron Jones is going to get paid somewhere. Yeah, I think some people have been saying that the Packers are going to try to re-sign him on a team-friendly deal, but he was a fifth-round draft pick. Like He hasn't been paid anything yet, so, and it, I mean, he's going to, someone will pay him for sure, so probably not going to happen. It sucks, but hey, you know, I mean, guy hasn't been paid yet. Go get your money somewhere. He's very, very good. Let's go to Logan in North Carolina. What's going on, Logan? Hey, first of all, Pat, it is an honor to be on the phone with the greatest voice in sports <clears throat> of this generation, the next generation, and maybe all time. You are a legend, Pat McAfee. Oh, see, that would have been a yeah, perfect yeah. time to say Connor, Ty, or something like that. That's normal. That would be the curveball that would normally come there. But I appreciate the compliment. Uh, obviously, it's because of listeners like you that I get a chance to do what I do, and the boys are an immense help to everything. So, and my voice right now, the, the funny you talk about the voice, this son of a bitch is trying to quit. So, we're hanging on to everything. <laughs> Thing right now, Logan, but I appreciate the compliment. What do you want to talk about? Hey, listen, this, there's this YouTuber named Destroy, and he, uh, he posted some Look videos uh, making every missed kick, saying he's going to still have the league's job if he wanted to, saying he, yeah. he's got the leg for the NFL. He just hasn't been given the opportunity. You know this guy? Do you have an opinion? Oh, yeah. I know. I'm a big fan of destroying, actually. Now, I don't love whenever kickers do that because the kicker community already gets buried enough, but some kickers do that because they feel as if they haven't been given enough spotlight or opportunity and they have the ability. I've been watching destroying very close. Uh, last year, he was putting out a lot of videos of him kicking. I watched the videos. I didn't think he was an NFL kicker when I was watching his videos. Recently, the videos that he's been putting in a lot of work, I've been watching his videos recently. The ball seems to have the flight path of an NFL kicker, the pop, the sound, the effortlessness that he's hit a ball right now. Andy can punt. Andy's a great athlete. Uh, I hope he gets an opportunity. I've never seen him live and in person kick, but I have watched him through the years because I've been impressed with his entrepreneurial uh, abilities. Uh, and he's a kicker, so I obviously support that. I don't love the, hey, this is every miss. I fucking did this or whatever. Like, that is, he had to do that. That was kind of what he had to do. I think that's, you know, him trying to get his thing. I would have done it differently. But nonetheless, I think at the point we're at now, He's bombing balls, and I'm happy for him. I hope he gets a chance. Is he, like, legit kicking and giving it a go now? Because wasn't he, like, a trick shot guy before? Yeah, so the thing is, it's hard to tell the internet kickers who will be good in the NFL or not, right? Because to be in the NFL, the biggest thing is consistency. So there's a lot of people on the internet that can kick the shit out of balls. Like they're, they're, there's, It's awesome to watch. I enjoy watching balls get slaughtered. There's a lot of trick shots that happen and everything like that. The difference between everybody that has a job in the NFL, not everybody, by the way, the difference between people that stay in the NFL a long time kicking and don't is consistency. So whenever you watch a YouTube kicker, and I assume a lot of special teams coaches do this as well, you're trying to see certain kicks. That it's like, okay, is that a repeatable kick? Is that kick something? Does that ball flight have the ball flight that you would think an NFL ball would have to have because there's six foot six, six foot seven guys that are rushing. Now, does that seem like he's kicking in one direction with just the wind at his back? Whereas, so there's a lot of deciphering videos, and I've, I feel like I've watched a lot of Donald's kicks destroying. I think he's at a point now where it's like, yeah, I think he, 
I think he can go. I think he can. I think he can go. Get, I didn't always believe that, and I never said that publicly because I didn't want to ruin anything he had going on or stop him from working or start a beef because I did like him. But now with the balls I've seen him in, I'm I'm all in. I think he slaughters football. He ran a four five down at the IM athlete uh, combine too. Damn. He fucking mosses people. He's awesome. And he has a hell of a business, so I'm a big fan. Do you think like the undrafted guys and guys like Donald who haven't gotten a shot in the NFL will get more chances because they'll take pennies to play? Well, it'd be men, right? Because they're just yeah. it's a, everything's a prove it deal. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I thought about this. I got a lot of people tagging me in a lot of different kicks. There's former rugby players that are in Scotland that are trying to learn how to kick footballs that are like 35 years old. And I'm watching him kick and I'm like, okay, not yet, but it looks like he could potentially get there. It's just when you get your opportunity, you know, you, you have to get lucky to get an opportunity. And then when you get your opportunity, you have to seize it. Crush you have to go. Like, sure. you have to go. You know what I mean? And if not, you'll just get put back in the carousel. But if you go, you go. So. I, I think at this point, it does not matter if you kicked in college. I don't think it matters anything. If you can perform right now and kick balls, I think you have a chance of getting a chance uh, because of what you just said, mm -hmm. but also because the visibility on everything with social media. So oh. I hope I hope D. Strong gets an opportunity, though. He's worked his ass off. Um, let's go to Ryan in California. What's going on, Ryan? Hey, Pat, boys, what the fuck is going on on this beautiful fucking Wednesday? Hey, Ryan! Things are good, pal. How are you? Fuck yeah. I'm fucking chilling out here, boys. Just enjoying that California weather. Quick question for you guys. Huge Philadelphia Eagles fan. We got, we got the, the sixth overall pick this year. Here. I'd love to see what my boy Jalen Hurts can fucking do. But He's a lot a of starter. Eagles fans say we should mm -hmm. pick Justin Fields or maybe uh, Trey Lance from North Dakota State. What are your guys' thoughts on that? I just don't want the Eagles to go down the road like the Cleveland Browns and be picking quarterbacks first round year after year after year. I will say, Ryan, it, uh, great call, by the way, and I hope you enjoy that California weather there for, you know, our weather is looking great. Oh, it's yeah. beautiful. Oh, yeah. Fantastic. For four to five days here in Indiana, we are living the life. You know why? It's March, basketball yeah. state. Boom. Ooh. <laughs> basketball God said, hey, son, bang, get your ass out there. Yeah, let's brighten it up. Let's go ahead and go back there. Uh, it came out, Jeff Laurie said that he would like the team to act as if Jalen Hurts is a starter or something. I forget the yeah. exact thing. And like act as if Jalen Hurts is a guy. Let's empower him to be successful. I would hope so because you blew up the entire last team because of Jalen Hurts. So yeah. a lot of people are saying they should draft a quarterback. If they do that, they put themselves right back in the same situation for at least another year, right? But at this point, do the Eagles even care if it's another year because it's kind of like a uh, uh, cash-strapped year? I, I think they're going to give Jalen Hurts a go. They hired a guy that he knew since he was like a kid or something mm -hmm. to be a quarterback coach. They bring an offensive coordinator that hopefully will be able to make the most uh, or a head coach that will hopefully be able to make the most out of Jalen Hurts. I feel like they're going all in with Jalen Hurts. The quarterback conversation in Philadelphia, though, has been one I've seen. I have seen it on the internet. And if they did that, I, I guess with the Eagles, you wouldn't necessarily be surprised at this exact moment, but I don't think that would make any sense with what they've... Like, I don't think they've done anything that has indicated that they're like, yo, we're looking at quarterback or whatever. It's like, it feels like they burnt everything down for Jalen. If you go, the, it, that would be dumb. But dumb things have happened in the NFL before. Yeah, I mean, he was a second-round pick, and last year he didn't – he proved enough or showed enough that I think you at least give him a year before you draft another quarterback. Like And like you said, you burn everything down basically for Jalen. Like It would make zero sense if they drafted a quarterback. I mean, could you imagine if they hire a friend of Jalen Hurts to be quarterback coach and then draft a new quarterback? Yeah, man. And then that guy's like, listen, everybody told me this place stunk, but I didn't know this was going to happen. It's If you don't think Jalen Hurts is your guy, I guess you have to draft another quarterback. But all of the decisions that have happened up until this point have not indicated at all that they're going to look for another quarterback. You can also erase uh, Trey Lance because you're out of your fucking mind if you think Philadelphia is going to draft another guy from True. South or yep. North Dakota State. It just won't happen. They can't do it. They still got the bad taste in their mouth from Carson. Or maybe they completely bury him and they, they say, hey, we want to go get our guy from North Dakota State who can win. I just don't think there's any way they're going to do that. <laughs> you think the whole state of North Dakota has potentially been a little bit uh, toxic to the Eagles organization? You think they're going to stay away from that I one? think so. Welcome to the United States of America. There are 49 states. Is what Philadelphia Eagles are saying right now? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> they're done with North Dakota. Hey, by the way, Indianapolis come big North Dakota place. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, hey, in oh. South Dakota, by the way, we got mm -hmm. Vinatieri out here. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Go, boys. <laughs> Tommy in New York City. What's going on, Tommy? Tommy. Tommy. 
Yo, what's going on, my guy? How the hell are you? Big time Tommy. Tommy, how old are you? 34. Still called Tommy? Uh, yeah, dude, for sure. I mean, in New York, that's how we refer to people, you know? No, no, I love it. I just think that's a, I, I love the fact that you are Tommy all the way through and through. Like, Tommy is a good name. Yeah. I think as soon as I meet a Tommy, I have a lot of expectations mm -hmm. immediately upon hearing the name. Probably high energy guy, mm -hmm. likes to have a good time. Yeah. I would assume big football guy. I would assume immediately Tommy is a big football yeah. guy. Uh, it, are all those things accurate? And what do you want to talk about? Yeah, bro, you already know what time it is. Good read, man. Good Your read. name's Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, Tommy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Tommy, yeah. Tommy. What do you want to talk about, Tommy? Tommy? Yo, Tommy time, is that what you uh, said? Daniel Jones, bro. What's going on with this guy? How many times is he going to get run over by a dump truck before he gets the ball out of his hands on time? Tommy, you, think, you, Tommy, you think it's timing? You, you, Tommy says it's a timing issue. You don't think it's potentially that offensive line was so bad, so, yeah. so bad. Yo, like, I hear you, but, like, what is Jason Garrett watching where he's calling, like, double well, well. yards down the field? <laughs> you know, like, worms. Yo, Mark Schlereth was on your show talking about how coaching impacts all that stuff as well with Russell Wilson in Seattle and all that stuff. So, I don't know. I think that's what we're dealing with. But, Tommy, uh, listen. I don't know, Tommy, Tommy. I don't know, Tommy. Tommy, I don't know if we have enough time to dive into <laughs> Jason Garrett, Daniel Jones, and the New York Giants, and your name being Tommy, to be honest. <laughs> you brought too much to the call. We appreciate it, though. Love Tommy's call. Mm -hmm. The fact that Jason Garrett's the offense coordinator over there, it does not get talked about it at all. Mm -mm. I remember when they were playing the Cowboys, I think, at prime uh -huh. time, and they just scanned over to him with his glasses and his thing. I'm like, Jason fucking Garrett is running that offense yeah. over there. Good for him just hopping right back in the game. That guy hadn't called plays in 11 years or something like that. Joe Judge is like, uh, come on in, pal. You'll figure yeah. it out. And I think he got a couple head coaching interviews in the offseason, yeah. too, mm -hmm. after having a dog shit offense all year. So, yeah, good for Jason Garrett. Hey, listen, if you can... Yeah. Hey, I was smiling in the face of bullshit. I was at the Cowboys a long time. I can do this. My team stinks again. They thought we were going to the Super Bowl. We're 8-8 eight eight again. Okay, who are we going to talk to? Jerry, let's go talk to Uncle Jerry. If you run a, if you run a team before, though, you have the... In, in the owner's ideas, I mean, Gumpy's screaming at people in the front. Yeah. Of it is very quiet. In the owner's meetings, the, in the, the owner's eyes, when they're hiring a head coach, it's like, okay, this guy's been here. That's why, like, CEOs, they get for a job from one place to another uh -huh. place. They at least know everything that's coming across the table. Now, is that necessarily the right way to hire? I'm not saying that is accurate at all. I, I would assume there's somebody new that could potentially take on that task and have potential more positive results. That's not a burial on Garrett. That's a burial on most hiring practices that happen around the world. But Jason Garrett gets the interviews because he's been there before. Mm -hmm. uh, like, for instance, I cannot believe Jim Caldwell. Everybody talks about other coaches that didn't get a head coaching job and Eric Bieniemy and I, you know, at some point he's going to get a head coach. Right. has to at some point. But Jim Caldwell is a guy who's been there, done that, had success in a place nobody else had. If he was interested in a head coaching job, that is the guy that you bring in. And I got a chance to play for Jim Caldwell. Love that man. Always the same person. And it's like he's been there, he's handled it. I think that's why a lot of those decisions get made, though. I can't believe Jason Garrett. He, what if he was a head coach again this year? Hey, oh, Chargers were thinking about let's it. Let's not forget Freddie Kitchens was standing behind him, too, True. coaching tight ends up there for New York as well. Then they had the whole O-line coach thing. But I think yeah. this year they're getting – Oh, fuck, uh, yeah. yeah. Colombo. They're yeah. getting Solder back. <laughs> he went into the office. They drafted right? a tackle mm -hmm. four overall last year. The was, off, if they fix that offensive line, yeah. I, I believe in Daniel Jones. Oh, yeah. I believe in him. I'm not going to say Fastest it. quarterback in the NFL. I got to watch, watch Darius Butler's breakdown of Sam Darnold. Yeah. Because he, he thought that Sam Darnold stunk, and then he watched film on him. He had a full breakdown. I didn't get a chance to watch it because Massacre Week and a lot of things going on. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch that. But I was about to say, I'm a believer in Daniel Jones. I don't know if oh, I'm yeah. supposed to be or not, but I – he was great to bet on this year. He was going to run more than anybody expected him to run. He yep. can run fast. It feels like he was getting killed a lot, so maybe let's get the ball out of his hands a little bit quicker, or maybe let's block a little bit better. But I feel like his upside is real, is real. But will he just continue to be the guy that's just like, Oof. just gets killed? And is it his fault? They need Saquon back, too. He got hurt as well last year. He was out for most of the First season. Game, second game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Early. Yeah, yeah, second game against the Bears. <laughs> Marty Vicks. Shout out Marty Vicks, dude. Hour one's wrapping up. Will somebody check on Buda Baker? Make sure he's <laughs> yeah, all right. No kidding. Hour two, Kyle Brandt will be joining us in about yeah. 10 minutes. I got a chance to do his podcast called 10 Questions. I believe it's on Spotify and the YouTube. It was a good time. This guy, high energy. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Good morning, football. I think he's a diligent worker. I think he's very intelligent. 
He's Princeton's all-time leading rusher. Okay. <laughs> yep. Much smarter than me. And that was apparent in those trivia fucking questions. <laughs> Kyle Brandt, Good Morning Football host, will join us on the other side of this. Plus more of Master Week. This is the Pat McAfee Show, March 10th. Mr. Brightside blew up the killers. Like, it was, it made them, they were everywhere. Maybe you knew about them or something, but, like, they was huge. I think there was a moment like that for you, in my opinion, and it was that the two, not, 2019 NFL Draft in Nashville, Tennessee, when the Indianapolis Colts selected you to announce a pick and it sounded a little bit like this. Man Hello, Nashville. I'm not going to say a single word about the Tennessee Titans record against uh -oh. the Indianapolis uh -oh, Colts boy. because I was a punter, and there's no reason for me to talk about that. <laughs> With that being said, we did not punt much against the Tennessee Titans, <laughs> so you probably have no clue who I am to begin. <laughs> All right, it's a 10 out of 10 line, and there was you, you announced the pick. Pat, I was in Nashville that night. There was buzz about you. Everyone was talking McAfee, McAfee. I really think that was your Mr. Brightside moment. What was that night like for you? Oh, it was awesome. I appreciate that, by the way. I um, So a couple of years before that, you hear me say in that speech later that a few years ago when I retired, I retired alongside Robert Mathis and Joe Wrights. Uh, I watched the draft months after we all announced our retirement. Robert Mathis announced a draft pick. Joe Wrights announced a draft pick. And then an orangutan from the Indianapolis Zoo announced the fourth <laughs> round draft pick. So I was legitimately, like, actually replaced by an orangutan. Okay? So that was quite a moment for me. You know, I, I, I had to realize where I stood and everything. And the orangutan was terrible, Kyle. That orangutan was terrible. All it had to do was press the iPad. Couldn't press the iPad. You know what I mean? I remember it was a disaster. He completely fumbled it. You would have stuck the iPad with full dexterity. You know, you would have nailed it, and Thank they you. did not ask. Um, so, did you know Pat that night was that big? Like th that, when you're up there, you're like, "Holy shit, this is a huge moment for me." Yeah. So I got an email like two weeks before the draft, and it was from the NFL. Yeah. It was the the NFL or NF I forget who I think it was the NFL. Hey, would you be interested? Okay. In announcing a draft pick, and I'm like, I got some, yeah, absolutely, especially oh, after yeah. the orangutan. You know what I mean? So, like, I'm very <laughs> appreciative of all those opportunities. Like, I was so incredibly thankful for it. But now that I have it, you know, like, how do we make this, you know, one that we'll think about in a little bit? So, as I'm sitting backstage having some beers with Shane Leckler and the boys, you know, uh, the other people that are, I was watching Reggie go up there and just roast Tennessee, just roast sure. these titans kill them and i i loved everything about it i'm like okay so i have to answer that obviously so you know the brain starts cooking a little bit and as i'm sitting in the back waiting area roger goodell comes over daps me up you know he asked me about what i'm wearing i got my jeans like uh i got them <laughs> kind of cuffed up i got some air forces on and i didn't even have a dress shirt on i was i was gonna wear a t-shirt but i hit a uh i hit a store on uh Broadway there or whatever to buy one. So I got a cowboy shirt on underneath, you know what I mean? Sport coat. And he goes like, uh, Hey, have fun out there or whatever. And I'm like, Hey, don't you worry about that, pal. I give him like a fist pump. And at that moment it was like, Oh, I didn't really pump much against it. And it like all came together literally as I was like walking out there. And as I'm walking on a stage, I look to my right. There is a 30 yard sized picture of my face, right? Because of how deep <laughs> that crowd was. I like looked, I almost got like disgusted. I was like, that's yeah, way too big of a nose there. And I look over, Shefty gives me like a salute or whatever. I'm like, Shefty, how's it going? And then all of a sudden, as soon as I sit down, I see all those people. There was a lot of people. And I was like, this is, this is going to be a moment. Like I knew it was going to be something awesome. I'm very thankful for the opportunity and uh, very lucky I got to do it. But yeah, I thought it was going to go pretty good. And that's why I was pretty excited for it.
the Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. <laughs> Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Hour two here on Sirius XM and YouTube. We'll begin immediately following this beat drop from Twine. Shout out to Twine, that beat hits every single damn time. We're in the middle of a massacre week. Obviously, people are getting cut in the NFL because the salary cap has gone down 15 and a half million or so. A lot of things popping off in the NFL. Emmanuel Sanders cut this morning from the New Orleans Saints. Quan Alexander released from the Saints this morning. Malcolm Butler released from the Tennessee Titans yesterday. Thomas Morstead released mm. from the New Orleans Saints last week. What will happen as the day rolls on? We will talk about it. But joining us now is the host of 10 Questions, which is a podcast uh, on Spotify, I believe. He's a host on Good Morning Football every single morning. Very, very thankful for this guy's existence in the sports world he was on real world at one point in his life he was producing for jim rome for a long time now he's finally dominating the airwaves by himself in the sports world we're lucky to have him ladies and gentlemen calibrate yeah. Let's go, great to be here on the warren g harding show All thank right. you mr president for having me okay so somebody just tweeted me actually because we talked about that in the last yeah. hour because nobody in here got it right either by the way just yeah. for future right. reference so i have a uh, a Harvard guy. I got accepted to Harvard guy here. Ty, anytime I feel like I potentially have looked stupid, I call him immediately and I go, hey, should I have known this? And he goes, no, nobody would have known that. I'm like, okay, good news. But one of your questions was, who became president when Tricky Dick uh, got yeah. the Watergate thing and stepped down? Uh, obviously, I said Warren G. Harding. It was Gerald Ford. Somebody just tweeted me. He wasn't even vice president at the time. Yeah. What? No, it was out of left field. How was I supposed to know that, Kyle? <laughs> I mean, Kyle. it wasn't like I went to the 1830s, Pat. We didn't do Calvin Coolidge and all that stuff. This was like the 60s, all right? This is not that long ago. Kyle, the show is awesome, by the way. Thank you. The show is awesome. It's a great concept, great idea. You're a great host for it. Uh, it's awesome. I'm happy you're getting a chance to do it. But he says, you, you lead off, right? And they're like, hey, Brett Favre got a seven, all right? Alex Smith got a nine. Jeez. Like these things. So I get fucking question one, and I'm like, oh no. Like I, I was actually thinking, is somebody am I gonna goose egg this thing? Kyle yeah. helped me a little bit. Richie helped me a little bit, which is the producer, but that show is awesome, Kyle. It's a great, Thanks, dude. great Pat, concept. Can we talk about what question one was? Because here's oh, yeah. the deal: like when I make the questions, I want it's like you script your first 10 plays. First and 10, the first play of the game, I want just a nice, easy completion in the flat, <laughs> you know, a little six, seven yard gain. Let's get the confidence up. So, guys, I'm going to read the question, all right? Oh, they Bear know. in mind that the question, <laughs> the point of it is always to get to some connective tissue to something about Pat. Yeah. Here's the question. The category is nursery rhymes. Pat knew nothing of this. Here we go. Well. Little Jack Horner sat in a corner uh -huh. and pulled what out of a pie? Anybody know? With his thumb, you were supposed to add in there. You fucked up your own question. No, I helped you with the thumb, Pat. That was I was cheating the attorneys. I wasn't even supposed to say thumb. <laughs> <laughs> Stuck in a thumb and pulled out what? You guys don't know this? No, they know because I told them this answer. But my answer to you makes sense because it does tie to me. I said an apple, okay? Yeah, yeah. This, sure. This Jack Warner song, bitch, he went in there and pulled out an entire apple because there's a clip from Thanksgiving a couple years ago where I say, like, I like apple pie, by the way. I like yeah. apple pie. And I thought you were yeah. going to get into that entire thing so i think i was kind of in my own head too with yes. what you were potentially asking about now I, it was not easy i'm not a trivia guy you came out and hit me i mean i would know nothing about what nursery, nursery rhymes, rhymes that is oh, mm -hmm. come, no all right do you know on. anything about beer pat because oh, the beer category the beer. <laughs> now listen you're trying to talk to pat mcafee about what things are going on in the world what society <laughs> what we're all dealing with look at this question guys listen to this one pat whiffed on this it was a pick six going the other way here we go 
In 2020, okay. what Mexican beer brand <laughs> took a $170 million loss in China? So you got 2020, Mexican beer, loss in China. Yeah. What do you think I'm trying to talk to him about? Okay, so. Modelo. Listen. <laughs> Modelo. 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 Modelo's been Modelo. getting in the advertising Probably. game. You Tecate. Know, I, Tecate beer. Yeah, yeah I, Tecate. Thought, <laughs> I thought Corona, okay? I was like, ah. I don't know how it does internationally. I, <laughs> I feel like so. I actually even said I was like, "Hey, you get a Corona, you actually put some uh, limon in yeah, there. Yeah. It actually tastes like fruity pebbles." And then I just I threw it away. Like as soon as I said it, I just threw it away. And Kyle comes back and he's like, "Pat, 2020, which Mexican uh, Corona? Yeah, thank you. He, he basically, you gave me a point there. Richie gave me one earlier. I did. You're a great. Pat, you're running you're, through. You're like, well. Dos Equis, uh, Tecate, Modelo, you understand every Mexican beer on the market. And then I'm like, of course, it's Corona. What do you think about COVID, dude? Oh, my God. It was, you cared yeah. so much, which yeah. is why you were such a good contestant. You well, cared. I thank you for having me on. We watch Good Morning Football every single day. Oh, yeah. you, help, you help us out a lot. That show's incredible. Right now, during something like Massacre Week, uh, wow. which is being projected by the insiders. Diana Rossini uh, said that last week. Uh, Rappaport has said that for the last couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. Today, Jay Glazer confirmed it. Yeah. It, it, oh. There are a lot of cuts coming. With your positivity of your show, how will you guys cover this type of thing on the NFL's channel, if that's going to be – how will you cover it, you think? It's a great question. See, I would love to come out every five minutes and have a little Grim Reaper guy with a scythe and a hood. That's fun. I like that stuff. Yes. <laughs> there he is. Jen I love that. Uh, well, we can't do that. Well, we, um, oh no. our, my guy who sits uh, across the table from me, P. Schrags, Peter Schrager, he tried to call it even worse than Matt. I don't know if this is worse. You tell me. Which is worse, Massacre Week? Or bloodbath week because he was calling it bloodbath. Well, I think bloodbath YouTube would let you have that in your title. We could not title a video MetLife uh -huh. Massacre. True. Uh, oh no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> the bloodbath continues. Oh no. Oh, here we go. Wide receiver oh. John Brown announced on Instagram Welcome that Brown. he's been released, saving Buffalo nearly eight million dollars against the cap. Dealt with some injuries this past season, but still a productive player. Became expendable in Buffalo. Wow. That's via my sports update. John Brown yeah. now follows Emmanuel Sanders, Quan Alexander, Malcolm Butler, Thomas Morstead. Mm. Kyle, how's this going to play out in the NFL? Are teams going to make massive moves? Are players going to all go to one place? How do you see this all play? Uh, pan and out it's terrible like the, the john brown's a perfect example john brown is the middle class it, stefan diggs those guys aren't going anywhere the entry level guys making 900 grand aren't going anywhere it's 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 that middle class guy who's carving out an awesome living he's sort of a veteran makes five mil six mil 11 mil poof gone and uh especially with the bills who they, they, look they got champagne problems now they're a title team now Pat. <laughs> they got to go to a super bowl next year it's a complete disappointment so sorry Smokey brown poof you join the club middle class it's interesting because you start looking at these contracts a lot of these names were projected by other outlets last week because you just look directly at the contracts and it's like okay who's a big number that maybe didn't have their greatest season they've ever had last season they're probably going to be gone now that it's at 182 and a half million dollars mm -hmm. the salary cap do you guys get do you guys at nfl network get that information before everybody else because you should isn't that something that good morning football yeah you guys should have mm -hmm. that information before everybody else is that something that happens over there are you guys tipped off to anything that could potentially happen well the the czar of the information as far as we're concerned is the rap sheet it's your boy rap sheet <laughs> he lives up the street from me here up in new york and he's the guy so we'll like it's like pat we'll be in the middle of you know some nonsense off-season segment that we just made up about you know <laughs> oh what what Stranger Things character would Baker Mayfield be? Just nonsense. Okay, hold like, on, hold on, hold on. Yeah. Before you yeah. get to that, why do those happen? And whose ideas okay. are those? How do those come to be? Because we actually have a segment on the show called mm -hmm. Questions from Other Sports Shows. Mm -hmm. And a couple of your guys' lower thirds did make an appearance in the incredible ability to tie something to the football world is almost a talent that you guys have at this point. How do you do it? Whose ideas are those? And are those the ones you guys get really pumped up on because you can really expand the thoughts on? Yeah, it's so fun. I, I love those ones, Pat, because people always ask me, they'll be like, hey, good morning football, I watch you guys. Hey, I always wonder, like, what do you do when the season's over? What do you guys do? And we're like, dude, we have a show for six months. We're doing OTAs and workouts. And we'll do an entire hour 
on quarterback hand size. Like we are in the desert looking for the oasis. And so if something pops <laughs> like uh, Stranger Things or it's, it's freaking Meghan Markle or something like we will make a segment out of it and compare it to the NFL like that's and I love that stuff. So we have a great staff uh, as you guys as you do, like young, creative people who are always throwing out those ideas and then like. Peter's great with ideas. Like, I try to come up with a bunch of stuff. And then, like, we just party, dude. It's in the off season. <laughs> the stakes are low. We didn't exactly play the divisional round last night. So you just let it rip. And that's what we do. Are you guys allowed to talk about, like, if you don't tie it to the NFL, is there something said about that? Because it's interesting because you, you guys do have this ability to tie – everything to football in the NFL. For us, obviously, we are an NFL show, but hey, yeah. hey, we'll talk about the world sports yeah. soccer. That's mm-hmm. right. Okay, we'll get into that hockey a little bit. Oh, yeah. We got baseball insiders all the time. We're on the corner. Look, aliens. Mm-hmm. Aliens, exactly. <laughs> aliens. I mean, we <laughs> we put an 11 on 11 team with aliens That's at right. one point. <laughs> yeah. What do you, do you guys have, like, yeah. do, is there people that come and tell you what you can, what you can't talk about? And who would that person be? It, it would be anybody from, like, Brian Rolop at the NFL to Roger Goodell to the guy who runs the network. But, Pat, we're, we're, a, we're over a 1,000 episodes in of letting us be us. Like, and that's what they decided to do in 2016. We could easily bring in your, your insider, your expert, your ex-player, and your anchor. And we can talk about, you know, what is Kenny Galladay going to get in free agency? And that stuff's all great. But in 2016, the NFL, God bless him, said, you know what? Screw it. Let's try something different. Let's bring in an outside producer and do a show in New York and have me. Like, I, I went on the show. I'm in the same. I played running back in college. I'm in the same network with Marshall Falk and LaDainian Thomas, like legends. They hired me to do that stuff. So, Pat, they don't have, have us on a short leash. They let us do what we want. And believe me, we went big on aliens, too. Baker Mayfield <laughs> tweets about aliens. There's six hours of content for us. <laughs> <laughs> um, coming up. Oh, oh no! 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 Oh, no! no! It's a bloodbath out here, Shrake's no. Kyle. We go to the internet. Doovy Climate nope. at NFL yep. underscore Doovy Climate is reporting in addition to speedy wide receiver John Brown, the Bills also cut defensive lineman yep. Quentin Jefferson. Oh, oh no. no. What in the streets? Champagne Ooh. problems, Kyle. Champagne problems. That's gotta true. make moves. You gotta get under the cap. You probably got other people you need to re-sign. When, when you win, they say there's enough to go around. And they're talking about money. That doesn't always mean from your organization. Mm-hmm. That means potentially from 31 other ones. Diggs, what do you got? Looks about like 6.5 million in cap savings on that one. Oh, geez. That's big. Oh. Middle big. class, every time. Five to 12. That is the number. It is the middle class just getting beheaded. We're at the French Revolution again, and now we got bills. Dove Kleinman's tweeting about it. They're falling out of the woodwork now. <laughs> that, that, that Grim Reaper pad is going to get a workout. It's its own combine today. Well, Doovy, by the way, and, and uh, the, the, the Grim Reaper is... Doovy? He tweeted me and said that's my name. His yeah. name is Doovy. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. All right. I didn't either, by the way, Kyle. No. <laughs> and he, he actually spelled it D-O-V. And I was like, is that Dovey? And then he had to correct it. No, Doovy. Okay. So I think it's Doovy. Because I, to... I follow him too. D-O-Doovy? All right. Mm-hmm. Doovy Climate. Hey, what? Sorry, Doovy. Whoa, why don't you care about the people? Whoa. 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 Middle class, this guy. Yeah. Go to bat for the middle class. Princeton, He's like, hey, Doovy, get out of here. <laughs> wow. <laughs> No, but I had the same exact situation you had, and I followed him yeah, for a course. while before I learned that, that entire thing. Um, man, sorry about that, Quentin, man. Yeah, yeah. Great That's run up there, Kyle. Run. That's electric with that Grim Reaper. Um, I mean, that, he is running like – he's running wind sprints right now. That, oh, yeah. That, mm-hmm. that Grim Reaper. That yeah, thing. three cones. Right? Yeah. Uh, when you hey, were, Pat. Yeah, Bob. Can I ask you something? Sure. You haven't booted Baker on the show today? Well, he's supposed to be on. He blows oh. off and off. Yeah. Oh, what? He flaked? Huh? He flaked. He's not there. He was working he out. Go. He was trying to. He was trying to make more money. He was working out. He'll be back on tomorrow, or the next day. But yeah, we did not have him on. Why? What do you got? You got something about? Boo? Well, I was just interested. I love your approach. Like, how, how, were you going to sit here? Would you ask him to rehash the DK Metcalf story again, or would you have your own spin on it? No, I, I did that one time though. And, and the way I got to it, <laughs> yeah. The way I got to it was, uh, I got to ask. That was it. And then it was like sure. a, a quiet. And then he kind of started laughing and got right mm-hmm. into it. And then he talked about the whole thing. So I, w- I would talk about it. It's just whatever pops in my head. Like, for instance, for you, what was just about to pop yeah. in my head was you worked for Rome 
for a yeah. long time. Whenever the show was Ty's favorite show oh, yeah. that he would listen to or watch. So I've gotten a chance to learn a lot about Rome as I'm in this world now. The Daily yeah. Grind radio TV, you're in it now again. You're at the real world. Were you just, you, did you always know sports was going to be your thing? Did you want to be an actor? Like, how did, because you've had a lot of success in the Daily Sports. Rome was awesome, yeah. still is, but when you were there, incredible. Good morning football is great. But you did, like, were you ever going to be an actor and then you just got into sports or was that always the end game? And how did you get here? Yeah, I always wanted to be an actor. Like when I was in high school and college, like Pat, when I was in college, Thespian. I was the guy mm -hmm. who was playing football. And then I was also doing plays. Nice. And that was like, nice. that was, what was not that umbrella really like one? celebrated. What was that umbrella raincoat one? There's a raincoat. Did you? Singing in the rain? No, there's a. Uh, the Mary Poppins? Charlie in the yellow raincoat or so. Our high oh, school. Oh, Joseph did. in the amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. There it oh, is. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Our high school did that. Yeah, I had a friend that was in that. You were doing that type of thing? Donny Osmond. Yeah, it wasn't musical yeah. theater. It was like, <laughs> okay. I wanted to be Pat. Like, if you look at all those guys, like the um, Chris Evans, Chris Pine, Chris Hemsworth, all these like Captain America, Thor types, like I was sure that was going to be me. Like, cause it was just, Should've as been. soon as I knew I didn't have the ability to play Absolutely. pro football, I was like, I'm going to be an actor. And then I, the real world fell into my lap and I'm doing that nonsense when I got out of college and then I'm on Days of Our Lives. So like, I wanted to do all that. And then like a lot of like failed soap actors, I didn't become Matt Damon or Denzel. Oh. And thank God I had sports. I fell back. It was like my plan B. This is what this is. Well, I think you should have been Captain America at some point. I, I know they rotate him out. Don't, hey, you look maybe better than you've ever looked right now though, right? I mean, Thanks, you're dude. all, you're all fucked. Thanks, you Pat, I'm doing the stuff that everybody hates. I'm doing the, the, the front squats. I'm oh, oh, wow. All wow. in. You're, into doing, it. you're doing a problem. Yes, all up in the front. Go horizontal, mm -hmm. look up. They, I, I'm not, for 20 years, I did push-ups and bicep curls. Now I'm doing the terrible stuff. And you know what? It works. Doesn't yeah. that feel good right now, Pat? No, no. It hurt. I'm really tired. I, I went boxing last night through 751 fights or punches in one fight last night. What? Yeah. Throw, I saw you swinging the six iron, too. That looks good. Thank you. Uh, the swing, Buttery. The swing <laughs> is getting there, but you just decided to amplify the working out. You're not dieting differently. Football season, no. we all put on 30 pounds. I mean, yeah, yeah. in you through football season, you went the opposite direction. You're not dieting, doing anything differently? No, I'm totally dieting differently. I, I, you know what it was, Pat? I, I saw it coming. Every football season, like if you see me at Super Bowl, I'm so heavy. Like oh, I yeah. put on the 30 pounds because it's just too much stress. This year in September, I was like, Enough of that, man. Like, I, I'm getting winded walking up the stairs with my kids. Like, I'm, I'm going to do these things differently. So I started eating, like, crazy, like, tons of fish and all protein powder left and right. And I just – I dropped 30 pounds, man. I look great hey, at the time. <laughs> you do – hey, you do look yeah. good. Yeah. Hey. Thanks. It's, hey, it comes at, back. Hey, look at you, big look handsome yeah. Yeah. Look at this handsome yeah. man. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank, hey. you. Thank you. Got a great shirt on. It's a great shirt. I wore my shirt for you, Pat. This is – um, I had this made for the NFC title game, and I wore it on Good Morning Football. This is uh, these two guys who faced off uh, Bucks versus Packers. Yeah. This guy looks like uh, Jim from The Office, and this guy looks like Ron Jeremy. Back in the day. <laughs> so I was sure on TV. By the way, potential similar numbers for that mustache man over there is Ron Jeremy. Yeah. But the, the <laughs> fact that those two guys, by the way, are both incredible on social media and the two goats, I mean, it's... That's good for the league. Mm -hmm. awesome. That's good. That's a great shirt there, Kyle. We uh, talked about him the other night, Pat. I thought he was cool what you said about Rodgers. Because I know we were going to talk about Rodgers. But I asked you straight up, like, who was the most surprising interview that you've had on the show? And you said Rodgers. Why did you say him? Well, I said Rodgers, uh, like I told you, because every week had no idea what the conversation was going to go to. And it just went to different places, it felt like, every single week. I mean, we're talking aliens. We're talking documentaries. We're talking him dissecting plays. For me, that was just the most. And it's obviously because, you know, of how many conversations we had. But that was always the surprising yeah. one. And also, Kyle, I would assume after thousands of episodes at this point with Good Morning Football, you forget a lot of episodes. Like, <laughs> like whenever you asked me that question... I was like, man, who is somebody? And the first person that came to my mind, I was like, well, it's Aaron, I guess. Mm -hmm. So it is. I feel like I left a couple of people out in that answer. Yeah. But it's real. Whenever you have so many cool conversations with people, it's hard to like kind of judge them. But Aaron was just fucking awesome. Ty, what do you have? Kyle, speaking of uh, your, you know, transforming your body and kind of turning things around, yeah. I think the last time you came on, I asked if you were ever going to do like the real world challenge. Uh, and now mm -hmm. that you are yoked up, is mm -hmm. there a chance that we're going to see you yes. beat either C? T or Johnny Bananas ass at some point. How about it? Let's fucking go, dude. What are we doing? That's a fair question, man. It, because I'll tell you why. My def my no answer to that for the last twenty years has always been like, I see these shows. It's 
it's these bros and bandanas just peeking on HGH, sucker mm -hmm. punching each other and, yeah. and triple Pretty kissing awesome. on night vision cams. That's yeah. not for me. <laughs> But now, if I were to go in there and wreck shop and like backpack somebody like CT did, <laughs> that might be a cool moment for me, right? Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's good for the league. Hey, that's yeah. good for the yeah. NFL. Yeah. That's good for football. That's good for everybody if you get in there, especially got kids now. Mm -hmm. Okay, you're mm -hmm. going in there, yeah. backpacking, tackling folks, running people over. They do yeah. like Oklahoma drills every night. Oh, on yeah. Show. Yes. Oh, yeah. People are just like, hey, listen, we did reality television. And we will continue to do reality television no matter what you do to us. Yeah. Okay, so if we line you up directly across from each other and just have you run into each other, you'll do that? Absolutely. Sounds good. That mm. is an incredible recipe for success. You need to get in there. Need We yeah. need you. It's like no fungi. Oh, jeez. What did you do? You need to move your mic. Your mic. Oh, damn it. This is an amateur hour. Oh. Sound better? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Pat. Thank hey, you, dude. Did our podcast ever get uploaded? Yeah, finally. They, they took their sweet time, didn't they? But yeah, it's uploaded. It's on Spotify. It's on YouTube. It's everywhere. People are making fun of your score a little bit, Pat. Well, but I mean, you got a five out of ten. Like it, it's, you rallied and you got the wrestling entrance music one like really fast. Knew that one was going to happen. Happy I didn't get with the hard. He had Owen Hart's entrance music during one run that he had huh. as the yeah. hard option. I did not. I picked the medium option. Knew it immediately upon the first sound. I think that was a much. E what was the easy one? I didn't hear what the easy one was. The easy one was going to be Mr. Perfect. Uh -huh. Like that because I knew you would know Mr. Perfect. I love so Mr. I said easy, medium, or hard. And then hard was our Owen Hart. You went medium. And it was uh, your boy uh, Val Venus. Yeah. Oh, you were nice. all over. And as soon as it started, I mean, as soon as that horn hits. Yep. Hello, hello lady. Lady. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I actually did the hello, ladies yeah. in the thing. I stood up. I mean, it's hard not to just immediately go yeah. to it. Val Venus doesn't get enough credit for influencing kids doing a lot of things back in. I mean, the, the oh, yeah. full the on, towel on. He was not yeah. the first to do it, obviously. There were others before him, but. Ravishing Rick Rude. Yeah, that, that whole towel. Well, I mean, what a run for him. What a so run. good. And honestly, Pat, I didn't know a ton about Val Venus. I had to research it because I wanted to include that one. My expertise is all like uh, 1990, 91, like that Rick Root area, Ultimate Warrior and all that. So they were doing a full on like porn character during the Attitude Era. That's oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, anybody could get it, too. I mean, John, he, yeah. John Wayne Bobbitt was involved in a storyline with him. It was a uh, it was pretty really deep. Oh, shit. And Jenna oh, yeah. Jameson, I think, appeared on camera, too. Oh, like, yeah. God, man, that was Shut awesome. Up. It was, wasn't it? I mean, those those yeah. days, we're teenagers watching that stuff. Like, this is the greatest of all time. Yeah. John Wayne Bobbitt saved Val Venus from getting his member cut off. See, you remember that? Imagine if that guy would have lost a penis. He would have lost his whole entire thing. Yeah. yeah. That was he a, stuck it in a machine or something, right? And they no, were gonna, samurai they were sword. Yeah, they're going to cut it off. They're going to cut it off with a samurai sword. <laughs> Screw the intercontinental <laughs> title. Actually, what, <laughs> what, what you're talking about with the machine, actually, was just classic old school penis cut off sword. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Of course. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Kyle, you work for the NFL. Can you just tell us straight up, uh, is Drew Brees coming back or what? I can't tell you, but I think no. Listen, Drew Brees and I are like five days apart. Literally, he was born in January of 1979. Like, how could you come back? I feel as washed up as he is. Like, I, it's, I, I identify completely. I got to do a whole back routine before I swing a golf club. No, not a chance. I, and I think the fact that like Cam Jordan was out there being like, we want Russell. We want Russell. Like, I think he knows. I think he knows what time it is. So I don't think he is. And I hope he doesn't. Was, it's, it's enough. Now, enough. I don't know if Cam Jordan was like, we want Russell. I think that's potentially a headline you read from not Doovie because Doovie gets things right. But <laughs> he did indicate that it would be nice to have uh -huh. Russell. I think he came on our show shortly after that. And I think he was tired of having to explain what he actually said. Uh, but okay. but not just Cameron Jordan, by the way. you got the mayor of mm -hmm. New Orleans spinning yep. the umbrella, yeah. spinning the umbrella, dancing, saying, Russ, Sierra, come on down. Uh, the Drew Brees situation is is a very interesting one because every day they he waits, even though he restructured his contract down to a million dollars, that's them potentially missing out on something that could potentially happen, whether it's scouting another quarterback mm -hmm. or going to a pro day, or I assume they're doing all this stuff, but it, life could get a lot easier, I'd assume, if Drew would be like, you know what, I'm done. Or I'm coming back. Hey, mm -hmm. hey get those check downs in order. <laughs> Start running slants. We so are. what's the point then, Pat? Why is, is, is this grandstanding, or he's actually really vacillating? He doesn't know. It depends on who you ask. I do believe he's not 100 percent sure. This is a guy that I think is addicted to football. His entire life has been based around football. I think he loves football. So I think hanging it up could potentially be a little bit difficult, which has happened to many guys in the past 
in all sports that are at the top that kind of hang on and don't want to give it up. I think that is it. I do feel that way. I'm talking to him last year, whenever it was potentially you know going to happen at Super Bowl Radio Row, he said a lot of that. Like I don't. It seemed like he was genuine. But then there's also people like Ty who just think this is. Yeah, I mean, Drew's not going to miss the opportunity to make this about himself one last time. Yeah, that's what, there's a lot of people that think that, you know what I mean? Or get like a credit card commercial out of it or something, or like a Snickers <laughs> mm-hmm. commercial. Not going anywhere for a while, Ching, <laughs> it could be. That would work for him. You know the other guy, Pat, who's hey, not is that a anywhere. segment tomorrow on Good Morning Football Ooh. right there? Yeah. You but know th- what, let's do it. Which commercial <laughs> would Drew Brees do to best set up his situation? Oh. And Nate will say something funny, and then Peter. You're right. We would do it. That, that's exactly what we would do, Pat. We probably will. Yeah. We, I should text the producers right now. Yeah. yeah. Say, hey, got an idea. This is what we're thinking. We're <laughs> yeah. just spitballing over here because that is that is a good reference, though. That's a good tie-in because when he retires, it's going to be massive. How's he going to retire if he does retire? If he comes back, how's he going to announce he comes back? How mm-hmm. will the reception be? I mean, there's a lot that goes in. Just like the Russell Wilson situation, Kyle. You've been in the locker room, Princeton. Obviously, all-time leading rusher. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Give well, the guy the rock. Come on. The running back. I, 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 I hate to do this, but I was all-time leading rusher at my high school, not the esteemed Princeton University. I wish I was. That'd no, be Keith no, Olajuwon. No. Oh, that's not true. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> No, Princeton football has been around for like 200 years. Princeton invented football. I am not the leading rusher in Princeton football. Yeah, and I did watch a lot of old throwback videos of when Princeton did invent football. There's a lot of running in those games, you know uh-huh. what I mean? Yeah, that ball yeah. Was first not... game was Princeton Rutgers, yeah. ever. That, ever ball was, that ball was not in the sky a lot, so there's a lot of running. <laughs> Anyways, you've been in a locker room, you get it. Russell yeah. Wilson, this Russell Wilson situation... Why, I think going back into that locker room might be more awkward than the Deshaun Watson situation in Houston. Now, strictly the locker room. I'm not talking about the building. I'm talking about the locker room. This Russell Wilson situation is weird, Kyle. I mean, this is not Russell Wilson-like at all. We hear they hate each other now, allegedly, him and Pete Carroll. We thought they were boys. It is interesting what's going on in Seattle and in Houston, but Seattle more so, I think, for me, is the toughest one to go back and be fully reunited at the end of this thing. I think so, too. And, Pat, like, it. It's never happened before. I mean, and what I mean has never happened is you have never seen a in their prime Hall of Fame quarterback traded and not and not. There's no heir apparent like Rodgers and Favre. It's not like he's coming off a bunch of injuries like Montana when he got traded. He, it's nothing. He's just happy, healthy, uh, fine. And they're going to trade him. I still don't even see. I don't think they're going to. And then I saw the take that said if he's that unhappy and he's not down with Pete Carroll anymore. You fire Pete Carroll. Yeah, get that's, rid of him. That's kind of the and then by the way, that's team Pete Carroll started coming out in anonymous yeah. sources saying this thing, and then there's that's when but that's awkward now. That's immediately awkward that that's been built up. I assume Pete Carroll, Russell Wilson, the team can get past it. But if I'm judging awkwardness going back in the locker room, that one is at the top of the entire NFL right now. Deshaun Watson, they're saying Cal McNair and them and Jack Easterby. What are your thoughts on Jack Easterby? NFL employee. Yeah. No, not good. Not good. I'm seeing the song. <laughs> okay, all right. Plead the fifth there. You, you, by the way, we're all in the same. All right. We're all in the same boat. But it sounds like they're not going to move him at all. How, do you see that happening? What are you thinking? Right. What are your thoughts on so, that? So if we get to the point where Deshaun is and, – and everything I hear is that they're like, no, he's never putting on that uniform again. That's and what he's serious. Mm-hmm. And we might say, okay, sure, sure. Let, wait till the checks not start showing up. If he actually does it and he goes into the season and he's like, game check, game check – First of all, holy crap, That's I, I would never do it. I couldn't. But I think he would become like an icon for player empowerment, and he would become a hero, and it would like he would change the entire game. I really mean that if he sits out this whole damn thing. I just – it's a long way from there. Like, Le- Le'Veon Bell did that a couple of years. He's the last real full season holdout, and then he ended up getting paid on the other side. The thought that Deshaun Watson would hold out actual games, though, as a daily show host, you know, yeah. that, that oh, is – man. You're talking. It's the best. I a, mean, think about Pat. What was, that? what was that? What was that? Was that a little human I heard? Yeah, I think that was seven-year-old Calvin upstairs who's supposed to be doing his homeschooling. Hey, come on. Get back to... Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. no. Calvin. What? Calvin it leads oh, to another. Geez. Ian Rappaport, the rap sheet, is reporting yep. that the te- Titans are... Wow. Titans. The Titans are expected to release starting <laughs> safety. Kenny Vaccaro, as a cap casualty source, said he was due to have... $6.9 million next year uh, after 83 tackles and six tackles for loss last year. 
Kenny Vaccaro. Oh, no. Career mm-hmm. with the Titans. When is it going to end? Dead in the middle 6. of this. 6.9. Bye. Hey, that's your 5 to 12. Mm-hmm. I, 5 to 12, man. That's the range. And you can probably drop that down a little bit for kickers, by the way. You could probably go like 3.5 to 12 because there's going to be a lot of kickers that get restructured, cut, and everything like that. Matt Rule is reporting that Christian McCaffrey and um, – uh, Shaq, Thompson. Shaq Thompson are renegotiating or restructuring their deal to give them some more money. Christian McCaffrey, who just got paid a year ago, restructuring mm-hmm. now to help out the Carolina Panthers, who have allegedly been in talks with everybody about every quarterback. Never would have expected that after the Teddy Bridgewater situation. Masker week continues, Kyle. By the way, Pat, you mentioned the Panthers. If we were going to do a little game where we say, all right, who's going to make the crazy, batshit, insane move for a quarterback? I'm putting the Panthers squarely in it. I think their their owner is like, screw it. I'm I came here to make empire moves. I, Teddy, <laughs> no, give me one of these these massive massive stars. I put the Panthers in like the top two or three teams to do it. Absolutely. You, you think Mogul moves is popping off down in Carolina? He hopped on a plane, flew over to Baylor, Texas, said Matt Rule, what will it take? Seventy million dollars. Let's go. We we'll go ahead and do this. Ron Rivera, see you. You're out. I'm going to do this whole thing. He wants Carolina to be a conversation piece for relevancy in the NFC South, which, by the way, is going to be very difficult with that squad there. The thought, though, that Carolina could become an epicenter for, you know, if Deshaun goes there, Russell goes there, any of these quarterbacks go there, good for Charlotte. That city would be awesome Mm -hmm. to watch kind of blossom. But that's all it takes, by the way. That's the seismic shift that the owner from Arizona was talking about Mm -hmm. just a week ago. He's like, hey, I think we're going to see a seismic shift. You get a couple players to go to one place, that can kind of change the entire culture, Kyle. Yeah, well, we saw the same pitch from Urban Meyer about Jacksonville. And I, I kind of smiled when I read it because he does this whole quote about we got the weather and the taxes and we're going to turn this into a destination. And it was like he was just a college recruiting pitch. It's like <laughs> when you bring the guy and say, listen, we got a barber shop in the locker room. We got a pocket <laughs> shot. And here's these cheerleaders. He was doing a full here's college recruiting thing. You know what it reminded me of, Pop? Remember when, oh, man, this is 10 years ago. Mikhail Prokhorov owned the Brooklyn Nets, giant ass seven oh, yeah. foot Russian guy. Oh, yeah. And he's like, We are going to turn the Nets into a power. And, he's like, Bravo. and he brings in, you know, old ass Garnett and Paul Pierce, and it, it didn't work. But they're like, We're going to make Brooklyn cool. It's going to be a nightclub setting. And Jay Z's an owner. It didn't work. And when I hear Urban Meyer is going to do it in Jacksonville, I'm like, I don't know. I've heard this pitch before, and I know you guys got a pool in the stadium, but like we got to win some two. games first, man. They got two pools in the stadium. Have a little <laughs> bit of respect. They also got Trevor Lawrence coming, who could be a guy, you know. And if he is yep. like a guy, like he's being, he's been talked about, like Andrew Luck was talked yeah. about all the way through coach. Andrew Luck was a guy turned a bad team into a good team very quickly. Trevor Lawrence could do that. Now you throw in the taxes, the oh, warm weather, man. and the two pools. Yeah. <laughs> Come on. And by the way, we're not elite. We're on the edge. Correct. That's right. We're not, mm. People are throwing the word elite around too much. They're edging. Too, we're on the edge, you know what I mean? And that's mm-hmm. day four, day five of practice. Urban is selling down there, Kyle. What do you have, Connor? Yeah, speaking of Trevor Lawrence, Kyle, uh, there was a graphic about him on Good Morning Football that said he's good with babies. Uh, why was that on there and also how is he good with babies yeah what was going on i see you know how pat's like i don't remember contestants and guests to come on <laughs> I, I, they all there's too many i'm trying to think of the graphic about trevor lawrence with babies i don't remember this what mm. remind me of it. i think it was right underneath your face right here yeah, you know, right right i actually have a photo of it i'll send it to fox because <laughs> right oh, yeah. i remember pat i i asked you the other night i go pat who's the funniest guest you've ever had on and your answer floored me. Oh, you, yeah. Do you remember what you said? You said Ariel Helwani, which I'm sure he's a very funny guy, but I picture him more of like this intrepid re- reporter. Yeah, and that's what I told you. He stinks on ESPN. <laughs> he's really good on That's exactly what I told you is when he's on ESPN, he stinks. When he's on this show, always makes me laugh. Don't now, even mention his name because he'd probably call in. Yeah, now, now he's going to call yeah, in and shit. do his whole Ariel's thing. Ariel's on the line? Yeah, he probably will yeah. be. Here is the graphic. Oh, yeah. Connor yeah, just sent it thing. into the group. He had it on deck. Trevor Lawrence, good morning football, two a days. Measured oh, in six yeah. five five eights <laughs> a pro day. 34-2 and two record in college, 2018 national champion. Broke Deshaun Watson's Clemson record for wins. And he's weirdly good. Good with babies. That was a graphic that was on Good Morning Football right underneath Kyle Brandt's face. Kyle, now on the show, what is going on here? See, we always try to do something different. Yeah. <laughs> you try to have some sort of spinoff that breaks all this statistical minutia. I guess they found a factoid about it because I remember we did someone, I think it was his teammate, uh, Travis Etienne Jr., and the factoid at the bottom was that when he was being recruited, 
uh, Jim Harbaugh told him that he should he's very good looking and should go on to be an actor. So like that's just your fun kicker. Oh, at the end. Yeah, right. nice. So I guess Lawrence is good with babies. Who see, knows? see, that's what a show that does research does. There, uh, did you hear that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were in a much well, different. Pat, you've openly said that you're 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 not a research guy. No, you yeah. show mm -hmm. up and we, we we chat and you cut it up. Right? Yeah, life is research. You know what I mean? That's life right. is research. Yeah, no. uh, my Twitter scroll that is a research. It's all night. My life walking through you know uh, stores and airports that is that is research for me. But I wish I had the capability to do what you did. Thank Thank you so much for having me on 10 Questions. Thank you for stopping by. We appreciate you every single morning, ladies and gentlemen. The all-time leading rusher at a high school in <laughs> Chicago. North suburbs of Chicago, Stevenson High School, same high school as Rex Ryan and the late Ron Goldman. Wow. Rest in peace, Ron. Rest in peace, Ron. Why didn't we give Rex the ball more? That's oh, my only question. Or Rob. Kyle was pretty good. Yeah, or Rob. Kyle was pretty good. Obviously, he wanted to play mm -hmm. at Princeton. But Rex, I think you give him the ball a little bit more. Maybe there's a little bit more competition. Anyways, uh, host School Morning Football, Kyle Brand. Thank you, guys. Yeah. You guys are the best. Thank you. I'm going to go get an icy cold Modelo. Thank you, guys. <laughs> Have a Corona, bud. They need it. <laughs> Lost a lot of money, that company. Uh -huh. Yeah. hundred and some million. Mm -hmm. hundred and seventy million. Tough. It did seem like that was the obvious answer after he told me. But I'll tell you, I am, that's not my bag, baby. Well, you know what I mean? No, you're thinking, I love ice cold Modelo's. Yeah. Well, I thought, you know, they got Amanda Nunes. They're doing a lot of marketing. Maybe mm -hmm. they were trying to grow. You know what I mean? I didn't know Corona is doing real business over there in China. Hey. Sounds like it. The Chinese love Corona. Mm -hmm. As they should. $170 million mm -hmm. lost in yeah. 2020. That's the thing. I think you were just, you were so prepared for the interview and the 10 questions yeah. that you were over prepared. That's, you know? I'm over qualified for the show. Exactly. I was over prepared, over qualified, yeah. over research for that show. Uh -huh. Been there. Gerald Ford, bro. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Gerald <laughs> Ford. Hey. What an answer. Well, I did want to ask him, too, uh, and I'll listen to it, you know, when I drive home today. But, you know, when, like, Guy Fieri was on there, like, he was getting questions wrong and basically saying, like, no, come on, dude, what are you? You know, and, like, asking to be spoon-fed answers. I Whoa. think Guy's <laughs> score is a little more inflated. So I, I, I didn't I, know if maybe you could get eight out of ten. Or... Well, they did give me two answers. They so did? I actually got a three. Okay. <laughs> okay. But well. I, but they gave me a five because they gave me two answers. But I'm not begging for anything. No. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Guy I, was I, a I little. Uh, I'm not begging for anything. Guy was a little, hey, come on. Give me another shot. Oh, you don't say. Hey, listen. We Flavor can't. Town. Watch out. Hey, Flavor Town has delivered uh, a delivery restaurant on uh, DoorDash, I think. Mm -hmm. Had it this weekend. Tell you what. That guy who loves that guy, fucking great restaurant delivering to the houses wow. on DoorDash. Wow, not a surprise. Let's go. For a guy that can hold a grudge, man, I'm disappointed in you. They probably spit in your food like he spit in your face. No, he part. did not <laughs> spit in my face. He told me he'd make oh. me famous. Now, yeah. he did lie to me, and I was asked to leave the area because guy wanted some more space. Mm -hmm. But he was very nice to me before that, okay? And guy was having a good time. I will say, his, his menu... You look at it, and you're like, that all looks pretty basic. Bro, he added a spicy ketchup as a side. Oh, Ooh, donkey a sauce, sauce in it? Spicy ketchup? Big sauce, guys. Spicy ketchup, by the way, but it wasn't like that half-ass bullshit spicy ketchup that most places sell because they're yeah. scared to get sued by people that don't like spicy. Actual spice in that thing. He had some, uh, he had cheese in it. Oh, mm. this burger, he had shredded lettuce on it, which makes everything so much wow. better. I mean, it. I actually said, like, he went on that Triple D tour, mm -hmm. yeah. and I think he got ideas from a lot of people, and he sure. kind of put everything together, because that's what that, it was unbelievable. I would order from it again. I would not like to party with Guy Fieri ever again. Fieri, no. sorry. But he, his Flavor Town thing was pretty yeah. good. I did shit it. I was going to say, from the sounds of it, you should have requested a diaper come along well, with Well, the... the thing about that is the Depends was needed. Yeah. <laughs> Happens. Six, seven hours <laughs> yeah, exactly. after that spicy ketchup was enjoyed. They were cheesesteak egg rolls, by the way. Oh, yeah, man. I'm in on those. They were unbelievable. Yeah, I'm sure they were. Spicy ketchup on that. Nacho cheese as an option Gotta as well. try it. How about you put both together? Yeah. Oh, and then six, seven hours later, it's coming out. <laughs> yeah. Mud Vesuvius, size. pal. It's a flavored town Vesuvius. <laughs> mm -hmm. We got to get to a break. Uh, big thanks to Kyle Brandt for joining mm -hmm. us. He's mm -hmm. awesome. I enjoyed that. There's 30,000. What are you doing? There's 30,000 people watching. What? I'm talking it's about Master Week, dude. Jeez. Fucking Master Week, dude. Talk about Vesuvius. Hey, welcome to the show. Okay. 30,000 is like a pretty large arena. Mm -hmm. How's everybody doing? Good to see you. You. We'll do the show in an arena one time, by the way. Mm 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Right in the middle. I think circle. Like uh, I went to Dane Cook's. Uh, he released that stand-up special. I Orgasm. Say. He had the circle in the middle there. Mm -hmm. The round. I think our show would be the circle in the middle there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine us just standing in the middle of a bunch of stooges? Back, I mean, that would be... back to back. We're not even looking at oh each other. <laughs> What's same going on, boys? Same amount of Xanax I would need. Dicks. <laughs> Dick shot stand up one time. He drank five Coronas and did uh, two Xans. Yeah. Got up on stage, crushed it. He did? Hey, it would have been a very unhealthy lifestyle if you wanted to be in a stand up. <laughs> yeah. I'm happy you didn't do that. All right, let's get to a break. Some phone calls on the other side. 1 888 Mad Dog <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, pause it. Of course. What happened? Yep. Yeah, guess who? Yeah. Deal one. Uh, guess who? Guess who's right. The stooge of the stooge. Uh. Patrick? Yeah. <laughs> Patrick? What are you doing? I heard <laughs> yeah, you had course. some nice things to say about me. Uh, yeah, yeah. And we all predicted, <laughs> just like we thought, you know, you say your name, it's like that guy from like Beetlejuice. 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 Yeah. You're going to show up. How'd you hear? How'd you find out? I did say some nice things about you. I immediately regretted them. And what about that never was Kyle Brandt saying that he was floored by your response? <laughs> Who the hell... Is Kyle Brandt, was he on the real world? Like, what is he on the road rules challenge? I mean, who's this jabron to speak of my name like that? Kyle Brandt, who all of a sudden tries to jump on the Buffalo Bills bandwagon. Kyle Brandt, I got an issue with you, but I'll deal with it later. For now, I come in peace. I give you a virtual hug. Patrick, I thought you didn't like me, Patrick. I thought you didn't like me. I don't, I don't, I don't. <laughs> called, him, called him a never was. <laughs> yeah, bro, immediately into a promo. Yeah. Yeah. Immediately. That, that's why you can't. By the way, big pop though. Yeah. yeah. Every time. Every right. yeah. time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he he's, you know, Ariel Hawani is a guy that you know. I assume a lot of people hate Ariel Hawani. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But man, if you're around that guy on a daily basis, I assume it is hysterical yeah. oh, to yeah. hear what comes out of his mouth. He's quick. He's good. He'd be a great heel wrestler if he wasn't so goddamn unathletic, yeah. Yeah. frail, tiny, yeah. mm -hmm. everything Dumb. like that. Dumb. Yeah. Anyways, 43 minutes into the show, or this hour, I guess. Fuck, you get it. <laughs> That's a commercial break. <laughs> why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it. And your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where... It is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. Right. If you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted, and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players 
you've played for a long time at a high level, and you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively, and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy, because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure, where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure, uh, that you might go out there and your best might not be good enough, and that's not okay with you. I didn't think I could continue to be an FCC regulated person without really hitting my max potential. And that's why he's with us. I love it. The Pat McAfee Show on Mad Dog Sports Radio, Channel 82. Sex is cool, but have you ever tried reading the same ad copy for like a year? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Speaking of copy, Bird Dog stole Lululemon's designer and are doing it way better. <laughs> Hey, shout out to this ad right here. I mean, seriously. Bird dogs are the most comfortable shorts and pants in the world. They have built in underwear is an absolute game changer. They look exactly like your best pair of pants, but feel like the silky soft pajamas you know and love. Mm -hmm. So go out in public looking great while feeling better than everybody else around you because you're at home comfort is on the road with your friends at Bird Dogs. Well said. Is that another one? I mean, Might be. Consider You're it. at home comfort on the road with bird dogs. Jeez. Write it down. Write it down. Nah, we'll word shop it. Okay. okay. We'll we will it. word shop it. Uh, you can wear them to work, golf, happy hour. You can wear them to sleep if you want at home. Yeah. Work out. You can do anything in your bird dogs. That's how comfortable they are. And the built-in underwear is a life changer. It's not the old raggedy ass net built-in underwear that your old bathing suit used to have. No, no. no. <laughs> These go down to about mid-thigh. It's silky soft. Mm -hmm. It's m amazing. I would recommend you try it, which is what I'm doing right now. And you can go to birddogs.com and enter promo code PAT, and they'll throw in a free pair of nunchucks. Wow. What? Yeah, you get a pair of nunchucks with every single order of, uh, with your pair of bird dogs. Birddogs.com, B-I-R-D-D-O-G-S.com, promo code PAT. Boom. Free pair of nunchucks with your order. It's awesome. They're not fake ass nunchucks either. No, no. no. They're cool. Look at that. That's metal. That's steel. Chain link. Legit. Hey, that's iron. Yeah. <laughs> iron on iron. Look out. Sharpen iron. <laughs> Shinigami has these. You can too. Uh -huh. Makes me want to drink a red eye. Drink one, you said? Drink a red eye, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah. I thought you said hit a red eye. I was like. I don't that. think I've ever heard anybody say that they <laughs> yeah. want to do that. Those are the worst. Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yeah. Oh, Ugh. yeah. That'll ruin a day. It, two to three days. Because yeah. mm -hmm. you're playing catch up for the entire thing. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> I respect people that do it, though. I cannot. That Bird Dog's ad copy was much better than the one before. Shout out to Bron. Shout out, Bron. Bron. Right, boy, Bron. Let's go to Mike in Boston. What's going on, Mike? Mike stinks. Oh, oh, Mike. 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 Let's have a moment of silence for Mike's Mike's phone call here. This call stinks. Mike. I had to hang up on him. Sorry, Go. Mike. Go. Gumpy. Go. Pa. Hello, sir. Is Mike dead? 
I mean, these phones. I mean, uh, I, uh, yeah, I, 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 I admit is admits uh, the gift that keeps on giving, pal. What happened over there today? Anything? How he answered these phones for months without saying a damn thing is beyond me. Well, then he came out and said, I just thought the office knew or whatever. Honestly, if you just, if you just find a good place where it's not too crackly, you just keep answering. All right. <laughs> We appreciate you going into war. Oh, yeah. boy, guys. Back to where it all started. That's right, on the phones. Mitt will Mitt will fix the phones for you, I think. And mm -hmm. I like the fact that he didn't want to complain at all about yeah. it. Yeah, kid's got grit. Now, he probably broke it to get it to this point, yeah. so he didn't question. want to say anything to anybody. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> They're not working anymore. Let's go to Dawn in Kentucky. What's going on, Dawn? I actually spilled my drink on it. Oh, I had the hangover shake. <laughs> <laughs> Dawn in Kentucky, what's going on? Hey, what's up, Pat? How you doing, man? Hey, not too shabby. What do you want to talk about, bro? Bob. Hey, yeah, uh, long time caller, uh, or long time listener, first time caller. My fault about that. Hey, no worries. Uh, so, yeah, I got a quick question for uh, this is really for Ty Schmidt here. Oh. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, I'm talking about Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. So, who do you consider is the GOAT? As oh, far Don, as Don, 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 long time listener, Don. but never heard the show. That's what it sounds like. Mike from Boston was better. <laughs> Honestly, are we, are we going to a vote? I mean, is the dead Mike? Is that better than Don's call? Yeah. I don't know. Don had good energy there early. It sounded like a little bit of a flow. He got through, which is good. And he unmuted his microphone, which is miles ahead of Mike from yeah. Boston. Yeah. Mike from Boston might be in a ditch, though. I mean, Ty, he could be dead. Yeah, he down in a mosh. Yeah, uh, Ty. Body in a mosh. Ty, is Aaron Rodgers the goat? Uh, you know, I don't know. That's tough. Um, but um, yeah, oh. I think so. Yeah, I mean, so th let's let's think about what what he wanted to accomplish. He wanted to get the conversation <laughs> going about Aaron Rodgers being the goat, right? Mm -hmm. Going to you, mm -hmm. and then wanted to potentially stir that entire conversation, which by the way, cannot be a minute or two minute long conversation. That is a deep conversation mm -hmm. we would have to get into. So I appreciate Don trying to throw that alley-oop or whatever. Sure. But come the fuck on, Don. I wonder what AJ thinks, you know? <laughs> we'll ask him. I mean, yeah. We'll ask him 12 minutes from now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay? It's not two let's, minutes. Let's go to... Uh, <laughs> Thiago in New Mexico. What's going on, Pat? Did I get that name? Thiago, Tiago? Uh, it's Diego. Diego. Uh, so no. Mitt does still yeah. with Canadian. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's an honor to talk to you, Pat. You're my hero. Oh. oh, Diego, I appreciate that. That means a lot, brother. What do you want to talk about? Oh, man, I just want to talk about Packers and Aaron Jones. What do you think are the chances of him coming back next year? What Are you, are you a Packers fan? Are you going to be sad if Aaron Jones is not back? I think I am. Yeah, absolutely, man. He's a he's, he's my hero, too. Oh, Diego. Okay, guy looks hero. up to All a lot right. of people. Nice. Aaron Jones, I think he's going to get expensive. There's no chance he goes back yeah. to the Packers. Zero percent chance. Tough one to swallow, but, you know, it is what it is. He's going to get paid. Congrats to him. Yeah. <laughs> Wish could have won a Super Bowl with him. Yeah, me too. I think there's a bug. Fall fly. I think there's a little fruit fly. Yeah, I almost died right there. Jeez, I gotta, I gotta get out of this hour. Need some water? Are you okay? I, you know, the vocal cords already beat up. Now I got insects flying into yeah. my suck hole right now. I mean, what is going on? On, oh no, 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 no. Oh, oh kind, of an, kind of an oh yes, maybe. What is it? Well, it might lead to oh no. Okay, we got one minute. Let's is a tease. Uh, the tease would be. Stadiums are back. Oh, what? let's go! What? Yeah! yeah! We beat Kobe! Yeah! We beat Kobe! Yeah! Yeah! Stadiums are back! Bang, 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 bang! Yeah! Kobe Cowboys shooting his guns on his yeah! saddle! Yeah! Live events are back! Woo! Nachos are being sold for 15, 16 bucks yeah! a pop! Hell yeah! yeah! 24 ounce beers, that'll be $3,700. Hell yeah! Get your merch, get your things, let's watch the They're... boys play. We beat COVID! Yeah! yeah! Congrats to society. Congrats to Earth. Stadiums are back in the NFL. We made it. Not the NFL. What is it? 40,000 people at Rangers Park in Texas for opening day. Oh, it's just Texas, so nothing really has to Oh, no. Damn it. Take back what we just said. Oh, no. We have not necessarily been COVID oh, for no. hour three on the other side. If 
something happens one time, anomaly. Happens two times, it's like, oh, okay, maybe. But whenever there's a trend of 18 plus, 20 plus things being predicted, you got to go like, hey, Gronick, the gig's up. We know. You're a time traveler. Just tell us. Bro, I just want to talk to you. I got so many questions. Siegfried and Roy uh, tiger attack. Do you remember that? Yeah, of course. Do you remember back in the day how tight Siegfried and Roy were with their tigers? It was like every main story was like, oh, these tigers are the best behaved animals on earth. Blah, blah, blah. Simpsons in 1993 said the tiger is going to turn. This little friendly tiger is going to become an enemy of Siegfried and Roy quickly, and it's going to happen. 2003, it actually happened. Autocorrect errors. 1994. Before you could even play Snake on the gray little box phone, they they predicted that autocorrect will happen on your phone. Are you kidding me? Didn't happen until 2007. FaceTime, 1995. Not even a thought. I don't even know if anybody knew what the fuck the internet was. Oh, that's that right. little mark with the A and then the ring around it. At? See, that's what I said. Mm -hmm. No. What, what do you is say internet that, anyway? In 1995, they said, don't worry. You'll be carrying around a device where you will be face-to-face -face with somebody on the opposite side of Earth. 1995, they said that. 2010, it happened. Faulty voter machines. 2008, they predicted it. 2012, it became the forefront of conversation in a big, big wave. I assume these voter machines have been up in question for a long, long time, but they just knew that it was going to come to fruition in 2012. No, I want to vote for Obama. Two votes for McCain. <laughs> come on, it's time for a change. Three votes for McCain. The God particle. Now, this is the big one. Ty Schmidt did research. He said the God particle is the absolute reason why he is 1,000% a time traveler. Homer Simpson got up there like fucking Matt Damon in that movie where they have that... Goodwill hunting. Goodwill hunting and draws up this equation for what the God particle is, which what is the God particle? Yeah, it's, it's basically, it's this equation that essentially like explains how the universe was created. And they did that in 1998 and the exact equation happens in 2012. That's unheard of. 14 years ahead of time. They got Homer Simpson up there looking like that goddamn janitor from Harvard, solving equations up on a chalkboard. And 14 years later, it's like, yeah, that's actually how the universe was founded. It's like, wait a fucking minute, little comedy writer with a goddamn yellow cartoon, bro. That's insane. The NSA spying scandal. Everybody knew that the Patriot Act was like in existence, but nobody had a clue that NSA literally knows everything about you. Every dick you've sent has been seen by some government agency, but it wasn't always like that. We didn't know that everything was getting spied on, Sean. Nobody knew that. I didn't know. They predicted that in 2007, 2013 it happened. No, Lisa, it's not like the government is listening to everybody's conversation. Smartwatches. 1995, they said it would happen. 2014, they came to fruition. America's Ebola outbreak. 1997, they said it. 2014. Do you remember? Do you remember when Ebola hit? It was like it, it was literally hospitals like shutting down. Oh, they had people wearing like hazmat suits, carrying people around because they were scared Ebola was possible. In the modern world, this was happening. Years and years and years and years ago, Matt Gronick said this is going to happen. The FIFA corruption scandal, 2014, they called it 2015. It came all crashing down. Everybody knew they were getting their, their pockets greased, making decisions, sending a World Cup to a goddamn desert. Matt Gronick said it's going to happen. It happened. Greece's debt default, 2012, they called it 2015. It happened. So many countries out there, by the way. That's, they picked Greece? The exact country to happen. Trump's presidency, 2000, they called it 2016. It came to fruition. The Simpsons called this President Trump out there. And everybody probably looked at, oh, those, those Simpsons guys are so funny. Bang, 16 years later, it is about to happen. It goes down. Um, Lady Gaga Super Bowl halftime show, 2012, they called it 2017. I mean, I think we all knew that she was born this way. She would probably get to halftime show at some point. But to the details that they had. These are not coincidences. Coincidence I. I don't know how you pronounce it. How the fuck do they know this stuff? He's I mean, a it's time. Gotta be time traveler. Matt Gronig is a time traveler. I have so many fucking questions. Disney's takeover of Fox, 1998. They said it. 2017, it happens. The Shard in London, which is a building behind Big Ben, I guess. Is that right? Apparently, that's what uh, Google search said. 1995, 2009, it comes to fruition. Robot librarians, 95, they called it. 2016, it happens. The censorship of Michelangelo's David, 1990, 2016, it happened. Three-eyed fish from the fucking um, nuclear waste place. In Japan. 
Three-Eyed Fish comes to fruition in 2001. Macronix did it in 1990. 9-11. 9-11. They called that happening. If you do recall planes going into buildings, they said it in 1997, 2001, it happens. The Syrian uprising, everything that's going on in the Middle East has all been talked about on The Simpsons. And then he created another show called Futurama. That is huge. He created another show like, yeah, listen, here's me rubbing it in the face that that's where I could go if I have to. I have so many questions for Matt Gronick, and guess what, Matt Gronick? The gig's up. We know. I'm all in on you, Matt. And I'm a fan, by the way, aren't we? We're big fans. We're I'm just a huge talking. fan. If you want to travel to future me or current me or past me and say what's up, I think we would all be appreciated. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we could talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back. It is Wednesday, March 10th, 2021, years after zero, and we are right in the middle of Massacre Week here on SiriusXM. Uh, channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio. <laughs> YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. Can't thank you enough for listening or watching wherever the hell you may be. Joining us now. He's a college football national champion Whoa. and a Super Bowl champion. Wow. And a man that if you hold your nose when you jump into a pool, oh. will smack you right in the mouth. Oh, Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, AJ Hall. Hey! How are you doing, AJ? I'm doing great. I will not uh, slap anybody in the mouth anywhere, even if they hold their nose. No, because you would not want to be associated with somebody that does that. And if you hit somebody, that making contact with somebody that holds mm -hmm. their nose, which mm -hmm. you said yesterday is your biggest pet peeve on earth, basically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nope. Only it's not my biggest. It's, it's up there. It's not. It's not my biggest, but it's definitely up there. There was a moment you told your kids in this life that you have lived in your child's <laughs> life where you lived. It, don't ever do what you just did ever again, or I will ground you for the rest of your life. You said that because he did that. I, I didn't say that I would ground them, but I said we don't need to do that. <laughs> we hawks. Okay. <laughs> we hawks have the ability to be athletic. Okay. And just turn our noses off. Mm -hmm. We hawks have the ability to do that. Not wingtip, nose footed. I did see that you, uh, no cheeks. I did see <laughs> that you. No cakes. No cakes. I did, uh, yeah, no cheeks. Uh, the, <laughs> you, you on Twitter were surprised to see how many people agreed with you, though. Yes, It felt like there was a revolution a happening lot, yeah. on Twitter where everybody was like, yeah, let's end this whole hold your nose when you jump into water thing. There was a lot of people backing you, AJ. I did not expect that. I thought there was potential nose holders were going to come out and be like, oh, AJ. Me. Instead, it was the complete opposite. It was like, yeah, we do potentially need to get rid of those people. I did not expect that. I did not expect it. Well, don't you think potential nose holders may, they just may be scared to step out there and, and claim to be a nose holder? Oh, so you're a bully. You're a part of the problem. Yeah. Wow. No, 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 no. I'm yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah, but so someone, someone brought that. up a good point. Some, hey, somebody on Twitter said that person is mo like, they're likely to wait like the full hour between their last meal and when they jump in the pool. <laughs> well, you don't want to get cramps. Yeah. yeah. Smart. Well, really? pool, That's dude. real. That's how, a real thing. How did that start? Some dumb know. parent. One of their kid to wait so they could sit in the pool and drink twelve more Keystone Lights before the kid got in. Maybe. Hey, Keith Stone, is he still around? He's Keith Stone still so. hustling beer. Yeah, uh, legends never die. That, so. Exactly, True. you're right. In our legends, what they do on Earth or how you remember them after they die, and is Keith Stone ever going to die? Well said. Ooh. I think Keystone is dead, though. I haven't seen him in <laughs> yeah. some time. I mean, yeah. he came in denim, denim, denim. You remember? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. But you're right. I assume one pair. But it, that, that carried on. I, that was nationwide. I, I think that was something that really <laughs> caught on pretty well. I wonder why those things happen. I, I assume a lot of it does revolve around the fact that parents, you know, want to want to make it easier to teach their kids something. If we all agree on something, that's why some people say the Bible potentially a parental oh. starting like hey this is so we can get our kids right you you do this guess what burn forever like an outline okay you do this though everything's good yeah like an outline mm -hmm. which by the way i think is why religion is a as big as it is if i had to guess oh, yeah. mm -hmm. bless you 
maybe. There's a lot of things like that, man. Like, don't touch the, uh, don't touch a bird if it falls out of its nest because the mom won't come back or the egg or whatever. That's supposed, I guess that's a wives' tale, too. Cross your eyes, the patch in the back, it'll yep. stay that way. Oh, yeah. That's a bunch of bullshit, Step right? Let's yeah. try it. Let's, get, let's try it. Somebody do it? No, don't do it. Because if it oh, happens, oh, yeah. I'm not 100%. I've been You're taught right. that so much that I'm not 100% sure I would have been willing to do that. I'm like, I'll let somebody else figure it Jeez. out. I think I've tried it before. How'd it, happen? How'd it go? Well, I don't want to try it again. But, I mean, I was fine. Okay. Happy so. all right. I just assume you're a parent of seven. At this point, you guys got to make up a bunch of lies, I'd assume, to keep your kids in line. Parent of four, but uh, it's a tough thing now, <laughs> though. They can figure out lies much uh, easier than I could when I was a kid. Okay, so AJ... Massacre week is happening. Malcolm Butler gone. Emmanuel Sanders gone. Quan Alexander gone. Uh, Johnny Brown gone. Quentin Rick Richardson. Basketball player. Yeah. Jefferson. Was. Jefferson. Yeah. Quentin yeah. Jefferson, who, by the way, is the number eight overall ranked nose tackle or D tackle on PFF pass rusher or whatever from the Buffalo Bills gone. People are clearing out cap space now that they know 182 and a half is the number for some teams. There is some rollover for others, but there's some teams in some bad spots right now, AJ. Masker week is upon us. It was delayed a few days, and I'm not sure it's going to be a week, but it has come upon us at this moment, AJ. Yeah, it has. And, and I guess there was a slow start to it. Now we're, we're Wednesday, March 10th right now. So you think Thursday, Friday, we just can, is this going to continue to happen? Is the Grim Reaper going to continue to come out on the show? And a follow-up, the Grim Reaper has made a couple great performances here. Is it going to continue? The, this means they know the TV deals then, right? Hmm. I mean, I would assume. Oh, so that just kind of hit me there. So since they set a hard salary cap, that would mean that they know what the revenue split is going to be for the next year. That means they would know what the TV deals are going to be. So when are those numbers going to get officially released? Or will they ever get officially released? Because the numbers we did hear of was like ESPN's paying like two point something billion a year. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is. That's supposed to be a hundred a hundred billion dollar deal. Or, uh, I think yeah, over the next ten years. Over the next ten, a hundred billion dollar deal. That information is going to start rolling out now that they got the hard salary cap. You would assume unless they just said here's gonna be the salary cap we think and they're still figuring some things out but that's also rather large news here in the middle of massacre week they have to have some kind of idea of what like what the range is going to be for the tv money you would think to be able to do this are these platforms going to be able to work whenever i go over i try to watch these ufc fights and they freeze up yes. every time if that happens okay when there's a when there's a prime time game on i don't get to see my team i'm gonna be pissed can't have it won't have that's going to happen over the next couple of years, by the way. Oh, yeah. As, you know, other platforms start getting games, there are going to be some pissed off olds that maybe don't understand technology mm -hmm. or some platforms that fail people potentially because, you know, that has happened in the past as well. And there is going to be PR on the backside from the NFL. We are working to blah, blah, blah. That is going to happen as everything, not everything, but I assume there's going to be a transition into digital with these games for the next 10 years, a rather large transition into digital. Uh, so it's going to be interesting to see the the NFL kind of maneuver through these times because boy once the UFC thing freezes on ESPN plus that trends in about a half a second yeah. that's what 1 million people probably oh yeah 1 million mm -hmm. they're talking 40 some million people watching games and shit like that imagine these platforms and that happens there's going to be a situation let's just assume Jeff Bezos and the boys won't have that happen uh but let's I mean it that's something that we have to watch hey. Another thing you have to think about, how are they going? There's going to be so many more people trying to, to watch the streams illegally, aren't they, that don't have subscriptions to these, like ESPN Plus, yeah. like Billy Tubes and his buds that, that open Pokemon cards. That's all they do is stream illegal streams. By the way, you sound like an amateur. It's Discord, okay, yeah, yeah, is yeah, where do, a lot of this is going on at, all right? I don't oh, know. is the Discord for... Is it a place where they can get together and watch the illegal streams of fights and stuff? I do believe it is that place, yeah. And they do it as a group almost. It's like they get to sit in like a – from what I've – my research over the last couple months of this very young upstart that is taking and captivating a lot of people, obviously. Mm -hmm. they, it goes in there. It streams in there. And then there's even like comment section and stuff, I think. Team so, stream. Yeah, it's like a team stream where you can watch it together. So it's like, hey, I got a guy that actually gets the illegal stream. I don't even have to be the guy. You just got to. You don't even have to have the boat. You got to ha have the guy or the lady that has the boat yeah. as a friend. That's kind of what this Discord thing is, and the NFL will handle that. I assume Roger Goodell will shut down the internet. I assume. And for for a lot of people who are not living in the city where they grew up, for teams that they root for, they do that right now. 
um, if you don't want to pay for you know Sunday ticket, a lot, a lot of money and stuff like that. There's well, I a don't lot. Know. I don't know if there's a lot of illegal streaming going on right now for the NFL. Yeah. For NFL, lots. Yeah. Really? Oh, Probably yeah. like ninety five percent of this office, if I'd say so. But whoa, you guys! No, no. I right, listen. I didn't say shit. Now you're <laughs> fucking with the government. I think I, I don't do that. <laughs> Team okay. Sunday it, ticket, and yeah. let's not talk about the streams. Let's just wipe that off the table. Yeah, because yeah. Connor almost got eliminated from the internet. The and other I day. Yeah. will never speak of it again. The hacker said, "You've been warned, and I will heed his warning. I won't <laughs> talk about it." You dude. know, Ricky Dr- Diggs kind of took it on. The COVID Cowboys said, they said, I'll go in the saloon if you want me to, yeah, talking about this whole thing. Right the stream now. saloon. I'll do this whole thing. But, like, the um, <laughs> the thought, though, that this is – Ricky Gervais said this. Ricky Gervais said, I'm not out of touch, right, because people were – tabloids over in England were talking about whether or not he was going to be able to remain the same comedian he's always been, which is like this relatable well, – you know, they were saying he's out of touch. And his entire bit, basically, was about whether or not he was out of touch or not, right? He's like, I'm not out of touch. I'm spoiled, though. Like, I, you know, and it happens quick. He does this entire bit about it. And it was – Rather hilarious, and I related to it. It's like I don't, I don't know if I'm not like a hard worker or out of touch with what I, where I grew up or anything like that. But I get spoiled. I just assumed Sunday Ticket everybody had because the numbers they always pump out for that shit is so high. I didn't even assume that the streaming, and that's me being out of touch like a like a stooge. Thing. I don't have it. I don't have Sunday Ticket because yeah. I don't have Directv. I don't want to get a dish. Okay, so that's me being completely out of touch with everything. I assumed because the way it's marketed, right? The way it's marketed is it's massive. Everybody has it. I just assumed Sunday Ticket was a very normal thing, and it was much more easily accessible. It's probably rather expensive. You probably got to be able to buy. It's probably difficult. That's why if Sunday Ticket was to go to a digital platform, everybody would be much happier. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. I wonder if part of these TV deals is like one of Amazon's big push is like, hey, we can replace Sunday Ticket so you don't just have to have direct. TV to watch all these games because if you I mean a lot of places too like you, you're living that like they that you won't be able to get a dish put up anyway so so my house listen <laughs> that goddamn dish yeah but that's all that DirecTV has if DirecTV oh. doesn't have Sunday ticket they don't have a business I feel like listen we had a deal with DirecTV for like a month or so mm-hmm. they did pay me money that that thing stinks mm-hmm. I have never suffered more, you know, fanhood pain than with that goddamn dish. It was the Super Bowl, the College Football National Championship, Mm -hmm. and I think I had like a Stanley Cup game that froze up in the middle, just back to back to back, and I'd call, and they're like, oh, sorry, try cleaning it off. I'm like, who has the fucking ladder, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Who do I need to do it right now? That whole thing, if Sunday Ticket moves to digital, a digital platform, Man, that'd be awesome for everybody currently mm-hmm. living. Game changer. You can watch it anywhere, and especially now with smart TVs. And like, Bezos can afford it. Fucking just yeah. do it, oh, dude. Yeah. Hey, yes. Bezos, for the good of all of us, man. Get it done. Come on. And by the way, Google people. I mean, we have. I mean, we do business together. We don't know any. We don't know you. You don't know us. But I want you know. Get in the goddamn game. Yeah. Dude. Why yeah. don't you guys go get it? Put this on YouTube. Imagine if Sunday Ticket was on YouTube. I mean, oh man. 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 Yeah. Do the right thing. And it's probably one contract away. It's probably next contract. Huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. This last ditch effort probably from all the old school. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. They're like, hey, listen, we're going to take all of our chips from the next 10, 30, 100 years we have and just go ahead and just see if we can save this. And then in 10 years from now, it'll all be digitalized. So. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Can those get renegotiated, you think? Yeah, I'm actually looking at it now. The Sunday ticket rights are up soon, and it's expected they're going to go completely digital. Let's go! Yeah! Yes! Go, oh, dude. Amazon. Thank you, Nick. So Amazon's going to get the Thursday night package. Could they get that one as well? <clears throat> sure. it, they said it's not just Thursday night package, by the way. It said like a multitude of games or something <laughs> was the report. It wasn't just like the one game thing. The way the report was written, it was pretty obvious that they were saying that Amazon, not just one game a week, they're going to get a, a few games. Hopefully they get Sunday ticket. Let's go. Hey, why not, Jeff? It's Jeff huge. wouldn't even notice. The, the, no. the thing wouldn't even notice. Now, question for you. Drop yeah. in the pond. Um. So there's other channels. Like a lake, though. Yeah. Like maybe yeah. even an ocean. ocean. Yeah. Shit. A Black golf, sea. Yeah. There's other, there's other networks that have a channel that go to teams that are, like, about to score and stuff like that. Say Amazon. And those some of those guys are, they're like, on their high horse and stuff like that. You're talking about the Red Zone channels? Yeah. Oh. Um, say Great. the Amazon got those rights. What you say about that channel, And they need someone to host throwing Red around. Zone? Red Zone's great. Would you be interested in hosting a cooler Red Zone? Uh... Yeah, I mean, it's pretty cool. I don't think I've ever watched Red Zone Channel, though. So I, I had it on one TV. Mm-hmm. I don't know what the host does. What does he do? He just throws around to 
different games uh, that are happening, and then like well, every every once in a while interject like some of his thoughts that are never good. Um, Jesus, what is it? It's, 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 what? It's, it's like the live PD of football. Yeah. Really? It shows you all the relevant yeah. plays, though. Yeah. It shows you all the relevant plays around the league because you can't watch every game. The, unless see, I didn't say you that sitting in your basement with 36 TVs. Yeah, but you, the way you're, you're oh, just oh. continuing to talk about how, like, relevant plays, okay? Like, we get it, dude. All right? Oh, no. Oh, I forgot. No special teams. That's why you have a hard grudge against Red Zone. Okay, my bad. I Bingo. Yeah, and also, geez. I appreciate football, okay? Yeah. I have a high football IQ. I'd like to see the game, you know, feel the game. I want to know what's going on. I, don't just drop in out of nowhere when there's a highlight happening no. and potential you know money to be made fantasy points to be changed uh the only thing you really want to see from that game because the rest of the game is very boring listen i understand the appeal okay but i'm an old school guy yeah. i want to watch the entire game that's right in all the games and maybe i do get caught up a lot and it gets difficult <laughs> to follow <laughs> but i have taken a stand against the red zone channel uh, okay. traditional nothing you have to is that a part of sunday ticket uh, so that go I with it? So. You no, can, because I have it on YouTube it is with it's, direct, it's on everything. It, yeah, it is with DirecTV, yeah. but if you don't have DirecTV, you can buy uh, Sunday, or I mean, it's Red Zone on your own. Okay, provider. so let's, let's, let's brainstorm here, shall we? I mean, it's not a great show for people, but let's go ahead and brainstorm <laughs> until the next... Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> okay, until, <laughs> until the next Massacre Week. So let's say Amazon gets rights, okay? Amazon could then create their own Red Zone channel. Right, right? exactly. You'd be able to create your own one. Let's say uh, the Google... Google does. They could probably create their own then, right? Yeah, for sure. Anybody that has rights to the games could create their own. That's Absolutely. You just need to find a host for it. That's interesting. It's a long day. Long day. Because there's already two Red Zone channels. One, Who's the guy that hosts? Scott Sis Hansen. Sis Scott Sis Hansen. Sis Hansen. Yeah. I follow him. I'm a Scott Hansen fan. You buried him a little bit. Yeah, you yeah, did big time. He, or were you I, talking I, about Siciliano? No, no. I like I like Siciliano. Hansen. I mean, he <laughs> put Waddle on a interesting. He did. I, mean, I used to love Hansen. It's just Jesus. he interjects a lot now and it's Kind of Mickey Mouse. Jeez, dude. Oh. This show stinks. Dude. I don't even notice him. I watch Red Zone. I, don't even, I mean, a lot you of have times it on I, mute. I don't have the sound, but yeah, I don't notice yeah. the you have it on, I have it on mute, too, by the way. So it's like, I, I don't listen. It's on, you know, it's on one of the TVs. Or I, don't, I don't have it on sound. I always have Tony Romo on sound because I'm learning football. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's why I always have Tony Romo on. And if it's not Romo, it's Daryl Moose Johnson. Goddamn right. I learned a lot mm -hmm. this past season with Daryl Moose Johnson mm -hmm. on the call. Yeah. Hey, what about Charles Davis? You keep him up, too. He's coming. Listen, I am pumped to talk to Charles Davis. Charles Davis always has this energy about him. Yeah. Always, AJ. Always has this energy about him. I'm excited to hear what he has to say. Uh, he was on the call that draft night when I came out and, you know, did my, my announcement. He put me over, laughed. I'm very thankful for Charles Davis. He does a good job calling games. I think He's awesome. Man, there's some bad ones out there, though, AJ. Hey. Mm. Here's yeah, a lot of times... Yeah, you don't see it. Well, you realize some games, like in some NFL games, are only played to like two or three percent of the country, like the regional games that you get in your area on the local channels. Yeah, but then there were some decisions made for some people to be a part of some games that were being seen by a lot of people, and it was like, "What are we doing here?" That's how it works, man. Do we not like the NFL? Hmm? Are we trying to, <laughs> are we trying to ruin the game? Uh -huh. What are we? Who's making this decision? What are we doing? Am I muted? Am I muting my fucking television right now? What am I? Am I just gonna play background music? What am I gonna huh. do right now? I want to watch a game. I want to yeah. feel the game. Yeah. So then you just go to like a playlist or something that is just crowd noise, and it feels like you're at the stadium. Mm -hmm. right? You know what it I mean? It's awesome. Yeah. I just kind of put put your uh, put your yeah. blinders on mm -hmm. and just kind of put the crowd noise in there. Huh? An Oculus for your ears. Yeah. That's nice. Seven hundred and fifty-one punches last night, AJ. Jeez. One fight. Did you get knocked out at all? Come on, bro. What are we? There was a moment in the fourth round, though, where I had both arms down and I was playing all defense, which I had never done because I couldn't lift up my arms, which this morning, by the way, tough time getting up. Mm -hmm. Difficult time getting up. But, yeah, there was like 20, 30 seconds where – it was getting a little bit sketchy. I was doing the head bob thing, and then the screen went black and white, and I had to throw my hand at it. And then I, the way I knocked him out was a throw from the ass. Like a Ooh, windmill. Mm -hmm. Like a home, you know what I mean? He was dead tired, too, I learned. So yeah. that was a good little thing. But I'm back in the game, AJ. I haven't seen Carl 1211 on, in yes. his Oculus ever. <laughs> it's unbelievable at this point. It's been a while. I, I'll be back someday. It's because you got seven kids. Let's go to Mike in Michigan. What's going on, Mike? 
Hey, how's it going, fellas? Hey, not too shabby. How are you? Not too bad. Just uh, doing a little daddy duty today, listening to the great Pat McAfee show this morning. Uh, with the boys, obviously, and nice. AJ. And we appreciate you uh, subjecting your kid to this show as well. Mm. Uh, not sure that'll win you any awards, but we do appreciate it. What do you want to talk about, Mike? Uh, first off, I'd like to give a shout-out to Mansuri and his new podcast, oh, uh, yeah. Real Banger of a Listen. Oh, yeah, oh, Rassin yeah. Sports Entertainment, the second-ever episode. Now, appreciate it. Wrestling with Sports Entertainment was a wrestling podcast we put out of this show June of 2019, okay? Mm -hmm. There's a story behind this because wrestling is now a podcast that has been created uh, with Brandon Walker, who I am a fan of, and I'm a fan of that podcast. So we released said show today, Wrestling with Sports Entertainment. We've had for a couple of years, we already had all the pipelines built in to yeah. upload the podcast right. and everything. Since then, wrestling has been created. So maybe we didn't think deep enough into that. Might have to change the name, but still stay, because I like Brandon Walker and them. So I'm not starting, There's I, I'm, a, I'm a fan of that show. I like wrestling podcasts. But with that being said, wrestling with sports entertainment, currently the name of the show. Great fucking show. Mark Madden, man. Sorry. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hey, if, you guys, if you're a wrestling fan, I think you should listen to this show. It is a very, very good show. Uh, they recorded it the other day, and the entire office just basically sat out there and listened to the entire thing, even guys that aren't wrestling fans. It's a good show. Probably going to have a name change, if I had to guess, in this entire thing, because there's no reason to do that, even though we had the pipeline set up, and it made us our jobs much easier and able to get the show up much quicker. Uh, but it's a great show. Thank you for shouting that out, Mike. I appreciate you listening to that. Yeah, absolutely. And I figured I'd keep the Green Bay theme going with the calls. And I know... No, hey, you're going to get us in shit because we get tweets that we're just a yeah. Green Bay Packers yeah. show. What are you going to do? Well, then I have nothing, but thanks for the <laughs> <laughs> That was a good call. AJ? AJ. What's up? Yeah. Have you seen the amount of money that some teams are allowed to spend and other teams aren't allowed to spend because of rollover cap? Did you even know this existed? I had no idea this existed until today. I also didn't know what the floor of the salary cap meant. I had to text Lombardi. He said normally it's at like 75% of what the salary cap is, but now guys have to spend or teams have to spend 89% of the salary cap. Uh, rollover cap gives a lot of people a lot more room than everybody else. There's some teams in bad shape. So this is a very interesting salary contract like lesson for everybody about what's going on in the NFL behind the scenes. When everybody says it's a business, it's a business, it's a business. This is what the players meant all along. This is all about numbers right now. Moves are being made strictly because of capital. It's fascinating right now, AJ. Oh, it is. Yeah, the rollover cap, like I, I knew it was a thing. I just never really understood how they work it out, how, how it happens. But think about like, when you – Think about how these teams try to get creative to get under the cap. It's crazy. Like the, the voidable years they can put on the end of a deal so they can spread out everything out. Like it's, yeah, you have to be a math wizard, I feel like, if you want to be a cap guy for one of these teams. Yeah, and not the cap guys, by the way, they probably are math wizards. And then Uncle COVID comes through and they're all like, hey, this is, we got to win it this year because yeah. every contract we set up going forward was meant for a, you know, the curve that we were talking yeah. about with COVID, we, we thought that curve was going to continue to go. We are in trouble if that curve goes away. And they're like, well, took a lot less than two weeks. They halted that curve quickly with these finances. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Teams got changed. We have to get to a break. Charles Davis will join us on the other yeah. side. I'm excited to chat with Charles Davis about what's going on in the NFL. Also, it has been announced that the Texas Rangers will have 40,000 people in attendance at a game. A packed Haas will happen in America, in Texas, for the Texas Rangers. Woo! When is this? Opening day. Opening day. Opening day. If they're able to fill their stadium at 40000 the amount of money they're going to make versus everybody else in the MLB is going to be yeah. alarming, I assume, the number to every other MLB team. And there's going to be a lot of conversation about this from Evan Grant's reports. Cannot wait to follow up. I thought we had beaten COVID. I yeah, thought every yeah. stadium was open. Turns out it's just down in Texas, which, by the <laughs> way, they have been flying that flag early. Mm -hmm. They will be the trial run. They are okay with that. Who knows what the fallout will be. Charles Davis is on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show. Mr. Brightside blew up the killers. Like it was, it made them, they were everywhere. Maybe you knew about them or something, but like they was huge. I think there was a moment like that for you, in my opinion. And it was that the two, not 2019 NFL draft in Nashville, Tennessee, when the Indianapolis Colts selected you to announce a pick 
and it sounded a little bit like this. Man Hello, Nashville. I'm not going to say a single word about the Tennessee Titans record against uh -oh. the Indianapolis oh, Colts boy. because I was a punter, and there's no reason for me to talk about that. <laughs> With that being said, we did not punt much against the Tennessee Titans, <laughs> so you probably have no clue who I am to begin. <laughs> All right, it's a 10 out of 10 line, and there was you, you announced the pick. Pat, I was in Nashville that night. There was buzz about you. Everyone was talking McAfee, McAfee. I really think that was your Mr. Brightside moment. What was that night like for you? Oh, it was awesome. I appreciate that, by the way. I um, So a couple years before that, you hear me say in that speech later that a few years ago when I retired, I retired alongside Robert Mathis and Joe Wrights. Uh, I watched the draft months after we all announced our retirement. Robert Mathis announced a draft pick. Joe Wrights announced a draft pick. And then an orangutan from the Indianapolis Zoo announced the fourth <laughs> round draft. So I was legitimately, like, actually replaced by an orangutan. Okay? So that was quite a moment for me. You know, I, I, I had to realize where I stood and everything. And the orangutan was terrible, Kyle. That orangutan was terrible. All it had to do was press the iPad. Couldn't press the iPad. You know what I mean? I remember it was a disaster. He completely fumbled it. You would have stuck the iPad with full dexterity. You know, you would have nailed it, Thank and they you. did not ask. Um, so, did you know Pat that night was that big? Like th that, when you're up there, you're like, "Holy shit, this is a huge moment for me." Yeah. So I got an email like two weeks before the draft, and it was from the NFL. Yeah. It was the the NFL or NF I forget who. I think it was the NFL. Hey, would you be interested? Okay in announcing a draft pick. And I'm like, I got some, yeah, absolutely. Especially oh, after yeah. the orangutan, you know what I mean? So like, I'm very appreciative of all those opportunities. Like I was so incredibly thankful for it, but now that I have it, you know, like how do we make this, you know, one that we'll think about in a little bit. So as I'm sitting backstage, having some beers with Shane Leckler and the boys, you know, uh, the other people that are, I was watching Reggie go up there and just roast Tennessee, just, roast sure. these titans kill them and i i loved everything about it i'm like okay so i have to answer that obviously so you know the brain starts cooking a little bit and as i'm sitting in the back waiting area roger goodell comes over daps me up you know he asked me about what i'm wearing i got my jeans like uh i got them <laughs> kind of cuffed up i got some air forces on and i didn't even have a dress shirt on i was i was gonna wear a t-shirt but i hit a uh i hit a store on uh Broadway there or whatever to buy one. So I got a cowboy shirt on underneath, you know what I mean? Sport coat. And he goes like, uh, Hey, have fun out there or whatever. And I'm like, Hey, don't you worry about that, pal. I give him like a fist bump. And at that moment it was like, Oh, I didn't really pump much against it. And it like all came together literally as I was like walking out there. And as I'm walking on a stage, I look to my right. There is a 30 yard sized picture of my face, right? Because of how deep <laughs> that crowd was. I like looked, I almost got like disgusted. I was like, that's way too big of a nose there. And I look over, Shefty gives me like a salute or whatever. I'm like, Shefty, how's it going? And then all of a sudden, as soon as I sit down, I see all those people. There was. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. This one's a good one. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. It's almost as good as Bright Cellars, the wine subscription service that helps you find the wines you will love without the normal intimidation and pretentiousness you're used to. AJ, a lot, a lot of pretentiousness around your life. This place, nothing like that. Yeah, I, I wouldn't like this company, I guess. Oh, because you do uh, like it pretentious. I'm super pretentious, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so if you're super pretentious, not going to love how unpretentious Bright Cellars is. Yep. But if you're not a pretentious person, Bright Cellars, the place for you. Hell yeah. You got some winos in the office here, and they're loving their Bright Cellars boxes. Ain't that right, boys? Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Oh, yeah. AJ, I'm not sure if you're at this age. You probably were, you know, with the community you hang out up there, you know, probably happened earlier. But in my life, 
a lot of my friends have gotten the age where they all moved on to wine. They drink wine, they feel sophisticated, they drink the wine, they like the drunk that they get from it. More calm and everything. Like I've watched it happen to my friends. It's literally happened right in front of my eyes. Yeah, I mean, wine's the best. Who doesn't love wine? Now, Ty had a gallon jug glass. Goblet. It was a goblet. It was, mm -hmm. a goblet. It was un gap. unbelievable to watch. Mm -hmm. It was a damn near a feat. That this, yeah. But a lot of my friends are winos. And they found out that all you have to do is take a 30 second quiz and then you'll get paired with six unique and personalized wines that fit you perfectly. Wow. Bright Southern sources their wines from all over the world, Spain, Portugal, Australia, South Africa, and many more places, obviously. Plus they'll help you learn what wine pairs well with your Aldi charcuterie board. Oh, <laughs> wow. Sharp words. I'd eat off of it. Not from Aldi's. I did eat off of one. Delicious. It wasn't bad, to be honest with no, you. No, it wasn't it was good. It. I wish I didn't know, though. Yeah, never tell me. Yeah. How to make same hot same cheese you get at the fancy store. Mm -hmm. Okay, now the interesting thing about that is the fancy store brought the meat the next week, and I was on the john. Huh. Yeah. You got sick because of it. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe it's not the same cheese. Maybe it's better cheese. Whoa. I'm telling yeah. you, you weren't here. I was no. sick in there. I was. Yeah. that bad. Oh. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It was explosive. Pre-sliced meats or were these sliced? Charles Davis is here. Jesus. Pre-sliced meats, <laughs> yes. Okay, it's brightsellers.com forward slash pat50. B-R-I-G-H-T-C-E-L-L-A-R-S dot com forward slash pat50. <laughs> and that'll get you 50% off your first six bottle orders from Bright wow. Sellers. Wow. That's what I'm talking They're about. They're giving away stuff right now at Bright Sellers. And it's an incredible, convenient wine operating system. Brightsellers.com forward slash Pat50. Joining us now, ladies and gentlemen, is one of the voices of the NFL, a man who we enjoy dearly every single time he stops by. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles Davis. Hey, Charles! How you doing, man? Man, I am doing great, <laughs> and I am so excited. AJ, good to see you again. Look at you in front of the books right there, making sure right. everybody knows that Ohio State, you're not just a football player. <laughs> well, okay? There's a lot going on there. Uh, you know? Pat, I'm loving Thank what you're you. talking about with the wines and, see. you know, how our friends graduate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, don't forget our friends graduated from boxes to bottles. Yeah, you're right. Smack the bag <laughs> to now. Right. What am I pairing with? Yeah. You're right. You're that was big. That was big. And I was I'm a little worried about who delivered your meats and cheeses <laughs> yeah. the second time. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. it almost makes um, – what was the – remember the trilogy that Kevin Smith did of movies with Chasing Amy and whatchamacallit um, – Mall rats was the first one. Okay. okay. And if, and if mall rats, you remember that Jason Lee uh -huh. wanted to get back at the girlfriend's father. Of course. And so he he reached his hand down his pants first before he gave it, and then touched the the cookies, and oh. the guy got sick. Classic oh. move. Right? So, so oh. I'm a little worried about who Classic. delivered that. And if there was any leave. stinky handshakes going on with the uh, meat right? that I ate, right? I got a problem with yeah, it. Billy Tubes. So, so, so <laughs> last, last but not least, though, I heard you talking yeah. about the draft with the orangutan in Indianapolis. That's right. Whose name was Rocky, by the way, mm -hmm. which gave me one of my all-time moments of the NFL draft. I'm sitting there with Mike Mayock who at the time was was the draft analyst for NFL Network. And one great thing about Mike is he took it very seriously in terms of each kid having his moment. Yeah. And I think the first time they went to Rocky the orangutan, or maybe it's the second, I can't remember. But <laughs> Mike was not happy. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he said something to the effect of, if you show that chimp, one more time, I'm walking out of here. <laughs> so, as you guys know in our business now, right? If you challenge a producer and a director, that's you know they're going to come at you, right? Yeah, yeah. So immediately they showed Rocky again. <laughs> I'm on the set and I'm dying, right? I've got sweat coming off me like Albert Brooks in Broadcast News. I needed a John Thompson towel at that point to mop it up because okay. I'm crying. I'm laughing so hard. And I'm laughing because I know how mad Mike is. And Grover Stewart, who's still playing with Indianapolis and doing a nice job defensive tackle Great out player. of Albany State, was being picked when we went back to Rocky. And Rocky does that again. And I think with my big mouth, with all my love for Mike, after he said if they show that chimp one more time, 
I think I opened up my big trap and said, Mike, I think it's actually an orangutan. No. <laughs> no. That's not what he was looking for. Hey, so what? anyway, I remember that time frame well, Pat. I will say this, uh, Charles. And, and by the way, you put over my announcement with laughing. <laughs> so I appreciate you doing what you've done. I always appreciate everything you do. You're incredible uh, to watch along with something. That <laughs> orangutan and I have history. <laughs> By the way, that orang- I, I had to read some ad reads uh, about the orang- Rocky coming to town. Mm-hmm. He's a famous orang. This thing's been in <laughs> yes, movies. Really? Rocky's been in movies wow. before. I believe he was in a music video with Fergie at one wow. point. What? Rocky. Ro- Rocky. Rocky. Rocky's not kind of a big deal. Rocky is a, it big, is a big deal. deal. Yeah. Wow. So, I mean, if you're going to get replaced by a zoo animal, it is that <laughs> zoo animal, which happened. But, uh, Charles, as we're getting into this draft time, okay, yeah. you now commentating for CBS not really in the draft coverage I don't think so I might be wrong but are you still keeping up with it or are you just turning your attention to next year and what's going on with all these rosters and everything like that no I'm keeping up with it um in a big way so so that part's not a not a problem for me because I work for NFL Network for the draft so I am preparing and it's funny that you bring it up you know and you guys know this and AJ when he was going through the draft process Pat when you were going through that time how many times did you have some draft Nick say something to the effect of, you know, AJ, I've watched every play that you've you've had at Ohio State. <laughs> Pat, I've watched every ball that you punted. And uh, it, it, most of the time, we're lying. Yeah. Okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? yeah right, most of the time, because to go back <laughs> over all those plays and all that and to do it for everybody, that's hard to do. Some people actually get that done, and they're some of the prominent, preeminent people. I'm not going to call out and say, hey, you're absolutely lying. But if you analyze the amount of time and say to yourself, okay, if you're telling me that you watched every play of A.J. Hawks and all other 15 top linebackers in that draft, I'm going to be like, hold on a second. What else do you do the rest of your life? <laughs> because, because that's hard to do. But do you do? But do you do the job thoroughly? I think most people do, and and we and it's all an opinion based thing, and that's what I'm working on. I was watching tape today, right before you guys called. I was actually just watching Mac Jones, the quarterback at Alabama, again. So, got it. Hey, what do you think? What do you think of Mac? Like, wh- where's he going to go? How's he going to be? You know, it's funny. I, I just I wrote down a few things, AJ, and what I that, what I saw was, you know, a lot of people want to ding him because Alabama's so good, and mm-hmm. I'm like. Okay, I get all that, but a lot of guys that play for really good teams doesn't make them a great quarterback. But I'm watching this kid process, go through reads, feel pressure, and he's not going to run away from a lot of stuff. He's going to move from it. So those quarterbacks Uh, with that good pocket presence and feeling things, I watched him move from pressure. And one of the things I really liked about him, his feet didn't have to be perfectly set to deliver an accurately thrown football downfield. If you watch a number of games that he played, His feet aren't totally set all the time. It's not like the pocket is totally clean and he steps up and, you know, and he makes that that beautiful looking throw. I mean, there's plenty of times when he steps up, feet aren't perfect, and the ball comes out, and, boy, it's on target downfield. I'm liking him more and more, and my immediate comparison with him was Matt Ryan coming out of Boston College because he wins from the pocket most of the time. But you remember Matt's MVP year, guys? What did he add to his game? movement skills Kyle Shanahan demanded that he become you know a a more fluid quarterback Matt had to do a lot of stretching and the whole deal right but you remember those stretch plays and AJ off the stretch here they come out and they bootleg it out I think Mac Jones can run that type of an offense and run it really well so my immediate thought is God almighty him and Kyle Shanahan who trained Matt Ryan that year in Atlanta that'd be a pretty dynamic duo I like this kid better now that I've seen him on tape, that maybe what I'm hearing people say out there. And what everybody says about Kyle Shanahan is he feels like he can make any quarterback. Like I, I guess any quarterback. Yeah, I guess Kyle, I, Kyle, look, let's just put it this way: Kyle doesn't lack for confidence. Well, we that's good. That. And by the way, yeah. it's it's proven. It's had success everywhere he's and, gone. Basically, and listen. All of a sudden, Nick Mullins became a commodity. C.J. Beathard, after a rough start to his career, came back around and played fairly well in short spurts for him. We saw what he did with Matt Ryan, turned him to an MVP candidate in Atlanta. Uh, Kirk Cousins became the starter in Washington. 
you know, you know, yeah. ultimately under his tutelage before Jay Gruden. So, yeah, I'd say that he's got a pretty proven track record. And Jimmy Garoppolo went to the Super Bowl. Hey, Charlie, which, by the way, we're talking to Charles Davis. He works for CBS and NFL Network for draft coverage, by the way. Uh, cannot wait to see him display the amount of work he did in the film room <laughs> yeah. on NFL Network talking about these drafts. Mac Jones' name has been rising quickly, and you just got done watching film of him. Now, did you watch Trevor Lawrence as well? And do you yeah. think the fact do you think the fact that Mac Jones in Alabama was running an NFL offense? Sarkeesian had motion, he was reading, and everybody at the Reese Senior Bowl was like, he picked up the offense. It was the same offense he was yeah. running in Alabama. I think that gives him a monster head start on a lot of people. And I assume that's why a lot of the NFL guru people that are looking are like, this kid has a chance to be great because of the mental head start, but also the physical uh, contributions, right? Yeah, I think you nailed it, Pat. You mash it together because one without the other, you can't play in the NFL. You have to have both. People look at it all the times, and, and we've seen it, and you guys have both known it, and, and you're not going to probably name names now, but guys in your locker rooms who had everything on one side but didn't have it on the other, they probably didn't last very long. People keep trying to get it together. To me, this kid has it all, and it would be interesting to see what the rise is because I will tell you prior to you know, the draft season beginning, you probably would have thought of Mac Jones somewhere near the end of the first round from uh, 20 to 32. Maybe and you know who had a rise like that a few years ago? It was Ryan Tannehill coming out of Texas A&M. Oh. The evaluation process was like between 20 and 32, and he ended up going eight. And it turned out to be, you know, ultimately now we look at it and go, hey, <laughs> that's pretty darn good, right? This kid, This kid can flat out play. And he had some bumps in Miami, but he doesn't have them now. I think Mac's going to be in a very similar situation with quarterback needy teams. And if we see some people jump up early in the draft, make a play at two with the Jets, if Atlanta wants to jump up to try and get their guy, what does Carolina do at eight? Mac might rise even higher. Mm. Charles, hey, going into the guys that are currently playing right now, a guy named Russell Wilson, we all know. Team yeah. three, his crew around him has been putting some stuff out and. Hey, he and Pete, it seems like their relationship is strange. Do you think, like, I guess, what are the chances that Russ is in Seattle next year? And, and how long has this all been brewing? It's awkward out there, Charles. It, it is awkward, isn't it? And frankly, I don't know how you guys feel. I never would have thought it would get get awkward between he and Pete in Seattle. They just seem too much of a, a match set in terms of how they viewed things, went about things, the enthusiasm they brought to the table every day. I would say it probably started brewing. You remember a few years ago when Seattle missed the playoffs at nine and seven, mm -hmm. and yeah. that was the year that that was the year. If you go back, Russell Wilson played through about three big time injuries, never missed a snap, played through, mm. led the team in touchdown passes. Duh, he's the quarterback. <laughs> but, he al but he also led them in rushing, and I believe had the only rushing touchdown or touchdowns on the season for Seattle. The run game was bereft. Jeez. That's when Russ started cooking. And I think, you know, once you open the door that way, it's hard for a quarterback to go back the other way. And that may be kind of the start of all of that if you look back on it. But, look, $39 million cap hit. How are you going to make that all work? Hey, Who's going to be able to do that? I'm not that good with, with numbers, truthfully. But I'll leave it at this. I'm not as much worried about Pete Carroll and Russell Wilson as I am about Russell walking in and telling the offensive line, hey, you remember the show I did? Don't worry about it. <laughs> I mean, I I, 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 there, that's what I was going to say there is there's a lot of shit flying that is potentially going to have some shrapnel that's going to hit some things. Now, professional locker room, okay, and a football locker room, no matter what the difference is, is guys come together. You know what I mean? Like That's going to happen. But there, I think it's much more awkward right now if Russell goes back to Seattle, then Deshaun goes into the locker room in Houston. The locker room, I assume, is still rallying around Deshaun. It's the owner. In Seattle, it seems like it has gotten like almost personal with his coaches, too. It's like It just seems like an interesting situation. Ty, what do you have? Charles, have you watched any of uh, Lance's tape? And do yeah. you, do, where do you see him going? It's, I mean, he obviously had the showcase game, but last year yeah. they were talking about him being a top-five pick, and then now he's kind of dropped, but maybe moving back up. Where do you see him going? He's a big old horse, isn't he? And I saw that Iowa stuff you had in front of you. He was supposed to play against them, and the season went kaput. And that would have been an interesting deal because we're always looking for the one double-A guys, and the first tape you pop on is how did they play against a 1A team. In his career, he ended up not playing against any 1As. 
But when you look at him and the size, the frame, the mechanics are off the charts. I mean, his mechanics are as, bad, are as good as there are in the draft. And I'm putting him up there with Trevor Lawrence or anyone else. His mechanics are beautiful. He's a good-looking kid and throwing the football. Footwork, excellent. His ability to run the football, both with power and elusiveness and speed, he'll run away from people. I like him a lot. But I have a cardinal rule, guys, and, and right now I'm sticking with it. My cardinal rule is if we're taking these quarterbacks in the top half of the draft, and a team says says to all of us, well, we're going to you know, have them sit behind the veteran, redshirt him a year, and see how it goes. They're lying to us. Okay. And, and, and those guys are going to play by games three or four, and then I always end up good. You guys just wasted three or four games. You might as well start it from the beginning. True. With this kid and only one full season and one double A and one game beyond that, it wouldn't shock me at all if he could go to a team and truly sit behind a veteran for one season and then go from there. I'm not saying he couldn't handle it. Jordan Love. But that, mm-hmm. but that would yeah. be the spot for me. And Carolina, I know the owner there, David Tepper, keeps screaming franchise quarterback. You've got Teddy Bridgewater. You bring this kid in and give it a year, and then you turn him loose. To me, that would be kind of ideal. He goes to Atlanta, sits behind Matt Ryan for a year. Uh. To me, that's ideal just because he's only played 16, 17 games. Hey, there's a lot of quarterbacks, by the way. Mac, Zach, mm-hmm. Justin, Trey, Trevor, and they're all allegedly going to be good. I'm excited mm-hmm. to see which ones are, which ones aren't. Somebody's going to get it right. Somebody's going to get it massively yeah. wrong. That is just what odds say. Hopefully everybody's going to be great. I'm pumped to kind of watch it unfold. Connor, what do you have? Charles, uh, can you please tell us with full confidence that Madden 22 is not going to stink? <laughs> or what do you think? I will – listen, my confidence is always in the Madden people, but you know that I just yak – and the smart people take care of all the rest of that. Stuff. <laughs> all right. Look, I'd love to tell you that, you know, I came from MIT. No engineers. <laughs> but, but, you know, I played in Tennessee. You know, our, 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 our view was not as much on the Madden and all the projections and all the things, the algorithms and things like that. We wanted to know if we could line up and beat Alabama ourselves. <laughs> that, that's, that's where our focus was. You didn't get a scholarship to go to school, I believe, where they, they didn't they don't pay us to school or something. I forget. Our the- Cardale Jones, they don't they hey, listen, I don't I don't play school. <laughs> I play football. <laughs> I didn't get a scholarship to play. Oh school. yeah, that's yeah. right, AJ. He went to Ohio State. Yeah, that's my earlier. Man. Earlier uh, when you said that, but you're like AJ proving. <laughs> my first thought was dude. like, Cardinals a great dude. He's awesome. He's I a love great. The dude. Hey, listen, he probably listen. He said what a good number of us thought when we were in school. Everybody. He just kind of he just said it. You yeah. know, you you know better than to actually say it, mm, and it just savage. got out there. And we're all sitting in those classrooms wondering about practice that day. I look, I I, I did all the same things. I'm not. Mr. Holier than thou, like I didn't do it either. Well, I, I appreciate the fact you sat in the classrooms. I opted out of doing that as well. <laughs> uh, Charles, the uh, the salary cap was just set. Okay, one eighty two yeah. and a half million. During your year of traveling, whenever you're calling games, you get interviews with people, and now it's Zoom calls or anything like that. Yeah. I would assume those interviews aren't always just robotic interviews. I, I'd assume the conversation opens up a little bit. Did you get the sense, like we're in the middle of something that Diana Rossini was texted by a coach at it's Masker Week. Did you get a sense that everybody kind of knew that this season with their roster, they were potentially, like was there any talk of like, who knows what the roster is going to be next year with this entire thing? Did they know this was going to happen, or is this kind of getting dropped on teams uh, over the last month or so no no the, the teams were were well aware going into it because you know they project their way out they understand that and everyone knew that once we got our footing to even begin last year okay that's great now what's it going to be beyond that and so they were already projecting out there so no i don't think it was a major surprise to the teams i think maybe for some players yes and only for this reason we're in the here and now okay we are training for tomorrow to be better that day and then the next day and the next day to make the roster, to keep our spot. Then all of a sudden we're looking up, guess what? Am I being tagged? Am I going to be released? Am I going to be on this team next year? Those things start to kick in later on. So from the players, that was never a discussion during the season. Off, 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 off target, you know, off of the Zooms, other places where I talk with GMs and people. Yeah, they were already projecting for that. Yeah, it's it's going to get crazy, they say. Charles, every time you come on our show, you make it better. I'm very thankful uh, for your time. Kind. No, you do. You're, you're unbelievable. Now, 
I, I assume Madden players are hoping you know you do the same mm-hmm. thing over there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Listen, but- we're, we're all we're all hoping everything goes well and gets better and all that. And truthfully, a lot of those things, as I said, they are over my head. But that doesn't mean I don't care and I don't want them to be great as well. That's I'm part talking. of yeah. the franchise, yeah. and, that, you know? and by the way, and, and I want it to be great. And if it's not. Myself and my partner Brandon Godden probably hear about it more than anyone else because we're the easy ones. So I went off social media last August. So I always tell Brandon, hey, just let me know just how bad it is. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> it's not bad. We're turning that around because you care. You're a person that you want to have. We want um, it to be great. Yes. Yeah. We, we, we absolutely do. And to play, listen, the people who play this game, they deserve it. They Bingo. absolutely right. deserve it. They, 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 they play this game Thank like you, mad. Charles. They deserve our best efforts. And it deserved the game to be great. And I know the people really want it to be great as well. It's great for the game. It's great for the shield, as are you. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles Davis. Yeah! Thanks, Thanks, guys. Thank you, CD. See you later. See, he's awesome. Yes. Hey. No, he's the nicest guy there is. Imagine just like sitting in a, in a room, you know, and just kind of waiting for something. And Charles Davis walks in and sits down. It's oh. like, oh, my God, everything is – this Thank is going to be – everything just came – he is a – he is an aura guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like everything. I That's assume, how he is in person. Have you met him? Have you been around him in person? I have never been around him in person. I would assume it is the same way, though. Yeah. It's like he, he's like the guy that'll go out of his way, like, hey. I'm like, man, I didn't know we were this. I, I feel very <laughs> good that we you, like, were this close. But I ran into him in a, in a weight room at a, at a hotel once because oh. he, I was doing a college game. He was doing the NFL game on Sunday that yeah, week. And that's really I go into Charles just on the treadmill, super smiley, just running. <laughs> oh, AJ, what's going on? Like, just always that guy. What'd you do? Did you tell him not to talk to you? Is that what you said? No, I think we had a great conversation. Uh, hey, what's going on? With, what's wrong with Madden right now? Who? What's wrong with Madden? Did the last one which suck? One? Yeah, yeah, so, oh, yeah. Stinks. yeah this, I don't, I've never played. Uh, I've never played, yeah. but I do know that anytime Madden gets brought up in discussion, the Madden community mm-hmm. asks me to if I could help them make the game better. And I want to let you know, we're all about helping make yes, the game. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. All about Connor loves Madden. Love is it glitches? What, like does it glitch or what happens? It's the franchise mode, AJ. It's the Madden Ultimate Team mode. The online's a little spotty. I mean, the player ratings. A lot of people think are bullshit. I mean, it's one thing after lo- if I had the time to read the laundry list to you, I would. But I just can't. That's what it is. Well said. Okay. So I, that's a group of people, by the way, that I would like to potentially fight for, get a chance to. Yeah. So Charles Davis, just like on Twitter where he hears about it because he is the mouthpiece, basically, mm-hmm. and he's attainable, and, and no other, but no, no coders are, are attainable. No. We have to ask him about it, and I apologize, but we do have to ask Sometimes him about that, that stuff. Oh, and, you know, he said he's going to help. So. Dak Prescott, Jerry Jones, and Stephen Jones are doing a press conference right now. <laughs> Statements are, and quotes are coming out. Uh, Dak Prescott said he never in his entire life imagined a time when he wasn't going to be a cowboy. Once he put the star on his head, he said, it feels like Dak Prescott's dad was a diehard Dallas Cowboys fan. Dak Prescott loved being a cowboy. This was everything that was being said, and then no deal was done. Now that a deal's done, Dak Prescott says, this is the right fit. Never in a million years did I imagine not being a cowboy once I put on a star. I'm excited to be here and never leave. This is my home. I'm not leaving. And this is only the beginning. Wow. Got four years from now, Dak. I don't know if we should be saying that because the yeah. salary cap's going to be 250 then. So mm-hmm. let's let's go ahead. And this is like the Justin Herbert, I won't wear Adidas thing. Like, let's let's go ahead and slow down a little bit. But $160 million deal for Dak. He's talking. He loves it. Happy this deal got done. Hope they win games. And maybe get to the Super Bowl like you predicted they would last year, AJ. Yeah, you never know. I tell you what, if I... If Dak posts a lot of good workout videos, I may have to pick the Cowboys again this next year for the Super Bowl. I just want to let you know that the Super Bowl picks that I made did not revolve around workout videos. (laughs) No, no. The Super Bowl picks that I made when you picked the Dallas Cowboys or somebody else were actually the Super Bowl. It was actually the Super Bowl. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to try to, you know, throw I got one of them right. I guess I picked the Chiefs too. We don't know if that's true either. Yeah, I don't remember. I thought you had the Bills. Because nobody can get past the second team because you had the Cowboys in a Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not, a, I'm not a prognosticator when it comes to that. 
Okay, so anything you say, we shouldn't fucking listen. Yeah, to. good to know. It, oh, so no, no, it's opinion. good to know. It's up to you to listen. It's your you can listen or you can not listen. You can. It doesn't matter. It's up to you. Can we bring up the poll real quick? We had a big poll today and Ooh, we did not get nice. to it. It's a good one. We got about forty five seconds. This is going to be right up against the shot clock before Chris Mad Dog goes <laughs> home with Mad Dog unleashes. <laughs> what skill position player would you want on your team to add in free agency? Aaron, Juju, Kenny, Will, Hunter. Fifty two thousand votes. Thirty four percent of people said Aaron Jones. He's going to get paid. Yeah. Yep. Fired off by the Packers. Master Week will continue tomorrow. We don't want anybody to get fired, but it seems like it's going to happen. We'll cover that and more with more big guests. one 888 mad Hopefully some of your phone calls. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Chris Mad Dog hey. here on Sirius XM with Mad Dog Unleashed. Hey. We'll come in about six minutes. His show will be 10 to 15 times better than this show. I hope you enjoy it. We'll see you tomorrow. Is it going to be 10 to 15 times or probably if I, I mean, guess? I so. how, do you, how do you gauge that? How do you know? Well, uh, his callers will let us know. Mm -hmm. That's right. They're like the, the Shinigami uh, judges come and let people know. Shinigami, by the way, Shinigami has reached out and apologized for the mispronunciation. Yeah, okay. It wasn't a sabotage of the name because AJ Hawk disrespected him. Yeah. Sure. He actually said, How? He, how? You, you laughed in his face. Yeah. Exactly. How, AJ? He said he was not 65 years old. I did not laugh in his face. Yes, you did. Bro, he's going to shin you in that fucking jaw, and we're going to find out. We're going to find out. Yeah. You know what I mean? 33-year-old 30, Shinigami would absolutely knock me out. I would never see that coming. Now, listen. <laughs> I should have seen this a long time ago, but the shin being a lethal thing for Shinigami. Yeah. Oh, my God. Poetic justice. Pretty Why funny. is that not a shirt right now? Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. As soon as we go, oh, soon as no. we go off air on Sirius, somebody dies. Someone got Shinigami. Oh, no. Shin to the long snapper. <laughs> oh, oh, no. John Weeks, good guy, by the way. Great guy. Unbelievable guy. Used to fire the ball back there. Undersized guy. Carried that as a chip on his shoulder. Texans long snapper, John Weeks. Oh, no was told by the Texans he would not be resigning. It will be an unrestricted free agency later. John, thanks for everything you've done. We can't fucking afford how good you are. Damn, man. Jack I Easterby said... comes in and fucking just fires everybody. <laughs> Damn you, Jack. Hey, Pat, or on a serious question when it comes to long snappers, because I always felt like the number one thing, 99% of the job is getting, having perfect snaps, obviously. We moved on early in my career. We had Rob Davis, old time guy. I've been there forever. He's with, he's with Dallas now with Big Mike. Um, and they, we moved from Rob to another snapper, Brett Good, who was there for a long time. But I'm like, why? They were kind of pushing him out, I think, with Rob. I'm like, why? Who cares? You? I've never seen you have a bad snap in like two or three years together. He's like, I don't know, man. They don't think I can run like other guys. I'm like, I don't care if you can run. Just <laughs> snap the ball perfect. Snap and block. Yeah. Snap and block. Blocking is a big deal. Like, blocking is a rather large Backing deal. Up, being able to back up and take up space as yeah. the center. Being accurate and being able to block, massive ordeal. Uh, if you can go get a tackle too, hey, we're pumped about it. But if you're tackling somebody, we're probably in big problems to yeah. begin with. So for me, those are the two most important. Now, if you can run the dude for the Giants, his dad long snapped. He was making tackles. He was making people fair catch. He was screaming in their face. He was a maniac. He was running down. Her, hers, her, what's his name? Mark Herzog. Mark Herzog is a linebacker for yeah, Boston College yeah. who beat cancer, and he's not yes, a long he snapper. He was I, his teammate. He played for the Giants. Oh, so yeah, okay. yeah, okay. So just on the team, yeah. <laughs> yeah Strahan mean, wasn't the long snapper either. Uh, AJ. Yeah, yeah, that's, neither was Steve Pierre, Weatherford. Jason Pierre, Paul was there. Steve Blackford Weatherford. Was there. Yeah, Steve Weatherford was not the long snapper as well. Steve Weatherford, by the way, is <laughs> shredded. Yeah. Anyways, he used to just run. Trying to communicate. Just trying to communicate and connect, Pat. I think he is, by the way. Yeah. But Big I, time. Father, he, son, and the Holy Ghost. Uh, yeah, I believe. Yeah. Amen. He, energy. There's a guy, by the way. He comes into a room. Oh. I, I assume it's just <laughs> like Charles Davis. you got to have it. But the, when his snaps weren't that accurate, though, that guy. That guy, like whenever he was snapped, we would play against him, and we'd hear him running down the field and yelling. And I'd be like, oh, that'd be awesome, you know, to have like a, a long snapper that's like a gunner out there. That's yeah. really good. But his snaps were a little bit missed. And then as he got older, he started getting dialed in with the snaps. And then uh, I, don't, I don't think the sprinting happened as much, you know. So <laughs> I think you got to be able to do 
two at a high level. And if you only do one at a high level, the other two are low, you probably got nothing. John Weeks was an incredible pass. I mean, he would. And he would run. I think he blew his knee out one time, I think, covering a kick. Undersized guy. He was a very good dude. He was a very, very good dude. Good snapper, too. Still is a good dude. Still is a good snapper. Well, uh, we don't know why Jack Easterby didn't want him in the building. Yeah, true. Man. Classic Easterby. When is Jack Easterby either going to have another sermon that is recorded or just have any kind of public comments? Does he ever speak to the media? Well, the thing about Cal and Jack Easterby is they're they're far from the sha la la no. You know what I mean? They're uh-huh. in the deep end now. You know, those two. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're in the deep end. It is no longer like pitter-patter, I gotta go talk anymore. Oh, no. He is in a deep relationship with the owner of the team. He doesn't fucking dance clown out there anymore, mm-hmm. all right? Well, isn't that his calling? That's what, that's his calling, right? No, his calling now is to make sure he calls God and gets the accurate message for one billionaire that owns the yep. team. Yeah. And that is his calling, by the way, forever, I'd assume. And to be honest, this will be an American success story at some point. The rise of one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, J.C., J.E., Jack Easterby. Mm-hmm. He, God has called upon him to bring a title back home to Houston. Mm-hmm. And that's what needs to be done now. And it will be done. Has he been made president yet of the Texans? They have not announced a new president, right? Okay, so they're just waiting for the right time for when God tells them to. Do you have to have a president announce if you have an owner that is making all decisions? I don't think you have to. I do believe titles are, you know, given out for, you know, they make up positions. Not, I'm not saying president's making up one. But if that owner's making all the decisions, he could just simply add president right over to Ooh, his name. Yeah. I was watching a video this weekend. Um, Shit, this it was a Tim Tebow video, and he said, you don't need a president if you have the ultimate president in Jesus. Tim Tebow said that? Mm-hmm. Can you show us that clip? Can you send it to us? Whoa, 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 whoa. I don't want to get a strike or yeah, anything. No. I think if Jesus and Tebow are in a video, that's going to get a strike on anybody mm-hmm. else. He actually said, you don't need to be the MVP if you have the actual MVP in your life, Jesus. But I th- I felt it worked. So you said Either. president because you thought he maybe got a little political. Yeah. Because oh. yeah. what you said, he said, would have had him dancing a little bit. Yeah. That would have been a very interesting move by old Tim Tebow. Yeah. You said MVP, which makes sense because that's a sports thing. Yeah. You tried to bury Tim Tebow. Yes, right? you did. No, Most valuable just, prayer. Yeah. Trying to tie the t- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, team president. Yeah, team president. Not president of the United States. Correct. What Tim Tebow said in your eyes was, you don't team need a president. team president. Yes. Mm. Okay, not president of the United States, no, 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 potentially. No. Okay. Hey, Timmy should be uh, Dwayne Johnson's vice president. Kim. I missed Young Rock last night. Oh, oh no. no. Why? Oh. Did the alarm not go off for it? What the hell? <laughs> Bro, I was on a talking spaces thing on Twitter. I got muted and kicked out of my own conversation on that. Yeah. Jeez. Why? I don't know. What's it's that? called My Spaces. You got friends? <laughs> no, it's uh, top eight. Yeah, kind of, actually. Very oh, interesting. This, There's like 1,500 people in there. <laughs> I, what's that, AJ? Is that disc, is this your Discord situation? No, this, come on, Discord. Oh, this is the Twitter's version of Clubhouse. Yeah, yeah. Clubhouse on Twitter. Mm-hmm. I, I finally got it last night. Oh, <laughs> shit. You need Raycon, dude. You see this shit? This thing fucked us. Stop yeah. We should be good. Right. Time in. Okay. Car. <laughs> Car. All right. Does it always take that long? No, I normally I do it off away from the microphone. Yeah. <laughs> These things with this thing in the back, I mean, it is a it is a bunch of wild uh, 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 rays coming out of this thing. Mm-hmm. I'll tell you what, when the ear thing talks to the mouth thing, Oof. oh, mm-hmm. my God, they start getting into a bickering conversation. Yeah. And that thing gets loud, and it blows out both of my eardrums. That's why I'm looking for a Bluetooth connection. I thought I'd say it on a show, by the way. Somebody would give me an answer. Nobody gave me an answer because it doesn't exist. That's something that Elon needs to make stat. Mm-hmm. Or every problem we have that hasn't been figured out, I immediately go, fucking Elon. What are we waiting on, bub? Mm-hmm. Come on, figure Ooh. it out. Come on. You jump in the game. No, no, no. Start no. trailblazing. There's no reason for me to get into that game. No, 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 no. This is like Diggs trying to get Tim Debo under politics. Yeah. Have you ever judged Judy Gift, Elon? What? The time thing? Mm-hmm. Judge Judy, like 90 million a year or something. Yeah, oh, she, yeah. I think, believe she just retired. 
<gasps> Hell of a run, Formally. Judge. Hell of a Thank run. you, Judge. Thank, Thank you, Judge. Judge. There's so many fucked up situations in our world that she figured out for them. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's very nice of her to do that. Who, who paid her? Like, what network gives her that money? So she owned the show. So then it gets syndicated. Uh, so every syndicated channel pays her like a rent, basically, to run the show. The, uh, she got rich off of that model. Ellen DeGeneres got rich off of that model. Mm -hmm. Seinfeld. Seinfeld. Seinfeld, yeah. Doc Phil. People that own... I think they I model? think they hired Doc. I don't oh, know if yeah. Dr. Phil I bet Oprah Oprah had to own part of Dr. Phil's show because it, it came from being on her show. It's a good idea. It's a nice weapon to own your shit, you know? Yeah. I'd say. That's why they don't let them own it anymore. If you're an actor, like you have no chance of owning a show that you're gonna be on. Yeah, it's um you know, if there's a reason to do those types of deals, like let's not get crazy. Like there's been people that have been completely independent that have gotten broken the fuck off. For those mm -hmm. deals rogan the money the money that i have heard that he has made that has not been reported that is oh my god i could see how you would give up the rights to your shit like that he but didn't it, though he just it's like a three or five year licensing deal he didn't give up ownership yeah but kind of right for five years he kind of gives up ownership of the yeah, thing okay for five years yeah yeah they're, you're they're, not selling it you're not doing the you know what i mean like you, you the somebody else is making decisions mm -hmm, for things yeah. and i mean at the beginning it was the censorship yeah, conversation you, what you can't talk about mm -hmm. yeah so it's like you kind of give up some of those when you don't own it or whatever but there's a reason you make that decision it's like okay I'll, i think for that amount we can do that but back, like the the reality tvs those are my favorite those shows would do Jersey Shore. Jersey Shore would make so much money for Viacom and MTV. It was so huge. And then you got Snooki at a club in Morgantown, West Virginia for 1500 bucks or something like that. It's like, you're on the biggest show on television. What's going on? Uh, they don't pay anything for those. Like, you know what I mean? Damn. It's like one of those situations where, you know, that was kind of a little bit of an eye opener, I think. Like, oh, you got you to gotta own the show. But there's a chance your show is going to suck then if you own it. And you know? that's where their social media has kind of helped them out, right? Like, yeah. especially Snooki and that. Especially nowadays, I guess that would help out immensely. Like the Bachelor people, yeah. I assume they don't make much money on the Bachelor. Oh, no, no. way. It's what you make outside of it. You get mm, marketing yeah. deals, you get all kinds of stuff. Well, with the uh, COVID, you know, they haven't been able to do the club tours. Ooh. True. Yikes. Not yeah. good. That's a big asset. Is the situation out of jail? Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, fucking, is. I wish Mitt was here. Oh, yeah. Mitt right. was crying right. because of the situation last week, mm -hmm. two weeks Wait. ago. Wait, why? Tears. He said the situation was so. He said the situation. He actually like came full circle. It was a beautiful moment. <laughs> he apologized. <laughs> he apologized. <laughs> they accepted him. I mean, it was. Wait, to who? What is, what is he talking about? He cried, dude. So he posted. He take. He took a screenshot or a selfie and posted it, and he said. uh uh, something about tears for Jersey Shore, and I was wait, like, "Wait, wait, hold on! Oh, situation was crying on a video. No, 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 no. Mitt, Mitt took a selfie photo of himself, tweeted it out, and said, "Like, uh, <laughs> got emotional over the Jersey Shore tonight." And I was like, "I watched the Jersey Shore, pretty prevalent. What are you fucking crying about?" And I, he he went into this long diatribe about how Mike's situation has come around full circle and they forgave him and he apologized he went to jail and he's, he was kind of getting choked up while yeah, yeah. describing it so they're still thriving situation is out of jail you know he he's doing his thing and he's got people crying about him and it's good for them nobody could have seen this coming he was the, by far the most insufferable uh, insufferable human on television for some time now he's got this? people crying and I do believe the situation passed Kim Kardashian at 1.4 highest paid reality TV star. Yeah, he like held out. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Mitt posted this this picture of himself. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, come on, I don't know what's going on. Listen, we don't need to bully Mitt. All right? oh, I'm not, no, I'm saying I give hey, Mitt credit. I'm talking about the zoom in on the face. Right <laughs> yeah. now. that was tough for the kid. Don't you? I mean, I guess it's kind of baffling why you would do that. Like I. If you are going to get emotional, I, my first thought is not to take a screenshot of myself and put it out there for everybody. I would like to say hey, that I'm okay, to him, though. I'm okay with him sharing his feelings. Me too. I, I, that's what I'm saying. Credit to him. The guy what you're saying. Braver, he's braver and tougher than me. I'm not going to post a selfie video of myself crying. You're I, right. I get emotional all the time. I just don't put it out there for people. Okay, you're right. But what I think what I am uh, talking about is strictly what made him cry mm -hmm. you know like, yeah yeah the that cars. is that is where that's not that it's not that no i'm not shocked i mean i'm not shocked but what made him cry you watch jersey shore i do i understand situation situation is very situational and can make you emotional at times i just never thought that was the case no i don't know about that, was that. A fun show. i mean i'll tell you what 
I want to know how Something his arms are so damn big. Well, he works out, dude. Gym tan laundry. But like the the thought of uh, Paul E. D. Like if something was happening to Paul E. D. Maybe I get you know what I mean. Yeah, little, yeah. Maybe I get a little little couple. Did you? He's the only were one. you emotional? Um, were you emotional when Snooky ate that right hand from the dude in the bar? <laughs> oh man, I was. I was not happy. That about was that. a tough week. Yeah. I wanted to travel to Levels. I think no. What was the place called? Uh, Karma. Karma. Yeah. yeah. I, uh -huh. I wanted to travel over there and see what was going on. Yeah, myself. as you should. You know what I mean. Despicable. It wasn't Italian enough, though. That shore down there Sorry. is pretty Italian. Mm -hmm. Does Lombardi live there? Oh, yeah. yeah. Lives on the shore. He lives at yeah. the end of the road. Really? <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, the Jersey Shore. Jeez, look at his arms. The, further, arms. Down, the further down the road you live, the more Italian you are. Lombardi lives at the end of the road yeah. in Jersey Shore. <laughs> yeah. Mike, the situation was absolutely yoked for a long time. That guy stirred the pot for a long oh, time. Oh, man, he was the best. He had the uh, neck brace on. He was full <laughs> heel. Yeah. A couple he was weeks. full heel. The fact that he had the range in reality television to go from full heel to making Mitt cry, maybe we need to show him a little bit more respect. True. Uh, Brought the house right. down at the Trump roast. Yeah. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, no, I did see that. <laughs> I got so much money. Mm-hmm. All-time <laughs> classic. Mm -hmm. But... <laughs> Maybe he did that on purpose, you know? Yeah. yeah. He was trolling. Yep. All part of the gig. Let's go to Dan. Dan, let's talk about the NHL. Dan, what's going on? This is the first time NHL has ever shown up in the caption of a phone <laughs> caller. What do you want to talk about? Dan. NHL finally gets a chance to be talked about, and it's muted. Here we are. Dan. This is the state of the league. Dan ESPN now, right? right. Seven-year deal. Nick, is that what it is? Seven years? Hey, thanks for your call, Dan. We'll talk about the NHL now. <laughs> <laughs> Nick, seven-year deal with ESPN. That's a big deal. People are going to be able to watch hockey again. This is good news. It's great news, Pat. It's back. Seven-year deal. No financial terms have been discussed yet. There are rumors floating around that it's potentially between two and two and a half billion. Okay, let's Ooh, go. Maybe we can invest money. We're talking real stuff. money here. Congrats to the NHL. And, and I do believe we have tried to lighten up the area that Nick speaks from, right? Yeah. We His have tried that. Are looking nice. Are they? I well, mean, I, well, it's, wait, is the side light not on today? No, it's laptop. On. Oh, they no. need to be readjusted. Like, they're here. There is light. It just needs to be angled properly. Is there one right there in front of you right down there? Half close that laptop. You got, like, the bank the bank note thing where you put the twisty. Yeah. It's right yeah. in front of you right yeah. there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you turn it towards you, and you're fucking, you can't see. It's oh, so oh. you'd rather not be seen than you see. I respect that because you got a job to do. Thank okay. you. Okay. Anyways, the NHL was much like Nick, not visible for a long time. Mm -hmm. Now it is going to ESPN for a seven-year deal. But how much? How much on the big time ESPN and how much on ESPN Plus? It doesn't matter as long as it's available. I, I think that's the biggest thing is just being able to find a game because mm -hmm. now it's like it, it's you know on March Madness you got to find out where True TV is yep. and you got to do all this. That's what it's like for the NHL. It's like impossible to find games if they go to ESPN. If it's going to be on ESPN Plus, at least you know where it's at. The NHL had its own app, I guess, for a long time that people were pushing and all this shit. Seven-year television streaming and media rights deal with ABC, ESPN, ESPN Plus, and Hulu. Exclusive coverage of Stanley Cup Final on ABC in four of the seven years. Hall, uh, half of Stanley Cup playoffs on ABC and ESPN each season. 25 exclusive national regular season games. 75 national regular season games will stream exclusively on both ESPN Plus and Hulu. Out-of-market streaming package, formerly NHL.TV, okay. available only as part of ESPN Plus subscription. Okay, Ooh. so everything's getting bundled into an area. At least we know where the hell it is. I like that this is happening. I'm thankful for ESPN doing this for the NHL. Uh, what was the money? It's not anywhere near confirmed yet. This is speculation. It's being speculated at $2 billion. For how long? Seven years. Okay, so the NFL is getting $2.6 billion, allegedly, from ESPN per year. Uh, for seven years, the NHL is getting two-some billion from the same company. Uh, obviously, this is good for the NHL. Seems like this is going to be good for ESPN. I just like the fact that hockey is going to be findable. That is yeah. big news, yeah. AJ. Well, it's good, too, because since ESPN has it, now they're going to run it more on Sports Center. All their shows First are going to try take. to promote ESPN yeah. Plus. Get up, everything. Oh, is Greeny a hockey guy? No. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, no. 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 The bloodbath oh. continues here on Massacre Week. NFL update oh. at my sports update. Oh, Giants good, are man. releasing guard Kevin Zeitler, saving $12 million in cap. Still one of the top guards in the league. Zeitler had a large $14.5 million cap hit in 2021, but he was easily the most 
proven and consistent player on their own line should have a hot market. Let's go back to Tommy in New York calling about Daniel Jones oh, yeah. next year. They lose their best offensive lineman on a bad offensive line due to a salary cap situation in New York. Kevin Zeitler, dead as a New York Giant, AJ. Zeitler's good. I played with Zeitler in Cincinnati. He hit me in our first day of OTAs with his head and made me question if I was going to be able to continue to play football. That was the guy. You have told that story before about how you had a mo- – maybe not a welcome to the NFL moment, but a, hey, maybe I'm done with the NFL moment. It was him. Um, he hits the market here. Offensive linemen are always hard to find. Yes. I would assume he's going to demand some cash. Somebody will be able to set that up over the next couple of years. Uh, Masker Week continues, AJ. Masker Week continues. It's a shame. And he was traded there, too, from uh, when he was, was he on Cleveland for a little while. Uh, he, uh, yes. Man, sorry, Giants fan in the back said he was a part of the Odell Beckham trade. Yep, he was. He's gone now. Damn. Wow. Jesus Christ, he, Daniel Jones. He might be able to. Uh, I think Zeitler can bench 950 pounds, probably. <laughs> He's one of those guys. Is that a world record? Probably. I mean, I feel like I, the, how Zeitler is and was when I was around him, like whatever you put on the bar, he would just do it and not question it. Ever. Okay, so it's like, yeah, I'm not going to lose to this bar. That's how he yeah. – That's how he. Can, yeah. there are guys that are like that, that are like – I won't say they're picky with how much you put on there. You can put a lot on there, but, hey, let's not – if I lose this bar, it's going to ruin my day. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Like there's guys that are like that who will blow out their back mm-hmm. instead of letting that thing fucking potentially – crash down on their chest and somebody have to lift it and people see them. (laughs) There are some people out there. I'm happy to hear that an offensive guard is like that. That's a guy maybe we go ahead and get on to some teams that need them stacked. Mm -hmm. You look at the Raiders. Now who knows if they have any money to spend on anything. They cut all of their offensive linemen the other day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because they paid him too much to begin with, didn't they? Did you hear Lombardi just go ham on John Gruden, by the way? Awesome. I I actually told him. What did he say? He said, John... (laughs) What do you say? John John motivates himself by convincing himself that he doesn't have any good players. But <laughs> yeah. those good players are all the players that he tries to bring in and overpay, and then he, he's done with them by the time season starts. He already hates these players and doesn't think they're good. He said John is a great coach, great offensive coordinator, but he doesn't see the big pic- uh, picture personnel-wise or whatever. Now, I don't know if that's true. I've not done the research. I did not expect Lombardi to come out with the AK, though. Like He was no. he was saying it as like a matter of fact. Like, yeah, guys thinks it. Personnel, that's just the case. Go ahead, Diggs. There's an update on the, the actual numbers for the NHL just came out. Okay. Uh, seven years, $2.8 billion, $400 million a year. Ooh. Hey, congrats. It was, it was $200 million from NBC, I believe, so the NHL gets double that. Wow. Maybe Sidney Crosby will be able to be seen by the entire country that the greatest hockey player of all time exists right now, and a lot of people don't know that. Uh, hopefully, Get Up will talk about that starting tomorrow. Yeah. ABC ESPN will pay around $2.8 billion over seven years for the rights to the A package. The Post has learned via Andrew Marshawn. He also put a plus in there. I assume that's ESPN Plus as well. What do you have, Nick? So I wanted to mention uh, the A package there. This is half of the NHL TV rights. They're going to sell the other half to someone else, most likely probably NBC see again to double up basically okay oh, a little double dippy right. how we doing well it looks like double the 200 which is what i just said is currently paying. it really isn't i'm told nbc is paying 240 million for this year while espn already had a pre-existing deal through its bam acquisition oh. for 100 million making the increase more moderate at 60 million This makes sense for the NHL because it will now do a second deal with either the incumbent NBC or Fox or a wild card. Maybe Bezos gets in a game where they will get the upside of the increase with the two partners. Andrew Marchand reports in a very sophisticated manner. So the NHL is making money. They're going to be visible. That's all I read right there. Let's go. Hopefully they have enough money in the... uh... You know, the pool to bring back the fucking Levy Lounge with uh, Barry Melrose. Barry Melrose is going to be rolled back out there. We need him back. We talked about that last night on the uh, Twitter Spaces thing, actually. Yeah. We did talk about Barry Melrose last night. Yeah, apparently Barry's already been hiding on ESPN+. Plus. So Barry still does TV? Oh, yeah. God damn it. See, that's what I'm I talking mean, about. You promoted. can't watch games. You can't watch Barry. I mean, the NHL has a problem with promotion. Barry's on late night on Sports Center sometimes, too. They do around the ice. Really? There 1, 2 a.m.? Yeah. Really? That's good. That's Eastern time, where most of the hockey fans are, they have no idea he even yeah. fucking exists. No clue. Deep asleep at that point. What's that, Nick? So 
bump that up at least an hour. You know? Yeah, we could do midnight. Yo, get that pinstripe suit. That's SPP there. Yeah. The SPT, SPP at, at midnight. Oh yeah, yeah, it's SVP, and I, I got it. I don't stay up that late anymore because it's not season. During the season, it was a lot of me and SVP at night closing out my night together. But now I've, I fell into a pretty nice little routine actually. Nice. All right. I'm getting to bed at a good time, falling asleep, you know, doing the whole thing. Got my CBD PM. Nice. Here we go. That nice. is pretty nice. Pretty nice. Wonderful. Last night I smoked an exorbitant amount. A regrettable amount of marijuana. Oh, really? <laughs> Did Regre- you? Regrettable. Yeah, regrettable. I, I took a trip to Denver, obviously, to do this. I sure. went to this at yeah. my house, and yeah. then I flew back or whatever. But Check on me. It was... <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. It was a regrettable amount. Man. Hey, how's Val? Hey, Val's good. Val's good. She meets her... Uh, the surgeon doctor, which I thought was getting set up this last time before the emergency scan test thing happened, and... Complete scare. We should be getting the results back, I guess, here in the next couple of days. Uh, hopefully that will confirm what the vets had led to, which is basically hopeful news that the cancer had not spread throughout the entire body. She meets her vet, to, uh, the surgeon, on Tuesday. I believe she's getting surgery the next week or the week after that to remove the uh, tumor, small tumor that has grown off the area of the previous cancer area so i think we got this thing contained i think they're going to get it out of there she's going to have to wear a cone which is uh, yeah. ooh, not no cons- fun elon hey elon figure out the fucking dog cone dude yeah <laughs> my dog is so miserable with that thing on you you might as well you might as well just trap a dog into a solitary confinement oh. cell with yeah. that that oh. he runs into things it digs into the shoulder blades mm-hmm. can't scratch miserable the entire time you got to tie it on if elon could figure that out i'd be very grateful yes. i'm sure it's top of his list should be, should be. made a fucking flamethrower dude yeah. yeah can we not get some more you, Do know? you think elon knows what a dog is probably had one back on his planet yeah mm-hmm. so what do, you, what do you think the alien's best friend is you know instead of the man's best friend i wonder what the alien just a little bot dog like one of those ones that are up at mit where they're jumping yeah. around uh, wally. Maybe. what's his name wally oh that's that movie yeah one of those little things by Pinks the way trash i got a full dm uh, speaking of names like wall e there you reminded me of doovy oh mm-hmm. yeah this son of a bitch <laughs> what's that i got a dm from him what did you say you remember the entire twitter exchange where he was explaining what yeah. his name was yeah, yeah. Remember that? Of course. I remember. That's why it's dope. Uh-oh. And told me it was Doovy. Doovy, excuse yeah. me. Now I got this. Hey, I appreciate the uh, the love on the show or whatever, DM. From, to be exact, people have called me Dove, as Kyle just did most of my life. My actual given name is supposed to be Doovy, as I said, but I do actually prefer it to be pronounced Dove, to be honest. Oh. Well, Too make late. up your mind, Doovy. How does he spell Doovy? He said, I gave you the actual pronunciation last time for the sake of clarity. Both are true at the end of the day, but if we go by preference, it's Dove. I wrote back, Jesus. <laughs> it's too late, dude. This fucking guy. <laughs> it's Doovy now. Listen, Doovy's great at what he does. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, don't be giving me the full phonetical Twitter bullshit. Figure it out. If you want to be called <laughs> something else. Yeah. I like to show respect, uh, you know? Yeah, honor his parents, what they named you. Doovy. He's like, yeah, actually, what you were fighting for was wrong, because I actually hate that fucking name. Yeah, fucking <laughs> call me Dove or Dave if you want. <laughs> we're going to have to do Dave now. Dave Kleiman. <laughs> <laughs> Dab. He gives us a lot of information. If he was to block, oh, yeah. we would have to, if he was to block all of us so we couldn't use his stuff, we would have to create burners to keep up with him mm-hmm. so he didn't find us. He, he breaks a lot of news, but what just happened in my DMs with old Doovy and what happened publicly on Twitter where he was trying to, you know, do the whole thing. I can't have it. Nope. Can't do it. Hey, why did or or uh smash an egg on his face a couple of days ago? You know, I did see that and uh I miss it. You know that game Jimmy Fallon plays is like, is it a hard boiled egg or an actual egg? Bingo. You know what I mean? You get mm-hmm. to do that thing and I think every time it's you know, an actual egg, and it goes splat. It's like a good little pop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So Orlovsky was like, well, I have to admit that I was wrong, but also get a good little pop. I'm going to go ahead and slaughter this egg off my forehead. And he did. He did, by the mm-hmm. way. Oh, yeah. He went for it. The fact that I like is he went for it. It wasn't like a, uh, you know, sometimes those things can happen, and it doesn't break, and they got to do it again. He really went for it. I have no idea why it was, and I would have recommended against it if he did ask me. 
Oh, so he oh so he was putting egg on his face because he was wrong about one of his takes. Yeah, you got egg on your face, Dak. I know, but what was the take? Do we know? Dak, the good, great money thing, yeah. not going to get paid, the whole thing. Oh, he said he did. He say he wasn't going to get paid, or he shouldn't get. Paid? Well, he came on this show to clarify what he was saying. He basically said that you can't pay good quarterbacks great money if yeah, you want to operate or something like that. That was his entire take. Dallas obviously killed him for it. All the Dallas Cowboys mm -hmm. fans. And by the way, a lot of people are on his side for this thing. And I assume what led from that is Dan convincing himself they weren't going to pay him. He probably said, no, he's not going to get the money, not going to get the money. Then it happened. I'm not sure, but I'm just thinking how it could have escalated into the actual real egg on his face, which is kind of clever now that we think of it like that. Yeah, hey, good for Dan. He created a moment. I'm talking about it. I remember. I watched. You saw a clip. You didn't watch. Yeah. You're right. I, I pulled a you. I pulled a Pat. What? I said I saw the thing, but I, in reality, I just, a, a glancing audio thing bounced off a wall and hit me at one point. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course, yeah. I saw the thing. What do you mean? Yeah. Well, it's funny you say that because the murder among Mormons, quite a plot twist. <laughs> yeah. The thing that I, I said. Oh, how did it end? The guy that I complimented yeah. turned out bad guy. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh, geez. It was quite a twist. I mean. They have a guy talking on that thing that talks like this. As an adult, this is how he talks. Yeah. Okay, he talks like this the entire time in the in the uh, the interviews, the confessionals. He's talking like this, and it's all real dreary and slow. I mean, it will put you to sleep. So I got an hour and a half into that thing. I get it. Okay, I don't mm -hmm. need to watch the rest. Turns out it takes quite a turn. Okay. Okay. Everybody that you think is uh, maybe. The victim in a sense, it's like, oh, wait, wait, this guy actually probably, the, I mean, it gets, what? I mean, no spoilers, but it takes quite a turn. All right, I'm in. Here we go. You can tell us. You can tell us. It's not going to ruin it. You can tell us exactly what happened. I'll still watch. Well, I think you're an anomaly in that particular case. Is this a documentary? It's a three-parter docu-series, I believe. Okay. My wife just texted me. She's going to say something. There was a window open at the church. Handle was broken off. Oh, uh oh. People breaking into the church. This is exactly what Smithers was talking about. Yeah. The goddamn riffraff around there. <laughs> and now well, we got to deal with it. There's something in the field, too, right? I mean, that wasn't the only thing. Tim found fish, a, be a bucket of fish in the field. It's like, is that somebody threatening our life? Yeah, yeah. It's a Sicilian like, message. Sleeping with dead. the fishes. Trying to attract bears. Alive or dead? In Z. The fish? Yeah. Well, when Tim found them, they were dead. Oh, I'm not sure if they exactly. were alive when they were dumped in the middle of the field. That we oh, I thought you yard. said they were in a bucket of water. No, they threw. The, it was like they threw a bucket. Oh, out. that's not good. Full of dead that's fish. what I'm saying. What's going on? The place is cursed. I don't give a fuck. Jesus moved out. <laughs> did he? <laughs> See ya. What kind of fish? Uh, Tim, Tim did not elaborate. I do not believe it was the uh, smallmouth bass because those things are feisty. They yeah. are. Mm -hmm. They're the crocodile. Probably walleye. Catfish? Huh? Probably a couple of walleye. You think? Yeah, those retention ponds up there typically stock with walleye. Uh -huh. <laughs> this is a Big Ten angler. That's right. <laughs> That's right. I tried that bait game on uh, virtual reality. Boy, it stinks. Yeah. <laughs> you see the fish. You actually see the fish you're going to catch, and you just put it right in front of them, and then, yeah, all right, here we go. Pretty good at this. And then it swims the opposite direction. you got to wait, and then you got to bring it back. And go, Is that what fishing is? Uh, okay, so they have no. not figured it out yet. It stunk. It was not fun at all. I mean, I caught a big-ass fish, and I got to hold it up, you know? Mm -hmm. I tried to take a photo with it, and it exited out of the whole game. <laughs> Fishing is one thing that won't really translate to VR because the whole point about fishing is just sitting outside. Yeah, you know, yeah. Yeah, it's like hunting. Like exactly. Mm -hmm. Tim took me and Jay hunting, and Jay just Jay just slept in the woods, and I just I just sat in the woods. Yeah, yeah. fishing's way better. Uh, See, I disagree completely. Love fishing. Yeah. I no. hate it. You can sit on a boat. You got the sun. You got some beer. You got some music, and then you just wait to maybe catch a fish. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you ain't getting any bites if you got music going. Yeah, yeah. What, what type of fish you catching? The fucking oh, stupid yeah. ones. Catch Tim them. texted in and He'll said, uh, "Tyler, you are completely wrong." Um, <laughs> and they are white bass. They were white bass. Okay, so they don't <laughs> stock it with walleye around here. Well, I think that is Tyler. Alaskan fish, I believe. Is Tyler. Tyler. walleye? Well, I know typically a lot of those places <laughs> they do stock them, you know, with walleye or you know some uh, rainbow <laughs> trout, even. <laughs> Tyler the angler. <laughs> Tyler. Hey, put a pond in. Why don't you put a pond in out there? And do you show know how much show. work a pond is? I accidentally no, bought a house. No, dig a hole. Connor could do it in like in a week. We Absolutely. No, the upkeep. Where's the shovel? No, because you gotta have a fountain. You gotta have a fountain to keep the water moving. Then you gotta clean Easy. the. No, it's not. I've had. Do you have a pond? 
No, but I it know you sucks. could you could hire a company to take care of it just like you do your pool. By the way, pool people showed up at the house today, this morning. Really? Really. Just out of nowhere, just did a little popping. Yeah. They're right. trying to remind us, like, hey, you're, it's about time to pay. The yeah. sun's out. I don't know if I like hey, that. Weather's getting nice, Pat. I uh, think we need that annual fee, right? Yeah, That's... You use the pool, what, four or five times every year? <laughs> Maybe three? Never hold your nose, though. It's Actually, to... you have to upcharge you for that. It's much. It's actually a lot harder work when you don't swim in it, you know, because we calculate in for human sweat and stuff. And mm -hmm. with your pool, that that never is the case. So this year, only triple the price. Uh -huh. oh, what a deal! Thank you. You already know the gate code, so no problem. Sign right here. I'm gonna hire anybody else. Let's go to Josh in Minnesota, and they know it. <laughs> I bought a fucking swordfish out of Lake Minnetonka. Yeah. You fish on Lake Minnetonka? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, oh, my well, God. You you're missing out. Now. You got to do it. got to get in one of them cabins out there. Yeah. <laughs> say, say, question for you. Hey. You, uh, I was listening to Charles Davis talk about uh, Shanahan and uh, and then Mac. he ran on to talk about Trey Lance. That's a good idea. What about uh, the Vikings taking Trey Lance? He's a Minnesota native. Oh. And then maybe Kirk Cousins going back to, to visit with Kyle Shanahan. Oh. On, the Niners. And then Jimmy G goes over to the Patriots. Yeah. Josh, is, is that a genius idea or what? <laughs> I'm hoping so. And then and then Vikings <laughs> save on their cap struggles too. Hey, M I N N E S S O D A. Oh, okay. Minnesota. Minnesota. We hate Iowa. They have a good time over there. I thought everybody fished in that Lake Manitonka, though. I mean, think yeah. so. Isn't that, that's just where you have your boat parties. You don't fish much, do they? No, they do have boat parties over there, but the sun's only out for like a week or two weeks out there, and they got to go yeah. ice fishing mostly out there. Mm -hmm. You know, Minnesota gets cold. Lando Lakes, though. Lando Lakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Good butter. Not too shabby. The thing right. about Kirk Cousins going to San Fran, Jimmy G going to New England, and then Minnesota having a, a rookie quarterback – I mean, that's conceptually, it makes sense in my head. I have no idea how it would work with picks and trades and everything like that, but I like what we're thinking here. I like that that is possible at this moment on March 10th, 2021. That thought is like, yeah, could happen. Let's see what happens. Doesn't it feel like anything is possible right now? Like with Russell coming out, like there's like, hey, who knows what's going like, on? If you could dream it up, you feel like there's a GM or somebody's like, I can make that. I can make that happen. I, you know, Bud Dupree should be an Indianapolis coach, shouldn't he? <laughs> Bud, uh, Bud, Bud Dupree feels like. A, if you watched him play, now granted, this is him getting healthy and coming back exactly. He should be much higher up on the wish list for a lot of teams, I think. He was a game wrecker for Pittsburgh. When he left, they felt it. It was a much different defense when he was gone. That's a guy who I think, Hunter Henry's another guy. Mm -hmm. It kind of sucks for these guys that are becoming free agents in this year, like massively. They're all potentially going to sign one-year deals so they, they can hit actual free agency at some point maybe, which makes it even more interesting because we might see a bunch of ridiculous shit happen. Well, and that's why the Patriots are in, you know, the people with cap are in play for everybody because they're the only teams that can actually pay these guys the deals that they want. Listen, Tommy's not here. It won't be miserable anymore. We got money. Let's fucking play. We'll bring Jimmy G. We got Ernie up here. We'll fucking we know everybody's signs, logos, signals. We know everybody's business, so we got cameras everywhere. Come win for one year and then go get paid somewhere else. So they won't, or we'll push you out like you're fucking Tom Brady. <laughs> <laughs> he got pushed out in New England, right? Yeah. That's going to be the narrative forever? Oh, yeah. yeah. At some point, Tom and Bill are going to talk and then publicly, and that's when it'll get settled. It'll yeah. But at the same time, like when you hear some of the interviews, like some stuff that Clyde says, it seems like Tom like saw Peyton do it. And he was like, well, I just he was curious about it, too. I just think it was. Oh, Jesus. It was Christ. just All a right. splitting of the road. All right. Last call. Pepe in Mexico. What's going Very on? Situation. Oh, what's going Toretto on? Toretto and Walker. You know, Peyton got cut. Tom Brady got forced out. Which one's worse? Hmm. He opted out of the two years left on his contract. But... Hello. Tom quit. Oh, yeah. I would never say that. You're saying Tom quit on New England? I would never say that. That is what you were alluding to. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying he uh, he had two more years on his contract, right? And he chose to decline. No, he had a player's option. Yeah. And you guys could have paid him more money in that option. That could have been the conversation. And we still had to pay him $13 million last year, you know? <laughs> And by the way, the compensatory pick for Tom Brady is the best that it's ever been, by the way, mm -hmm. the Patriots got. 
you give away, <laughs> you lose a quarterback who opts out of a contract, he goes on to win the Super Bowl as starting quarterback for that team. I would assume in return the NFL is going to have to give a pickup for that. And Gronk had two touchdowns in that Super Bowl, so we might get you know two of those nice little compensatory picks. Oh, you could put those together, maybe get up and get a – a quarterback, huh? Oh, oh, oh no. Uh-oh. Everybody's talking about Jimmy G, but what if it's one of these young guys that are yeah. going to come in there? Here comes Bill. <laughs> Billy Foxborough. <laughs> Pepe, orale cabrones. Orale cabrones. Happy Wednesday. How are you all doing today? Fantastic. Getting a little tired at this point. That's why it's a great time to have Pepe on. Show's about to wrap up. Might head home. Maybe hit his five iron tonight. One seven, then six. Maybe the five iron. What do you got going on, Pepe? Hey, let's pump you up. I just have one clarification and a very important question. Here we go. Just to clarify, this court, we're not doing anything illegal. The only illegal in there might be me, so just to clarify. Jeez, Pepe. Pepe. And quick question. Thank you for the clarification. Quick question that we need to know about you. It might be your future league. What do you think about the XFL and the CFL partnership? Hey, Pepe, great question there, and I appreciate you. Um, The Rock buying the league that he was he was cut from you know up there in saskatoon he got cut from that one team in the cfl and by the way gumpy and i had this conversation earlier we shared stories about how gumpy and i were absolutely murdered by canadians whenever we talked about the cfl potentially being dead now the CFL is going to potentially partner with the XFL to bring it back to life. That's good news for everybody, mm-hmm. okay? This isn't happening, I don't think, until 2023. they got to figure this whole thing out. But Dwayne Johnson, okay, Dewey, Tomas, mm-hmm. DJ, President Dwayne Johnson, that we're going to call him at some point, him getting in there, buying the team alongside his ex-wife, who was his business partner, buying the league that he got cut from. This is classic Dwayne Johnson, keeping jobs alive, yeah. keeping leagues alive. Keeping hope alive. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank, thank you for doing this. And thank you to Danny Garcia, XFL chairwoman and owner. Yeah, that's his ex-wife, right? Yeah, they're business partners together. and uh, Nobody's going to work harder, they said. And nope. what they meant by that is we're going to go save a whole goddamn league. And it's just, uh, the XFL and the CFL. Yeah. They meant two teams or two leagues at that point. So how do you think they, are they setting this up that where they will eventually merge these two leagues together I do. and create some kind of – I don't know how it would work, but – Super internet. Maybe they just call it the IFL, International Ooh. Football League. WFL. You know what I mean? Back. We'll drop the X. We'll drop the C. We'll bring in the I. This is International Football League. Get a team. In Europe. Yeah. Yeah. There's that England team that they've been wanting. Then you, all, you go to the NFL, by the way, and say, hey, you're going to break us off a little bit because we're going to become a feeder here. Okay? That's what we're going to do. If you're Dwayne Johnson who, you know, can shake those hands and can charm those people. Yeah. He's talking to Roger Goodell about a feeder system, about working it, working harder than everybody else. It's too bad hey, Young Rock's going to have to go on the back burner with all this work. It won't. I didn't watch episode last night. I'm sure it was fucking a masterpiece. I think people are saying it fucking stinks now. <laughs> Who sure said that? A strong start. <laughs> Who said that? Well, you look at all the, uh, you know, the Rotten Tomatoes, the IMDB score, kind of all that stuff starting to come back down to earth a little I bit. I do believe those numbers are, are sinking like Zito in a river. Oh, oh man. Zito. He's not Zito's even on here. vacation. She could have said Boulder. Jeez. Well. Well. What? Well, what? Asia, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, I'm sorry, if you're the XFL, you don't want to move oh, that hand man. Oh, okay. Wow. Fucking Zito's a good guy. Yeah, yeah. he's a great guy. Oh, what are you talking about? What are you talk- about Zito talking loves about? Young Rock, by the way. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, he says he does. <laughs> he also missed last week's episode, correct? Yeah, so. No. So the two biggest fans have both. Look at this. This is season one, got an 88%. Go, on to, the- go to fucking IMDb. Oh, so wasn't that nine, the nation wasn't here. that ninety four at the beginning of the well, season? The audience scores have gotten even better. The user ratings two hundred sixty seven people, right? And then the critics have it at twenty six, <laughs> but the tomatoes are at eighty eight, dude. Fucking get off it. Fresh. It is fresh. Mm. Vince McMahon just got introduced last week. This show is only going to get better. Oh. Is his character pretty God sweet? Damn it, bro. Um, his character. You, I did not know that The Rock's grandma was also a wrestling promoter, or promoter in Hawaii. Oh, oh, another yeah. one in the business. <laughs> yeah, so he's great. Okay. Seven bucks. I did it, not. <laughs> was Vince McMahon accurately depicted? Do you, do you know? I, I didn't know Vince McMahon at the time, but it did not seem to have enough, you know. Okay. But 
<laughs> the Rock is not. Yeah, there enough of that. Uh, but I do yeah. believe over the next couple episodes, there's a chance that, that 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 could all turn. You know. Okay. I feel like everybody's been depicted pretty accurately from what I've been hearing on the internet. You know what I mean? I saw a bunch of people saying that they hired some random fucking slap dick to play uh, Vince McMahon, and I didn't. So I just I, I haven't seen it yet. What? I need to get around to it. But <laughs> <laughs> who is it? who's the actor? I want to see. It. What is he? Just some random? Some random fucking slap dick slappy. <laughs> Ty's been rewatching a <laughs> Coach JB season of yeah. Yeah. Last Year. <laughs> Coach yeah. JB, hey, he's got stogies. Mm -hmm. Yep, he's got whiskey. Yep, cameo. Mm -hmm. That's some bitch. Podcast calendar. Hey, I love that man. I I enjoy that guy. He's the oh, man. I enjoy him a lot. He's obviously from QB one. No, uh, last chance. Last chance you. Yeah, last chance you. Today is it? Yeah, With first. Him? No, first season of basketball. Basketball actually. version. Nice. Uh, nice. Slap dick. <laughs> He's the best. Yeah. Oh. Do we have any pictures of Vince McMahon? No, show's over. No, no, we got it. Oh, I want to see. Yeah, we got to see that. I did not know who it was. Jesus. See? see? I can't tell who's who. Who's nice the actor? Who's That's what I'm saying, AJ. On the right. You fucking Look at the slap terrible dick. prosthetic. <laughs> Damn, Wait. this guy stinks. The butt chin? The little, the little prosthetic fucking cleft on Vince's Now chin. listen, this guy I will made of wax. I will say the guy, we should give this guy a chance. Now he's playing one of the most historic humans when it all goes down in the history of the world. Vince McMahon will be talked about long, long, long after he is dead. One hundred percent. Long after he's so. Whenever you're playing Vince McMahon, I assume not a lot of people wanted to do this. This guy has stepped up admirably. Look at this. Ain't that right, AJ? No, they probably had. They probably oh, went through four hundred different guys trying to audition for this. And I would love to see those tapes of the auditions to be Vince. Oh, look like this got them zombies in this. That one this group. casting is probably just Rock and Brian Gortz just pulling a rib on Vince. You think so? Take a look oh. at this guy that we cast as you, boss. Oh, that would be. <laughs> I don't even think. I'm, I, I'm sure there was a text message with a picture sent with a return phone call. It said, "God damn it, who the fuck is that guy?" How about this guy? How about this guy? By the way, great Vince McMahon impression. I've been told. I've never talked to him enough, but from what I've heard, that is a great Vince McMahon impression. What about this guy? Like dream come true, dream job. Mm -hmm. In the Rock is. T potentially texting as a rib to Vince McMahon, like, look at this fucking guy. <laughs> that would be awesome. They probably, the fucking casting director probably found the guy working at a cheesecake factory. All right. This guy great, is no. a great actor. He might win an Respond. Emmy. He might. This guy's a robot. We're living in the era of deep fakes. If you look at that photo, that's not a real person, guy guys. He might win that's an Emmy. That's a bunch of wires and metal inside no, that stop. guy's wax stop. face. We're not doing that. This ain't Tom Cruise, pal. Okay. Yeah, right, because the Tom Cruise looks way more real than that guy. You know how hard it would be to cast Vince fucking McMahon? Yeah, that's why you pick a robot to do Boom. it. Boom, young Efron. Efron, done. Yeah. Or Jared Leto, you know. Danny McBride would have been perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, I think it's spot on. Yeah. He's the only one that could actually bring that flair. Get to it. Yeah. Get to the level that you have to get to. Yes. You're 100% right. I'm sorry I laughed at that immediately upon hearing it. All right, that's the show. We'll see how that song bitch did on last night's episode of Young Rock when I watch it here in about a couple hours. Yeah. You know what I mean? Pens were on last night. Oh, how'd they do? One. Nice. How'd Bruins do last night? Ah, uh, we picked up a point, but, you know, we were playing with our backup goalie, so we weren't really counting it. Pasta mm. scored again. Who would have thought? You yeah, know? you lost. Best player in you hockey. You lost well, the we answer. Picked, we added a point. You lost. We added a point. It cost me a lot of money on a party. You can't beat the Islanders. Yeah, the Islanders, by the way, the guy scores on a shootout. The goalie didn't even fucking touch it. It was the cleanest goal I've ever seen in a shootout in my entire life. Mm -hmm. The back, the water bottle in the back fucking yeah. shot off oh, with yeah. how clean this guy scored. The Islanders are a scrappy team. Look, we're still ahead of the Penguins in the division, are we not? So we're you fine. You played the Sabres. So we're fine. You had 9 0 and 1 against the Sabres or something like that. That's quite a fucking record booster. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Hey, is, uh, is Panarin <laughs> back yet? Who? Nope. Brad Man. Rangers guy, the Russian, who's getting uh, smacked in the teeth from Putin across the uh, wall. Oh, he went into hiding. Yeah. He's skating. He hasn't played yet. I thought he was a reporter. That guy's a player? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Really good. Skates on ice. Reporter? You thought they were a reporter was going into hiding because Putin was threatening him? Well, yeah, those dudes yeah. usually don't get threatened. They usually just get, yeah. you know, slit right <laughs> off there <laughs> immediately. <laughs> they so, don't get the warning to go in the hiding. Yeah, hide. they do not. You know, there's a story about Gino Malkin. 
he got drafted to the Penguins, number one overall or whatever, couldn't come to Pittsburgh mm-hmm. for a couple of years because he had to get, like, hidden in the back of cars to transport out of Russia because the Russian mob allegedly wouldn't let him leave their league because they were making so much money off him. His family had to go into hiding everything. Damn. Right? See. Is that accurate? Oh, yeah. They, they extort the hell out of those guys. That's wild. They took him from a game, right? They took him, like, in the middle of a game. Yeah, I think it was, in, it was in Sweden or Switzerland. Maybe I can't remember which country, but they were playing over there, and they saw a chance, so they, they snuck him out and then flew him to the States immediately. What? That's like whenever uh, yeah. North yeah, Korea was being represented in the Olympics. They had so many security around that team at all times oh, because yeah. people thought that they were potentially going to just escape forever or whatever. Because he was supposed to leave, and then guys literally sat him down in a chair, put a one-year contract in front of him, and made him sign it with the Russian KHL team at the time. By the way, Gino's family hiding, going to Pittsburgh, have become – superheroes in Pittsburgh. Their their pictures get put up on the Jumbotron. Pittsburgh goes bananas. I'd assume the dad houses more vodka than anybody in Pittsburgh from the videos, but it looks like they have a good time. A good time over there. Be, they don't play those games. Those mafia and dictators don't play games. No, no, no. Uh-huh. Especially over there. Well, baseball players have had to do that. They had to escape Cuba, I know, to come over. Don't don't major league teams help get some of those guys out? Yasiel Puig fucking was on like the back of like a boat for like in the water for like 16 hours or something when he was uh, coming up. That's insane. They're Jeez. still they're still coming after Puig for money because they say he's owed their owed money in Cuba for getting him across. So he has to look out for that forever. Sh- shit, Enos Cantor, the dude in the NBA too. Yes, Turkish players won't even talk to him on the court because they're afraid their families back home will be you know. Jeez. Why? Because he left. Oh, yeah, he's a big proponent of speaking out against the Turkish government, and they do not like it. And other Turkish people are like, we can't talk to him because if we're associated with him, we're in trouble? Well, their families back in Turkey will be... It's not the language they speak. (laughs) COVID cowboy dropped a C in there. I respect it. All right, let's get out of here. Hammer Downs in like 15, 20 minutes? Yeah, 4 o'clock. It's a good show. You guys should listen. Makes a lot of money. Wrestling with Sports Entertainment. It's the current name. Probably going to change the name. Really good show. Awesome. Really good show. You guys did good, man, sir. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. No, Mark Madden did as well. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited to watch that show. Blossom. Yeah. Because he's going to become a real voice in the wrestling world. Oh, yeah. And him becoming a person with a real voice in a world that we pay attention to is what I'm here for. Yeah. <laughs> I am excited for that. Sounds like he's the only guy who'll tell the truth anymore. Fair. This is what fair sounds like. Yes. He hey, said. did he ever get that situation with uh, T.J. Watt worked out? It seems like it just disappeared. Yeah, he had other wars. Yeah. You know what I mean? The Watt brother one was a couple days or yeah. whatever. Mm-hmm. On to the next. On to the next one. <laughs> he sat in a bunker. They went on to a different thing. He just sat in there. Then he pressed forward, gained more land, got into it with somebody else, some other town. Mm-hmm. I think it was the Jujus again. The Probably. Juju mm-hmm. Beast came out. Right, right back down. Um, have to cover it. I just thought of it. It was on the paper here. I didn't even think about it until just now. Miles Leonard, what a fucking idiot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What a dumb dumb. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's no ex- there's no excuse. There's nothing. Like, come on. Don't be that dumb. Can't be that dumb. By the way, don't be. You know, take those. I was asked about this on that ten questions show. You know about cancel culture and this whole thing. Yeah. And I. You know, I wasn't planning on talking about cancel culture, by the way, with Kyle Brandt on 10 questions. I would not have been, you know, I was not planning on it over. So I didn't have like a, and I, I don't think I'd ever thought about it, by the way. I just kind of like to, so think, there is a lot of people that have been canceled that are just fucking the worst humans, right? Yeah. Like, like I'm, I think cancel culture has done well in a lot of situations, okay? And as we grow older in this information era, we're learning a lot more about what things are said or done that potentially ruin some people's lives or days, right? So as we learn that, it's like, okay, let, let's let's try not to make everybody's life miserable now that we know it, we can dance around it. What was once awesome at this point we've learned isn't exactly awesome for everybody, so let's just fucking go ahead and, and let's just eliminate that type of thing, okay? So when stuff like that, But then there's sometimes where I think intent is not um, like taken into consideration. Like I think somebody's trying to be funny maybe and maybe it's a joke about like, like I think cancel culture has gotten right a lot, but there's some things I think that just get completely, you know, taken. I think that's how a lot of people feel. Miles Leonard, that was a hateful fucking, I mean, that was a hate, that was a hateful and it was just like, uh, Julian Edelman wrote him a letter and said he thinks it was probably from ignorance or whatever, but I think 
That's going to be a tough excuse. I, I, I don't know. That, that seems like a very tough excuse at this point that you didn't know. How old's the guy? Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like, I feel like it is. It's like, yeah. That's a it, tough excuse. He was 14, maybe. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But you go live, you get upset, you have a little hate in your heart, people are going to find out quickly. Yeah, mm-hmm. get fucking no scope by some, you know, guys who are screen watching. You got it's a little not, hate in there. It's yeah, good. it's not cool, dude. People say, you know, it exposes who you are as opposed to, you know, anything else or him getting caught wrong. I just, I think it's very stupid. And if you could say things that don't piss or ruin somebody's day, like, why not just, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's how I am. I feel like I'm quite a unifier. But there are some people, I guess, that just, no, I'm not changing for anything. It's like, you know, just... You could though, just a little bit. Not not everything. Hey, you could be you all the time. Yeah. But there's just a couple of things that maybe we replace, could fill in, kind of a joy, just so we don't fucking just ruin somebody's life or whatever. You know, just an interesting well, time. Well, yeah, I, I think anybody, if they're honest, like I'm 37. Like I don't think there's a whole lot of things I said when I was 20 that I still stand by or that I still like. I'm sure there's a lot like the core things, but there's a lot. I, I looked at things a lot differently then than I do now. It doesn't mean I'm mature. It doesn't mean I'm grown up. It's just how you have to kind of evolve and realize yeah things change around you and you got to kind of you have to figure it out well and you learn things you know like i think that's a big thing it's like you're exposed to more people and more things too i think that helps you okay all right okay i get it all right now granted i there was no way in hell that that is what that word was being used as but i understand that if that's how you were taking it like okay i i i'm sorry that that is happening and i'll just you know like that's happening a lot and i think it's better i think you know there's some shit that i think that like olive garden was going to get canceled there for a little bit yeah. do you remember yep yeah. mm-hmm. man i was like fucking bottomless pasta and uh, yeah. bread bread sticks. Sticks. yeah soup jesus can't eat there anymore what happened then you look it's like some stewed chef said something i'm like whoa 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 can we yeah burger king the other day mm-hmm. oh that was dumb well, hey man. what burger king did was dumb dumb now what happened well they they're you know on international women's day they attempted to put out a message that they're only 20 percent of the world chefs are female or something like that mm. and they're trying to promote like we need more female chefs but in the world that we're in the headline is going to steal the entire the fact that they made that a full page oh yeah, yeah. big threat uh, oh my god they, that was just completely lack of uh understanding anything in the world at the mm-hmm. current moment I, their message i understand the if you if you read for you know, 45 seconds to a minute and a half about the whole thing. But that's not going to happen in the world that we're in. So that Ew. was just dumb, dumb, dumb by Burger King. Dumb, dumb, dumb. It's amazing it still continues to happen over and over again, especially when it's like a big corporation like that. Well, Papa John, I mean, this fucking yeah. dude. Well, he's a little different. Yeah. He's been trying to kick it. <laughs> but just can't shake it. Just can't. He's been busting his ass for the last 20 months Four. just trying to kick it, get that N-word out of his vocabulary. He's no. been trying real hard. I'm not a hundred. I'm not sticking. I'm not gonna be the guy that's gonna explain. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what a fucking idiot. What a <laughs> stooge. There's a lot of those out there, which, by the way, should be inspiring for the rest of us that are, you know, hopefully leading into uh, positions that were once filled with idiot people. You know, oh, yeah. And we'll continue to grow and become a better society together. Some shit uh, will remain. Some shit will be bickered upon and some things will get eliminated. But I think that's a good thing about America. Hey, that's what America does. We come together. And we'll, we'll count Canada in there too. Cause now CFL is a part of the yeah. XFL. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. And, and we'll, we'll count basically everybody, you know, we come together and figure things out. That's what the world's about. That's what the show's about. We'll be back tomorrow. It'll stink. We appreciate you so much. Hammer dines in like 10, 15 minutes, a gambling podcast with COVID cowboy. Let's make some money off of March madness. Shout out to you guys. Gumpy giving out great picks. Uh, AJ, you're the best. Thanks for spending time with us, pal. Thanks guys. I'll see you tomorrow. I gotta start stretching a little bit more for this golf swing. People I saw are saying, you, you keep posting your swing out there, huh? It's a fucking good swing right now. I, uh-huh. Once my now th- these are my first two days swinging a club of this season, by the way, and I'm miles ahead of where I've started the last ten years, basically. Once I get these hips moving with oh, yeah. a little bit more timing and loose, I, my hand got a cramp golfing. Damn, yesterday, like on the thing, you know what I mean? Is that after the punches or before? Uh, after. Oh, so, okay. so like, but oh. my my body isn't ready to golf yet. You know what I mean? It's not <laughs> over there. But once these hips start turning a little bit, and I start, oh, oh, AJ, I might win Lake Tahoe. Mm-hmm. Year two, if I get invited again. <laughs> Somebody figure out how to do this, please. <laughs> figure it out. What? What is that? 
It's a thing that was supposed to plug into the thing here that connects to the, you know, the things, the air, yeah. here things. And I was supposed to be able to wear Bluetooth to connect to it so I don't have to wear this shit. And uh, it works pretty good. Like one every uh, four or five words get yeah. through. You know what I mean? It's Just pretty good. Know. And there's a little bit of a delay because it's echoed. Mm -hmm. you know? It's a complete failure. What I thought was going to happen and what actually happened. Yeah. Elon, figure it out. Figure it out. Hey, I'm down to 10 minutes. See you tomorrow. Cheers.